We started our 2022 season with players from around the world forming teams in hopes of being the best. And now, after four stages of regional action and two grueling days of international competition, we have our top three teams. First up, representing the Latin America region, it is Inco Gaming. Next, trying to make their dreams pump become reality, Luminosity! And the world's best trying to do it one more time, Tribe Gaming! Only one can be crowned king. Who will it be? Let's find out. The Call of Duty Mobile 2022 World Championship starts right now. He's able to single-handedly clear everyone up. Watch the gunfight sliding through. Tectonic went on like an eight spree. He's still going. Shot will land. 1v1. Marvel is able to take down Neil. Tiny goes double. Oh, 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 to come through, he takes down a second. Oh, another one getting connected. Shot will land. 1v1. Fight about it. Oh, what is up? This is looking like the end of our grand final. This is how it happens. They gotta win ASAP if they wanna make it happen right there. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no. Oh, 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 no. Your champion! The best of the best. Hello everyone and welcome to Raleigh, North Carolina for Championship Sunday. It's the Call of Duty Mobile World Championship Finals and it has been a long, long road to get here filled with upsets, surprises and dominance by these three squads. Hello everyone, I'm Daniel Degon Gonzalez and welcome here to the convention center here at Raleigh. I'm joined by Beef Mommy and Bobby, y'all. It has been a long time coming to get our LAN event to crown the best in the world, but now we're on the precipice of doing so. Every single one of these teams has earned the spot that they're in, whether you look at the undefeateds and Luminosity and Inco, they've dominated all the way through. You look at Tribe Gaming, yeah. They got knocked down to the lower bracket, but they have absolutely steamrolled their way back into the top three. Neither one of these teams, none of these teams have played against each other so far in the competition. We really don't have anything to go off of coming into this one. It's really interesting to see how there's two NA teams, and it's really great how this particular region just showed everyone how dominant they are, but this one team just shut everyone down. It's just incredible how Inco just shut everyone everyone up when it comes to doubts, when it comes to their mind. And now it looks like they're in for the run and in for the trophy. Well, let's take a look at the journey they took by taking a peek at the championship bracket brought to you by Republic of Gamers. And it started off with the big surprise in quarterfinals number three, Tribe Gaming losing a nail biter to the Chinese number one seed Wolves three to two. And that really set the stage for everything else. Well, Tribe Gaming in a little bit of a pickle as they are part of the elimination bracket, but it was a beautiful run nonetheless. We're starting things off with their game in Samina Esports 3-0, and Omega 3-0, and and Wolves looking like the redemption match that needed to happen for Tribe, and it looks like they dominated, especially in that key game in that search and destroy way they had such an amazing comeback there in standoff. The big task for both Luminosity and Tribe Gaming is going to be trying to figure out how to shut down Lucasin. This guy was the number one KD in the entire competition by about 0.5, a 1.96 coming into today. He has shredded the competition. He's gonna be a big problem. Well, let's take a look at our three teams by starting with our team on the bottom side of the bracket, Tribe Gaming. Now, Tribe Gaming, they were the West, the best in the West last year. They came in with such high aspirations and that surprising loss to Wolves made it very difficult for them when we were worried. Was it a bad day and they were gonna get knocked out because they couldn't bounce back? But they answered that emphatically, dominating the bottom side of the bracket until their rematch against Wolves. And they won that one in a close three to one, but three to one nonetheless. 
I am a firm believer that any team that comes in from a lower bracket will start off hot. They have had so many matches where they had to prove themselves multiple times, and now it feels like they're just getting one step at a time closer and closer into the matchup. We got Tectonic, Marshy, Bolu, Vague, and Jez to represent their team, and everyone's asking who is going to be that one person that can try to stop a person like Lucas in that could actually probably be Jez. No question about it. He was phenomenal all day yesterday. But looking at the stat sheets, there's no one really top dog throughout the day. I think Jez had some struggle games, especially in that elimination matchup up against Wolves. And it wasn't really till the second time around that he really got going. You look at Tectonic, actually the top KD for the playoffs so far for that roster. And across the board, really, really consistent. I think that's the one thing about Tribe that you can always count on. They are all going to show up, play their role, and they're going to need to do that today if they're going to have a shot at whoever they're going to be facing in the lower bracket. Yeah, and uh, I wanted to take a quick second to shout out Wolves, their opponents in that elimination semifinals because Wolves just had themselves a long slog of a day. And these matches here in the elim semifinals are some of the best Call of Duty mobile you will ever get to see. So if you miss some of those matches, go back and watch it. But Tribe now, they are stronger because they battled through and now they still have the opportunity to be crowned the best team in the world. World. Now, next up, let's take a look at their compatriots in North America, constantly in the shadow of Tribe Gaming, but now with the new organization in Luminosity, the team formerly known as Undream, now find themselves on the upper side of the bracket and one of the most dominant teams in all of Call of Duty. My goodness, the amount of runs that they had for today, it's just so incredible. We didn't expect them to be this good at the competition to the fact that they're gonna be in the winner's bracket. <laughs> we always expected that Tribe will be there will be that representative for NA, but it looks like they're looking like a different team here. And looking at the stats, they're just so good. They only dropped three maps, the second best of all the teams here today. Interestingly enough, the two players that got dropped from that Tribe Championship roster, Band and Envy, both in the top five for KD heading into today. They're definitely on a revenge tour and especially having an opportunity more than likely at some point to go up against their former team. It should definitely be a big opportunity for those two especially. Yeah, that clip that we just saw there, that was banned, I think going what, seven, eight, nine in a row on standoff. And he was just doing whatever he wanted to Wolves who looked pretty near unstoppable up until that point. This Luminosity roster, so fantastic to see them come online at the right time. Constantly, again, stage four, so close. They were so close behind Tribe, but couldn't get over the hump. Whatever they figured out up into the land has been fantastic. Ah, oh, man, it's just so great to see how all these teams came together. And one of the matchups that I really want to do is probably the NA versus NA matchup. Whoever is going to be going in there, it's going to happen, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I'm going to revel in the fact that we're here, we're in NA. A lot of the team, a lot of teams here and the fans are in the crowd, definitely supporting a lot of their players. But let's see if one more team coming from last time can go and make a difference. That's right, that team, Inko Stalwart, so dumb. Dominant 12 and 1 map score so far throughout the tournament. Just untouchable by all squads. Yeah, they nobody's had an answer for Lucasin. Like that's really what it's gonna come down to. And I think that, like we said, is the big question for these NA teams. What can they do to counter? I think the map picks are going to be especially crucial because of the impact that he's had trying to find opportunities to really make him struggle a little bit make him more uncomfortable and try to put him into a tougher spot. But you can't forget about the fact that his teammate dad also in the top five for KDs. Three members from Inco are actually going to be in the top 10 of the best players that we have for today. That's going to be Lucasin, that's going to be Rafa, that's going to be Dad, and they have crazy numbers. And mind you, two of these teams, they have control uh, KDs that are so crazy in the 2-0 KD range. This was probably my favorite series because uh, Smart Omega looked like they were the loose team that got to get away with anything that they wanted to do. And they ran into the buzzsaw that was Inko Stalwart and they lost that series. And uh, Smart Omega seemed like the uh, like like a shell of themselves on the bottom side of the bracket, but it's because they ran into this squad. And that's what uh, Inko Stalwart has been doing to teams. No one really seems to have an answer to the SKS, to that ranged uh, fighting here. And it, 
it's really throwing other teams off of their game. Now let's take a look at our KDA leaderboard throughout the tournament. And you said it, it's that man. He's a bad man right there on the top. 1.96 KDA right at the top. NB is a great player. Band, a great player. Not even close. It's not, and, and that's the, the main thing. I was trying to talk to some of the teams, like, what are you guys gonna do? I was talking to Tribe, I was talking to Luminosity, what are you guys gonna do to take down Lucasit? Now, they weren't willing to share those strategies because they don't <laughs> want that out in the public sphere, but he's no question the biggest issue for any of these teams to go up against. The one thing that I will say, Inko haven't had to go against any of the teams that finished top four so far in this competition outside of when they played Wolves back in the group stages. So they haven't been truly tested so far. This Luminosity matchup definitely going to be their biggest yet. See, I actually thought that one team that could go and make a difference was going to be Smart Omega, but it just seemed like the confidence of this team just steamrolled out of control. And that's where Inco Gaming can really shine, knowing very well the weaknesses of their team and just really make it shine. Well, we've got ourselves our first matchup of the day. It is our championship bracket finals, Inco Stalwart versus Luminosity. We saw two players from one team and two players from the other team, both in the top five of KDA. Shout outs to Pabzera, who's had himself a heck of a tournament over at Skade. And they are playing for that top side. You win this, you're at minimum $280,000 and prime position for the $700,000 dollars for first place again our tournament prizing brought to you by hyper x the one million seven hundred thousand dollar prize pool has been uh just such a great boon for all of these players and for you at home you have the opportunity to win some super cool in-game swag by watching in the client. If you're able to go ahead and tune in during the broadcast in-game, you'll get free rewards just by watching. The longer you watch, the better the rewards. Man. If you haven't gotten yet, you had three days to get this. I haven't yet because we're so busy here on the desk, but <laughs> I'm going to be making sure I'm going to set my alarm or tell Bobby to remind me to get these in-game viewership rewards. We have a ton of them. And plus, this is my favorite color scheme so far. No question about it. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, like we said, it is going to be just me getting absolutely chased around by Iskras all day long. First stream back from uh, all the stage five casting. So... It'll be terrifying, but it's beautiful. All right, well, we've set the prize pool, we set the rewards for our friends at home, and we've set the table for our championship bracket. All that's left is prediction time. Who you got? <laughs> I asked Beef Mommy for her predictions <laughs> coming into this. That's cheating. It's cheating? Oh, my bad. All right, well, who you got? Who you got? I, I've got I've to lean toward Inko right now. They seem to be the most dominant. I, I know that teams are going to be drawing up game plans for Lucasin. Nobody's come remotely close to finding a successful strategy so far. I think he leads this team to victory. Beef Mommy. Man, this is hard. I'm always a big fan of a lower bracket run, so I might have to go with Tribe because they had so much resilience going through the lower bracket, and now they are in a little bit of a pickle, uh, not a situation that you don't really expect Tribe to be in, but it's just a matter of who's going to meet them in the lower bracket because I think if Luminosity meets them down there, I think Luminosity might win it. But if it's going to be Inko, I think they might actually win Inko and possibly have an NA championship. All right, well, let's get this day underway with our winner bracket finals. And to do that, let's send it on over to our casters, Shift and Proper. Thank you there, friends. How about it from potential Cinderella's to maybe championship favorites? The Zinko Gaming Squad is looking pretty untouchable at the moment, but the same can be said about Luminosity. They've had really clean runs throughout just their groups, but also here so far in the upper bracket. Maybe the only blemish comes down to what we get out of control from those guys. You're absolutely right to, to talk about control when it comes down to Luminosity. It is the only game mode out of the three that they have truly struggled with. Yeah. But hey, if you can end up closing things out with just, you know, map one, two, Two and four, the control might not matter all too much. As you take a look, just the overall, the map losses really not too bad at all, tied as far as wins are concerned. And the respawn KD, well, it's just a little bit better for Minko, but I think it's kind of inflated yeah. because of Lucas. <laughs> that's definitely the case. I mean, when you throw somebody up there, it's nearly a 2.0. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that number's going to go up just a little bit. But uh, yeah, you saw the kind of the map win losses right there for a moment. The thing that we really harp on here is Luminosity. Out of those three losses, two of them came to control. So we'll kind of throw it out in the air. Summit would be map number three control. Haven't seen much of that this weekend. So we'll keep kind of 
our finger on that while we look over the first two maps. Standoff, Hardpoint, Raid, Search, and Destroy. Where's your headspace at, Robert? Uh, my headspace right now, when it comes down to it, is quite literally just around that Raid, Search, and Destroy. The only reason being is because the vetoes kind of go against what Inko are mostly comfortable on. The Hacienda taken away. Take off Hardpoint, not even in question whatsoever. So the Raid, Search, and Destroy, I think is going to be quite telling uh, where these two teams stand up against each other. Got to get warm here on the Standoff, Hardpoint first. We have yet to see the Zinko team play on standoff hardpoint, but you expect to still continually have not just sniper rifles maybe in play, but a hefty amount of SKSs as we start to rotate towards those more open hardpoints. But how about LG? Blur getting involved with some long range ability, and that's going to be three straight eliminations for Washi as well. Luminosity off to a hot start. There he goes. SKS trendsetter in the mix. Finds three in a row because, of course, he did. He, he won about halfway through its tenure here on the opening set. And I mean, all said is that Inka are still in a superior position. Yeah, they're getting traded out, but so long as you can dictate the pace in the middle of the map, you're going to set yourself up wonderfully for the rotation. Early streets as well for Washi. Hunter Killer Drone already spent. Nades on the way in. Break attempt coming from Inco Gaming. Numbers prevail as they look to get under the hard point. Contest on the way forward, and yep, that will work out nicely. Blur is going to be the player to really keep an eye out for for LG when it comes to trying to lock down this SKS, and he's clean with it so far. A couple of great eliminations as he finds his fist before dropping. Yes, I mean, hey. Bobby ended up talking about it as well, is that you have to have a strategy of some kind to deal with the long-range poke and prod effect that is the SKS. Kill feet starting to erupt in blue, but the push that's coming through on the backside of Brown is actually quite influential. It's setting up a pinch to come through out of Bakery. I don't think Inko expected that there was going to be hit from the south side of the map. Now the spawns will give them that information, but it's just too late. Solo, three in a row. LG on the break, up to 40 points. Inko looking to try to contest this as soon as humanly possible from mostly the gas station side. There is one long flank out of Noel, but he drops. So now the whole hit from Inko has to come from the front, and the kills are at least decent enough to neutralize the time. Yeah, big kills actually coming through out of the gas station. You lose those gunfights, you could potentially be in a spawn trap for the next two respawns. So working your way back in for 30 seconds could be very, very good. And you see it right there on your screen yet again. Lucas in 1.96, mostly just with the SKS, has been an absolute trendsetter already up to 11 kills. And the thing that we really have to keep our eye on with these setups, Shrinko, once they get the rotation in their favor, is where do they throw their double SKSs at times? Lucas in likely to lock down one lane. You expect Dan to kind of swap back and forth, maybe pulling out a second SKS if necessary to lock down the opposite. For LG, though, already Pinned up, blur, easy kill on the dad. And that will mean that as the old time will expire, it's pretty much all Luminosity set up for P2. Yeah, Luminosity still having those close bonds. You have one player that's actually watching the long well cross. But Solo ban here over in the courtyard, able to lock down two. Knows that number three is just outside. Washi will be there for the elimination, and it is just coming up all wonderfully for LG at the beginning here at three. I think everyone who played up against LG in this map from yesterday is saying, let's not make sure Ban goes on that huge nine spree onto this hard point. He was floating, flying, stinging all over the place. 70, 42, the current tally. Inko looking for a break attempt, but LG quick on the read. Noel on the interior, has to pretty much do it all himself and nearly does, but the claw comes out for Washi. Only finds one elimination. LG still with numbers to try to get back in, and so it will be the switchblade from Band, another devil. Here, fire out, Band locking things down here for the scrap time, gonna find themselves four in a row, and that should be the last bit of scrap time here secured. Here on P3, it was about a pretty successful 40 to about three, comparatively to where Inko are located at, all going all the way through the rotation. You still have one more player to worry about. That's gonna be Washi. Big trade to come all the way through, but space provided for LG to thread in this early. And, and trends really have been LG better on the initial 20 seconds so far, whether that's from the rotational wins for their gunfights or mostly locking and holding down to their initial setup. Same thing here, the full break, right as soon as the hard point opens up comes from LG. Reinforcements on the way, and you can see the read. They know for a fact that Inko is gonna be hitting from the left-hand side. Missile called in. Pure fire also with a mix. Kills favor that of Luminosity, but Inko still have a chance to contest from the front. There's still a very defining reason why Luminosity are the number one hardpoint team with a plus 118 differential, 7 0 through Worlds so far. But Inko need to showcase why they are number two. Breaking back in with the Holger in hand is Crozen just trying to meet them at the gates here at fourth. Yeah, both teams largely have not been contested in their hardpoints until likely now when <laughs> they meet each other. Inko with a substantial break off of their second attempt. Now looking to lock in every bit of this scrap time. 13 seconds to fight for it. LG are still trying to put a little bit of pressure on towards this. 
And to be fair, this could be mostly in an effort to make sure that there's not a safe exit for Inko, but spawn for number five in blue is Crozen. He's going to have a chance to try to win out Hotel while Lucasin is going to go to a very bold claw call and it works out. Double comes through, spams down the hard point, but it's going to be Inko who have the ability to jump in the hill first. Still able to find that space because like you were talking about Luminosity at the end of the first set, we're trying to set themselves up for an abundance of exits as Lucasin no! just continue to do and Lucasin things even swaps to the pocket SKS and is able to find three in a row. Just the guy cannot be stopped, but there needs to be more follow up on it. Able to get yourself set up here inside P1 slowly closing in on the lead that Luminosity has. Now it's on to Noel Dad. Can they work their way back in towards the SMGs to try to lock this down? Rafa also in the mix, but only for a short time. LG, three quick eliminations right back into the hard point. Van locking down the back door towards Hotel, and it's LG dominating the kill feed and a chance to continue to grow a cushion here on their score. 20 seconds remaining here inside P1. Double edge sword coming through for Luminosity. Basically calling for players like Solo to continuously find the zoning effects. Has one player inside a bakery. We'll be able to get some help there from Blur. Now you need to start pushing all the way forward, especially with Ingo spawning out. It's going to be a bit of a 50-50 battle over towards New. Rafa able to slide in. Crozen assisting towards the old time, but it really is on to Rafa. What can he do as an individual without any sort of help? Here, as soon as the hard point opens up, LG members all over the place. Yes. Noel quickly to come back in. Tagged up, but can provide a little bit of assistance, but no. It's LG with the quick eliminations, and as the hard point opens, it's LG securing more time. And look at the split spawns that are actually coming through from Inko. You have two players that spawn up over by the gas station. The other ones are spawning over in the courtyard outside the bakery, but no one was reading where Ban was located at outside of L. So much damage was able to be found because Inko were just one-dimensionally trying to sprint into the hard point to try to help things out. This is such a substantial setup that LG has. Operators are used here for LG. They're trying to put this game a bit out of reach. Inko looking to contest. Oh, and it's a long-range shot from Washi. Three from the backside of Gas Station, making sure no one else can contest from the south side of the map. And Inko a bit paused up here all of a sudden. Looking to play for rotation. This is critical time that they're missing out on. They would essentially now have to counter with a full 60 of their own. Yep, you would need a full 60 here at Grandma's, and the setup isn't exactly strong when you already have players that are moving their way over by Grandma's tank. You have Predator missiles being called in by Blur. Envy finds two, and now you're spawning out of your Inko, not the setup that you want ahead of three. Rafa, last one left, just flat out overwhelmed. Luminosity again, dominate on rotation, holding the spawns, holding the early time in the hard point, and they will break past the 200 point threshold. Operators out for solo. It will expire, only finding a couple of eliminations, but that will still be fine. One more deep. Ah, oh, he gets caught swapping between the weapons as the charge runs out, but again, the streaks now start to fly on forward. Hunter Killer Jones, Fred Missiles, doesn't seem to make a difference what it is, just throw it at him. And Inko are completely stuffed without even getting in until maybe Dad here. Okay, hold on. Double with the pure fire, contesting the time, waiting for the regen. It's going to be three as Dad will clear the point out for Inko. Got the Dad cap on and everything. Pure fire needs to continuously lock things down here, 25 seconds, but you look at just the overall score this is where we start having the conversation for leaders advantage it's 219 to 111 now luminosity they don't have to break here they could just set up for new yeah. and that's exactly what they're doing to try to close it out in the upcoming hill no operators for them though to try to hold on to this setup on the opposite side you look towards players like crozen 24 eliminations a chance to possibly be the catalyst for the break with an operator ready for go for him now the play hard point yeah, expires sure. over at grandma's now we head over towards bakery dad through the warehouse, looking good. This will set up a bit of a route. Looking to play for spots, but Envy denies. And Luminosity, a really solid read on where this Inko hit is coming from as they get to 225. Able to clear away the bottom left side of the map, but you need to break this sooner rather than later. Blur, able to get themselves a pure fire, just holding the stairs. Good read on the first player up top. Noel denied any entry from the high ground. Now it's just down to flooding from the front, and this is dangerous, but the shutdown comes through. The claw from Crozen, that'll allow them entry. LG still trying to fight back. Envy for the first, holding on the trigger, but can't secure the second. And Inko have an extra life for now. Banned! Oh, on the entry, finds an easy cleanup. A good double kill from him and Blur, and that may be the winning moment here in map number one. Inko, yeah, they got 32 from Lucasin, but it is not nearly enough as LG dominate. Little pop off on the stage as well. Luminosity gotta be feeling themselves off of that, and it's gotta be talked about one more time. There is a reason why throughout the entirety of this tournament, Alan, they are the number one hard point team. 118 point positive differential coming into this matchup as a whole. And you got to see exactly why. The fundamentals on point setups, being able to break anything that Inko was throwing at them. It was just an, an all-star affair that really felt like at the end of P2 in the first set of hard points, they had the resource advantage, and they let Inko feel it. Look, I mean, you got 
32 out of Luka's in. But we wanted to see how NA was going to deal with the SKS presence. And Blur says, I don't care where you're from. I could still hang with you as well. 35 <laughs> and 18. He was doing a lot of work with the SKS as well throughout the majority of it. So almost a one for one between the two. But the big difference at the top of that leaderboard, how about the hard point time that Blur is yep. able to find compared to Lucasin throughout that map? And it's legitimately just that, right? Although Lucasin was able to find themselves 30, 32 eliminations, they were never the ones that were set up inside the hard point, trying to find themselves angles of opportunity to open up opportunities for the rest of their teammates to then get inside the hard point. But once Inko got in, they couldn't stay alive. Luminosity, on the other hand, were sharing hard point time by, by through all five of their members. And even at this moment, if you kind of look across the scoreboard, the, the, oh, at the top, it's pretty still tight, 114.80. You think, okay, pretty close game. But you kind of compare the SMGs for both teams. Noel's only on 12 and actually did not finish off all that well. We're on the other side. You've got 20 from Solo, 22 from Ban. The SMG gameplay was great from Luminosity, and that's what you needed to see from Inko. What we were used to seeing from Inko was, yeah, Lucasin clears the way, SMGs follow up. There was not much follow-up this time through for Inko on this map mode combo. No, no, there really wasn't. It was a war on two different fronts, right? You were finding so much of that long-range pressure, and we talked about this a lot yesterday uh, between all of us, analysts and casters included, is that this is what Call of Duty has to offer, that if the back line is offering that much space provided for you, the SMGs need to be able to yeah. capitalize on the damage in the space that is then found. It was just that much more exceptional coming from Luminosity here on Sandoff Map 1. Yeah. That's definitely something we've got to keep in mind if we get to a map four, which I think we assume we will probably see at least one map go the way of Inko. <laughs> Not that that's guaranteed, though. Nothing is guaranteed. We've learned very rapidly here at World Championships. But I, I will say, now looking at a raid search and destroy and knowing how Luminosity like to play their search and destroy, Inko will have to have good presence from their subs, and you need it now because they will for sure need it when we get to the summit control for map three. It's just really tough to gauge, isn't it? Because, I mean, now what you're looking at is essentially the number one and number two when it comes down to search and destroy. Yeah. Luminosity only having that one loss, but the differential is still respectable. Inko, on the other hand, just absolutely letting everybody have it. Uh, undefeated in search and destroy through the entirety of the tournament. All of that needs to be exemplified here. And when yeah. you're thinking about raid, you can actually make this feel like a very, very long map, especially when you're thinking about the smoke execute that can come over by basketball court. The double SKS setup can really shut that down. 100%. And then on top of that, just to kind of set up a bit of marination towards map number three, neither team has seen a summit control so far this weekend. Although we do assume based on the records and the results over the course of the last couple of days that Inko will hold an advantage in the control compared to their counterparts on the other side of the stage of Luminosity. But this is an interesting setup for the search and destroy because you never want to be in a position where you have to reverse sweep. Not to sit there and say that this is a must win for Inko because the rest of the map set does look pretty good for them yeah. based on what they've played so far. But this right here, this map establishes are the SMGs going to build some confidence up? Because for, for Inko, they, they were really missing out on that map number one, and you cannot have that absent when we eventually get to that control, as we had just previously mentioned. So we jump on into it. Inko will start on the attack. The trophies very aggressively looking to get in towards mid-map. This will be allotted towards them. Wash is the only one to contest. Has a scope out, and Noel will get first blood. That's actually kitchen control as well for the side of Inko. This is actually something that we saw Inko take as far as an adaptation is concerned in their search and destroys uh, late last night was that they were just bringing out more submachine guns and, and just really just denying so much space in, uh, by way of aggression early in these rounds. Number four in Blur, the only defender at eight, but he's going to be getting help from Ban on a long route already through bedroom, and nobody from Inko is expecting this. Patience to hurt you after all. Band able to secure a nice free win. And how about Blur? From inside the site, completely stuck. Comes away with two. And that likely wins the round for LG just down to Crozen. I love that. Coming out of Blur. SKS in hand and all. Last player alive inside of money. Won't be able to stay alive for long. And, you know, if you want to talk recency here, especially for Luminosity, again, such a small sample pool because they've been, just been tearing through everybody. They have that w at least one time spend on this map, 7-4 versus Stamina. Yeah. Um, and they look very, very convincing on that, understanding their timings and all, as you got to see uh, Band on that previous play. Full-on rush coming through here today. Two defenders, though, will be here. Solo working with Blur this time. Once again, the trophies go down. Rafa, shoulders being thrown. Lucasin finds the first on the Solo. Slide cancel on in, and Blur cannot hold against the three members of Inko that get on. Quick plant also on the way. Gonna have to retake this on three different fronts, but open okay. staircase is being looked at from Crozen. Still have Washi to deal with, but 
If you're Envy, you have to wait for this push coming down Spiral Staircase for some help. And he finds one of the backside. If he can get the second, maybe there is a chance to come back through, but now it's just down to Washi. This would be a 1v4, finds the first rather rapidly, but the second one comes from behind, and Noel, no problem. Uh, Color is surprised. I, I thought for sure that Inku was going to try to feel things out. I mean, the double SKS sniper setup, what we kind of said in the past was, let's feel out this defense, maybe get a pick, and then capitalize, but that's not the case at all. This is all gas pedal early on. It kind of feels just shades of some of their matches that we ended up seeing yesterday, doesn't it, where they did start off with snipers, SKSs, and then they adapted for more SMGs. It seems very early on that Inko want to take the aggression early and try to meet the pace that they know luminosity you're gonna bring well jeep we'll get a little bit of map control early but again this is what we were expecting luke is in scouting things out swap into the sniper rifle this round to work with crows and washing could pick up from money window and careful solo is actually pushed up in towards mid assistance from washing as well doesn't necessarily need it dad not there for the trade and just like that lg significant control over the map and more so They've kind of got Inko trapped down inside the pool. Yeah, they sure do. And even though Luminosity, they have that one number advantage, this is the right call. You, know, you just send at least Solo, maybe to try to go take a look at Kitchen, maybe take a peek in a Gander over by the 8-bomb, but you have B on lock. You 100% play for the retake here. Rafa with the bomb would be the one that would have to kind of tell his teammates, yeah, we're ready to go. Which, by the way, it is double sniper SKS. So trying to clear out any of these sites would be a hard test. But they will stack together. Like you mentioned, LG going to give up this A site in order to likely just play for full retake. With mid control, laundry control, you think it's going to be good for it. 30 seconds, and LG are getting the idea that, okay, they're not coming to B. Let's get ourselves in a better position to try to contest this bomb plant. Here comes Rafa forward. Trophy system goes down. LG stacked up towards the staircase. First sniper shot misses. And he gets the opener. And he gets the follow up. Just down to Crozen. 1v4. He's stuck inside a Tiki with a lack of ingredients. And how about the left fist from Band? He's been all smiles all weekend. So why not try to throw something out early? Sitting there having a little bit of a chuckle in that 1v multiple situation. Might as well slide into Tiki and. Let the Dukes out, man. That was fantastic stuff uh, coming through from Luminosity. Again, very reserved, I would say. The they found those two picks, they gave up the space, and they played for the retake. Executed wonderfully. That's a strong left hand. Yeah, if you think about it. And it's a weighted <laughs> shot. from an SKS too. or one left hook? <laughs> Mike Tyson would have words. Would, for sure. Again, forward mid map control for LG this time. It's a double stack, though. Very different look for them defensively with Band working alongside Washi to try to control pillars. The other defender towards B is Envy, up towards Laundry, now playing towards the backside of ring. So this is a very far forward advanced setup towards B, whereas the defenders at A are more playing response and react. Hey, you're starting to see some of those transitions actually coming through from the weapons itself, from Inko. Again, a little bit more SMG eccentric. We'll be traded out one for That's one we so go, good. but Washi going to be able to find yet another pick again. And they know that they have them trapped, but somehow, some way, the bomb still gets pushed up by Rafa. Solo with the shotgun! ...or driveway, so 3-1, the lead goes. Washi for first Man, blood. Uh, this LG team's coming a little bit different. Washi is just not missing. Lucas in a mere consolation prize on the shot towards Blur, and it's barely even that. Dad, the last one left. He's being hunted down, and you can feel MG and LG looking like they're just going to run it down mid. I mean, why not? Hey, you've been out casting a lot of Search and Destroys. You know, sometimes one of the best uh, strategies in Search and Destroy when you know that you're just better than the opponent is just to gun them. I'm yeah. not saying that they say it's a discreet uh, skill difference, but as far as teamwork is concerned, LG are definitely showing better. And the thing is, when you start to find success while just running at your opponent, it completely foils any kind of a game plan that you may have had, because you have to start to hold off, respond to any forward pushes, and then set an execute play. That all told, though, Bob is going to be very rapidly planted here at A. LG, quick to try to contest. Dad, money window. It's a tough gunfight versus Band. Just jumping, peeking, seeing if you can keep him at bay. Solo, the first one to drop in the engagement. Onus towards LG to try to find a response. They get one from the front. Band, naded, will be pushed off just a moment. But LG still, clearance through the double stairs. All this post plant is set up deep towards bedroom, hoping that Crozen's got an angle at the bomb. LG, 18 seconds to go. Have to make a move, and you have to hit a snipe. Luke is in close. Band able to track down almost down. one. Blur, last one left. Two players tight and not enough time you would think to get the kill nor hop on for a defuse, no. and that will indeed be the case. Well, the 2-4 half.
One Sniper, one SKS, three SMGs. I want to see more of this out of Vinko, honestly, it is being able to call the bluff of LG, who all went in for that ring control. And Inko was just like, hey, we can get aggressive too. Just immediately the bull rush over towards A, get the free the plan, and then the post plant was just absolutely sublime, keeping this within two. It's another moment, though, at the halfway point where you look up towards the scoreboard and you say, who's going to help out Lucasin? Seven eliminations, LG. Under the cover of smoke, looking to make a play towards A, but this is all a bit of a fake. No full commitment to get to the bomb on at the moment. Washi with control of Tiki. Ban trying to zone off the money window, but as he gets tagged, said he'll back off and just play this from basketball as the bomb is playing. Who shot that if you're banned? No. Good call. We got players inside Tiki. Gonna be watching that money window is banned as well. Make sure that the flank stays secured. Blur's playing deep in towards bedroom. Washi and Tiki with the scope. Numbers for Inko. Frozen, checking, playing lifeguard over the pool. And LG have not given up anything. Good trade comes through. Inko are now in towards the site. But how do you clear out these players that are in and around Tiki? That's the bigger question here. Blur playing down by the beach chairs. Flank out of band. Communicated for Lucas in. Rafa's also moved forward. He's cleared out Tiki. This is looking good for the retake. But now you got a hop. Blur's they got this position. The snipe has to hit. And it does. Is there time though for the defuse? I do not believe so. It's going to be close. No, not going to happen. And LG go to five. That retake was so quick and it was executed so well. Every single line of sight being looked at and being able to find the eliminations as quick as they did. And it's just extra maybe two, three seconds to be able to find those eliminations. Otherwise, everything was looking pretty darn stellar. Five to two. Luminosity nades over the top to basketball court again. Lucasin is under pressure, but Noel will find first blood. That's a big pick because he's pushed up aggressively alongside a couple other Inco members. Ah, but how about this little alert from Blur? Holding in towards spawn and it works out for the double. Min map though. Inco still retain numbers. 3v2 with that elimination from Dad. Envy wisely enough waiting. Four blurs help come all the way back across the pool side. Some shots are going to be thrown out there, but I mean, Dad, Lucasin, Crojan, they're making the right call here. You just play inside jungle, inside a kitchen, you play for the retake. Yeah, LG do not have the weaponry to try to pick apart at long range. This Kilo will be fine to spray down players, but it's not an SKS, that's for sure. Dad will let you know about it. He even wants the second challenge. It's bold, Ooh. but it works out. Collects Lost that the skull of Envy through the woodwork. And Inko still hanging around. Really did feel like that Blur's play all the way into the back of the Garage was going to be the yeah, difference maker real. right there, especially uh, counteracting the uh, overall aggression that was coming through the middle of the map the for Inko, but not going to be the case at all. Keeping their heads above water here, keeping it within two. Still rushing over towards A. This LG team really loves it, and it seems that Inko are starting to get an idea of what they can possibly do to counter it. Lucas in the flash stun, concussed up. Noel laying prone, looking for a little bit of help. First shot misses. That will be enough for Washington to get elimination, and then the turn back for Band. Collects the double. And Inko are going to have to play retake in a 3v5 with no ground at all to work with the Crows in. May have poked a hole in this post plant with the first blood going his way onto Envy. Clean out towards Muddy Window. Rafa looking to make a play. No, instead, he's actually going to join his teammates. They're going to try to full flood this from that back staircase. Dangerous prospect. Band still holding, waiting for any sort of calm, any sort of point of contact. Solo's hitting a bit of a round. Crozen! Whoa, what a shot that is! A little slide through. Crozen gets more, but now Solo on the flank. Ah, oh, he's going to finish off the double! And now map point for Luminosity. It was almost about to look like what it did a few rounds ago that when Inko were able to get that retake, they knew exactly where all the positions were located at. The only difference was with this one player inside a cube, but one thing you can never count out is your flank coming back through kitchen. Six to three. More aggression in the middle of the map defensively, and LG have thrown a wrench into the system. Yeah, Inko have just completely bamboozled LG on this setup. LG's only gut check call would be to try to force their way over towards B for a quick Grenade plant, but there are still out. nades available for Inko. How about this? Right over the top. Band does clear out some of the play through mid. Nade does not quite land, so I'd be able to stick for the plant. And as we go to a 4v4, there is a steep advantage for LG in this post plant. Set up in and around ring. One dimensional retake starting to manifest itself here for Inko. They're all essentially on the backside of laundry. Nobody coming through mid map. Nades over the top, trying to get over towards driveway. Band holding close. Has he been stunned? Someone's got to make a move. This is taking a lot of time if you're Inko. 
Initial trade comes out. They do a lot of clearance. Of course, it's Lucas and it gets the double. Only one more to find. It's Blur deep. He's got an eight still, though. This could kill off time, but as he gets finished off, it will not make much of a difference. The defuse will come through. And again, Inko still fighting their way in. Yeah, required retake, obviously. Otherwise, they would have been down 0-2. And again, that's not where you want to be versus this Luminosity team. But hey, that it, when the retakes are on and they're coming through one-dimensionally like that, this is where Inko absolutely thrive. Their teamwork, communication, team shots, and everything else included yeah. is what is required for them to be able to make that play happen. A little bit of a bait play starting to happen here. You have Very Solo similar. pushed up through open staircase. Oh, uh, and Solo, <laughs> he's trying to change the route. I think he's hoping that he's going to get some help from his teammates through mid on the zig cut, but Bomb it does drops. not happen. Envy also drops, blur up top inside a bedroom, would have to probably get two here. Does well to find the first, still doable, lots of time for LG. And you know if you're Inko, you really can't take too much further of a step we got the bomb. towards this offensive spawn, so they'll back down and just play their normal setup with numbers advantage. Ban might be the player to watch out for, but he's gonna have to get through Noel first and throws the shoulder through Zig. Very tough gunfight to find for yourself. Damage is gonna be traded off, but the rest of their team is surely on the way through Zig. You have to hope that Washi hits a shot here. If you're gonna cross through mid or head over towards B, Washi has to connect. That's your only way back to a 3v3 when you know for a fact Lucasin and Crozen are going to have some hard scoped angles likely to defend against any of these pushes. Look at the read. The read yeah. immediately rotating all the way to the backside of Laundry, and they have guessed correctly. Band is pushed up towards Laundry window, though. Blur tagged up. Trophy systems go down. And man, he may be able to hit a route right here. Inko up the top. Oh, Dan, great read. Band still finishes the kill, but Noel cleans things up, attributing the assist to his teammate. And now it's just on to Washi. He's found a kilo to work with. Also has the bomb. He's going to stick for the plant to try to put the clock on his side. Noel got the sound cue. Yeah. Immediately slides through the staircase. We'll get that elimination. Two rounds in a row now for Inko. Starting to find their footing here on Raid Search and Destroy. And that's coming through with shutting down any aggression antics that LG are looking for in the middle of the map. They've and shut the down the A push successfully. The LG, though, they haven't done it in a few rounds. Here it comes again. Full flood over towards A. Noel down, trophy systems. Denying utility from both sides. Lucasin stunned up beyond recognition. Noel drops, Lucasin would need to find one here. Not gonna be able to provide. And Luminosity, we're gonna get the plant. How do you contest it to Rico? How about Crozen? The bomb has been planted. Gets the numbers more to manageable positions as he gets a second to a 3v3. The long flank from Rafa. No one's watching this from LG. Rafa makes himself activated while she cannot connect with the quick scope. LG trying to force their way up the double stairs and Crozen will get four overtime. It was a 4-2 half in Inko as gritty as they come are going to be able to force out overtime just shutting down Luminosity's pushes, their rotations, the reads, everything at an all-time high here for Inko. And it's by way of adapting with even just weaponry. We asked for Lucasin to be able to get some help. Crozen delivers. is up to 12. Dad also up to 10. So big from Crozen on a lot of those defensive rounds. Nades over the middle of the map through tree. Inko still collect first blood solo drops. Inko playing this very, very patiently. They know they have numbers and they're still waiting to be able to find some more information. Envy is one shot no stim <laughs> right now. And Inko are more than aware of it, but they're not capitalizing on it. No, not yet. They got the information that they needed. Maybe that's enough to pull the defense. They may be able to think about trying to threaten over towards Tiki, number five in blue. Washi over towards Money Window. Maybe the one to contest this, but now the call from Inko is to try to force this over in towards the B site. Bomb making its move in. Rafa waiting for a little bit of assistance, and those shots coming forward may have dissuaded them from actually committing to this. There's still plenty of time if they want to track back over towards A, and Washi, very heads up play, has made that rotation. And look at the proactivity. LG are already calling that Inko are gonna wanna make a full wrap, but they may have guessed incorrectly. They haven't seen a soul. Oh, they, or maybe they guessed correctly. But the timing is not favorable. They all ended up going back to check over towards A, but they were exhausted so much time, 40 seconds remaining on the clock, and Inko might have been able to find the time oh, to go over know. here. I don't know, Washi and Blur have the weapons to try to hold off against this. It's on to number four. In blue, Blur, SKS, gets a read, sees the player and says, that's enough for me to back away. You have a long flank on the way from Band. You also have Washi contesting the map, and Inko want to try to isolate him, and you catch him on the reload. And now you can immediately swing back through pillars. It's going to be Blur on the rotation. Does he catch anybody? No! It's Lucasin connects! 
and the bomb will be planted. Steep advantage for Inko here in the first overtime, but Band at least keeps the number relatively level between our two squads. Bomb going down for Rafa here at B. Close plant, set up for laundry. You also have arc control, and Rafa just swinging around ranks, trying to see where these players are coming from. Band is rapidly on the flank. Envy would have to contest three pillars. And Noel is waiting for this. Maybe he's heard a footstep. Yeah, it looks that way. Yeah, and Rafa's seen him. This play, not concealed anymore at all. And Noel gets out of dodge. So good just to kill a little bit of extra time. Confirms that LG are double stacked. Envy up high. Band down low. First one connects for Envy with the SKS. Dad, next one up. Gets not just one, but Noel finishes the second. Advantage to Inko. Insane scenes coming through for Inko. Again, adapt, overcome. Really utilizing all of those two minutes on the game clock to, to their utmost advantage. They found that first blood, and then they just held the line from red. It, they never pushed that much further forward. Here come LG again, though, oh, offensively. How about Inko, though? Three-man stack through water stairs. They're gonna catch this LG on rotation. The kills, they're coming rapidly. It's looking clean from Inko. Last one to grab. It's gonna be number two in blur. He's stuck inside of Tiki. The troops are reinforced, and a comeback of the ages in map number two for Inko to tie us up at one. It was a four to half. That favoring of luminosity. Inko come all the way back, force the overtime, and it ends in an 8-6. They just needed to force the overtime, and they won the next two consecutively. You cannot write this any better no. for Inko. Their adaptations and understanding of what the enemy is doing continuously throughout the entirety of the map, their reads on point, playing with the clock, fundamentally, everything just so, so good coming through from this Inko stalwart team. The double SKS, it wasn't working, Alan. So you ended up pulling out an SKS and a sniper, getting some SMGs present through the middle yeah. of the map, and everything just came up so much better for him. Three members of 13 eliminations for Inko. Notably, that is all of the long range players in the search and destroy. But I will say, Noel and Rafa had a couple of very key moments with those subs. In particular, the quick route that we saw around the back of that LG play a couple of rounds previous towards the basketball bomb site really shutting down LG and then how many times did we see them defensively double stack subs towards water stairs and shut down LG continuously from that defensive half that's again like you mentioned the word adaptation is easy but that's just great resilience as well from the subs who had a very poor first map and it was a great shutdown too especially offensively luminosity we're finding way too much value we're trying to push over towards the AS and D and aggressively and it was mostly solo coming through the middle of the map through open staircase. Yeah. So yeah, you have to answer that back with two SMGs coming through the middle of the map to be able to shut things down as we watch some of these highlights on the screen. And initially, you start to think Washi may just take over this entire map. He was finding so many key kills, not just early, but also clutching up from the defensive side on some of these retake moments. I mean, he's getting good information, but this combo of Solo and Envy kind of on the retake with the rifles and then the sniper rifle long range gameplay from Blur and Washi looked near unstoppable until we swapped the sides. Cause I'm telling you, Washi is hitting different today. Like we did, we saw instances of this Washi yesterday, but if he continues to play like this, teams could be in steep significant trouble when it comes to relying on long range gameplay because he was not missing. Yeah. It's, uh, it definitely does say something, doesn't it? Especially with like sniper gameplay going up against the SKS presence that is this Inko gaming roster. And it's just kind of insane scenes when you're thinking about it. Because again, we have to poise the question, how do you deal with the SKS presence? Well, Washi just needs to turn up and try to meet them over at the range <laughs> yeah. as well. I mean, Blur even also trying to help things out. But at the end, I think the word resilience does really kind of stick with it, is that Inko just continuously throwing more and more adaptations, understanding the tendencies of where Luminosity were on the map. You're going to need all of that plus some more. You did it yeah. here on the search. And the thing about it, you know, we could throw out a, a number of different synonyms towards talking about adaptation and stuff like that, but that is a lot of trust. Yeah. When you're down six to two, essentially, and you're not finding any success off of your game plan from the offensive side to sit there and say, we're fine. Our defensive game plan sound, trust it, trust each other. Let's not let this get out of control. I, I, that says a lot about the discipline of the squad. And one of the reasons why they were so clean, not just in groups, but also up until this point in the upper side of the bracket. So now we have guaranteed ourselves a firing range hard point, but we've kind of been touching and dancing around the summit control for a while. We have not seen a lot of summit control even less from these two squads overall. Biggest two things for me. Number one, operator usage needs to be key. Yeah. How are we pulling out things like claws and purifiers? 
And then on top of that, just a little bit again, leaning on towards the Inkle stalwart side, can the subs continue to perform? Because we saw a great play out of band from Luminosity in map number one. A summit also could be the calling, because if there's one thing that we could definitely take away from our two Chinese teams here on Summit Anything, with some shotgun plays as well. So the best hardpoint team is Luminosity, but the biggest issue is that they're eighth place in control. Yeah. This is where Inko can absolutely take advantage of coming off of a map to barn burner yeah. and going in towards Summit, keeping them at an SKS's reach, being able to capitalize with SMGs up close. You've got to be feeling pretty darn good if you're the entire team of Inko. Yeah, a mere 50% win rate so far, two and two on control for LG. It's been their biggest vulnerability uh, for whatever that might mean because they've been <laughs> polished everywhere else for the most part. There. But I, I think you look at this, if you had that information, if you're Inko, you look at how do we beat this LG team? How do we get to the World Championship Finals from the upper side of the bracket with a major advantage? You have to think that map three should be ours. So that has to be kind of step number one, which is weird to say, because it's actually step number three. But you win the control, that's now the swing map mode combo. It gives you a bit of a, a little bit of luxury because you're gonna guarantee you get your slum search and destroy that I believe was their selection. And the firing range hard point, let's not lie. As much as we'd like to assume that that's gonna be largely controlled by sub gameplay we did see i believe inko and skate also play this firing range hard point and i will say their their ability to lock down lanes trusting the sks is had well until this point it's been unparalleled oh absolutely I, I mean it almost feels like that firing range was quite literally made for this inko team when you're thinking about it middle of the map sks yeah. through america SKS. Sure. You can end up also controlling all of Banana with it with an SKS if you really think about it. I don't think that they've actually played yeah, actually they the firing hard point, but we have seen them on firing range at one point or another. I want to say what either through scrims or some other time. I, I definitely do remember they could have honestly been skate. I don't know. I mean, I've, I've been seeing a lot of <laughs> SKS gameplay yeah, on these slide guys. Blurs together real fast. Um, but I, I want to go back and I want to highlight uh, something that we were starting to talk about as far as Inko are concerned, because it's something that you and I were talking about when they were going up against uh, uh, Omega. And that is their teamwork sure. and, and their trust. And it was also alluded to in, in some of the, the highlight videos that we do have in interviews as well, and even talking to these guys as well. The trust and communication for these guys is just so clear, especially when you're sitting there dissecting the, the mini map as well, just watching how they're moving with one another, how they're communicating with one another. It's just, you have to have that trust, uh, especially here so late in a top three situation yeah. in your worlds. 100% agree with you. And interestingly enough, you know, I'm, I'm kind of going back towards Inko's stage four statistics. They actually didn't play any firing range then either. That's but interesting. The thing that I, I, I guess what I'm kind of assuming at this point is watching them, how they kind of set up for a map like takeoff that has, again, kind of the same instance where you have a lot of long lanes, mm -hmm. maybe not long rotations, but long lanes. That's where you expect that players like Lucas are really going to shine and really going to pop. So for LG, it comes down to trying to reduce the impact in these next two maps of that SKS, which has been a very easy blanket statement for us to say, because everyone's trying to figure that out, even against Skade, that was an issue. So as much as we kind of keep talking about Inco Gaming, I think you still have to look at at least this map as being favored for them, just due to the fact that Luminosity's weakest mode has been control, <laughs> and their ability to go map three, map four wins here are still pretty high, even though firing range you assume would be a lot more SMG heavy. Oh, totally. I, I mean, it's hard not to argue with statistics, isn't it? I mean, it's everything that we've seen so far throughout Worlds, and I'm looking at the map set again, it's just daunting, because albeit the Summit Control favoring towards Inko, that firing range in slums could honestly escape you very, very quickly yeah. if you are Inko. You really just need to continue to rely on what's been working so well for you, and that's all just based around the SKS. Set your SMGs up for the utmost amount of success. It worked for six rounds in a row. Be able to bring back that last search and destroy. Got to have it here. All right. Out. LG, quick to try to push not just into, but through the B site. Blur, good first blood. Inko trying to stack on towards A. It's Mixy. It's scrappy, but it's going to work out for them. Clock has stopped. First stick of progress looking good. Band on the play. Good to try to deny some of the reinforcements, but the first tick still gets locked in regardless. Nice opening. Nonetheless, only lost four lives coming through for Inko. But space still needs to be found here. Second segment, very much so on the way. Crozen able to find some eliminations. Look at the push that's also coming through from the snow path as well, but completely unbeknownst to Inko, all of uh, Luminosity wanted to come back through the north side. Really well done, and just good distraction play out of Solo, pulling out the R9. We saw a lot of our Eastern teams try to do the exact same thing with these shotguns. And that's actually dissuaded Inko from even playing on the interior. 
A little bit more of a lane to play with. Progress at B, starting to come, but largely mitigated by the kills coming out of Luminosity. And this is just good recovery from LG. Second floor control, Lucas is just sitting here waiting to see if he can find a free kill on the rotation. I, I love that call. I, I don't know if you ended up seeing that. Noel tried to push all the way back over back blue and was trying to at least start a little bit of a spawn trap, trying to split up some of these defenders. But just as soon as it was a great start, the life lead has yeah. been mitigated down to two. Space being provided for Frag Luminosity, out. but Inko what trying to find themselves some nade points, trying to find some different points of angles. As well, Crozen yeah. down low with the SKS. Going to be able to find an opening. That's a big round as well. Yes, it Frozen is. could use that as an opportunity to either stop the clock at A, make some more progress, or possibly just completely cut off the reinforcements, but LG, good double coming out of band as well as from Envy, as he actually makes it three straight in a row. Crozen's play mitigated largely just because LG flat out shooting better. Just straight up shooting better. Uh. Luminosity coming out of the gates, absolutely swinging. 10 seconds remaining here. Only a single segment is all that you need over on A if you are Inko to extend yeah. the game clock, but it's not coming easily. Yeah, there's just no route to get there, none at all. Watchy assisting. Again, the long range pressure from LG has matched up with Inko 100% perfectly. Clock will expire with just two ticks of progress. The lives are starting to get tight, but Luminosity after the opening break off pretty much denied any re-entry towards A at all. Really did feel like that that third segment was going to come through over at A, but I mean there was just so much focus that was coming through from Inko through the snow path that there wasn't a whole lot of focus over by Catwalk, which hey you guessed it that is actually one of the best power positions here on uh, Summit. Luminosity, good first blood, high ground control. Inko, they're just trying to keep it mixy down low, and they're getting absolutely picked apart. So LG with numbers, Dan can only do so much. And with that, only one member from LG will drop the rock towards the A site. They've got a player deep inside of the Inko spawn. And this is punishing on multiple facets as LG really letting Inko have it at the moment. Yep, this is exactly what uh, Envy was able to find success with, what Noel was attempting to do. Look at all the space that is coming through for Luminosity. 26 plays on against 22. The second segment already on its way. And already up top is Ban with the claw, letting them have it, finds himself too. Chance to snowball right here for LG. We'll take a second to listen in to see how exactly they may finish off this offensive round. Flank that, flank that, flank that. Side outside, Ador. They're e-buff, they're e-buff. Come on, come on. Stay on that beat, don't get one it. One green, one green. Green, two green, two green. One's one shot green. The vortex, dude. There's two green, two green. Hey, help us cap, help us cap. I'm flashed, I'm flashed. They're, they're, all they're all green, all of them are Hey, help us cap, help us cap, come on now. Fucking ass. Help us help you on your blur. One more green, one more green, one more green. Fucking shit. Don't peek blur, don't peek blur, don't peek blur. I got, I got flash right, right. Nice. Alright, he's gonna push, he's gonna push right here. I'm gonna double flash main, I'm double flash main. One more, one shot, one shot, one shot, two, 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 13 playing up against eight, just under two minutes as well. But Crozen able to at least take down Watch. You look at all the space that Inko have been able to find. This is looking solid, Rafa. Pure fire out. Continues to pack a punch over through the LG spawn, but it is a 10 versus five. And LG are looking at that as their win condition. Yeah. Do not give anything away. The counter stack from Inko. Pure fire is out. Dad on the way in. If you can line up a couple, it'd be massive. Only gets one, but Luca's in following behind it. The trade favors out of Inko. Need to clean the rest of this up, and as MV drops, it's down to Rafa. Gets the double. A 5v3. And Noel is scouting him out through spawn. Now a 4v3. LG a bit stuck. Plenty of time. No reason to get crazy. You could literally play this as an SD round from here on out. And you don't have Washi. Washi's the one with two streaks plus an operator, Noel. Playing down low, Crozen is here as well, able to slide, oh. get himself another two-piece. Now you got a 2v2 situation here, and it is just all 1v1. coming up. Rafa against Blur for the round. 47 seconds, and Blur is trying to call his bluff by playing the logo ground with the R9. Rafa not seeing him yet, but finds him from the high ground, and the 1v1 goes the way of Inko. It's just so massive, uh, just the implications that you're pulling in operators when you're down considerably for life, so you just want to make sure that it's worth it. Dad pulling out that purifier, able to find some space, communicating where everybody might be on the map. 
Inko, stay alive, get themselves a defensive round of their own. But they will have to face up against Streaks and an operator from Washi relatively early. Inko stacking up towards A. Once again, their focus primarily towards the lower ground, but LG, nice little response. Keep it relatively even, and with these kills, they've actually regained a lot of this second floor. Rafa caught with an 8 out. That's not going to work out, but actually, pardon me, that was a 100 killer drone, so he secures his own trade. Solo taking his place by repositioning back towards that same high ground. First tick of progress being depleted. Dad not able to hold on towards the zone. Just playing inside of Grace, just waiting for some help here. You got Noel that's up top on the catwalk or down low, excuse me. So Dad's gonna go ahead and join them. Fresh. Maybe try to win this battle on two different fronts. And you can even see off the respawn as well. Ingo have no idea where to go. They're constantly trying to get themselves snow path control. Noel needs to be the one to get activated. He's only able to find one. Good help though, coming from the rest of his teammates. Trades will still allow Inko to try to get their way back in. Blur holding, making sure his teammates can stay safe from afar. And Gravity Vortex got his spent by Blur. Works out for three eliminations in a row for him. Noel stopping the clock over towards B. Pred Missile called in. That'll find Crows in as Noel continues to kind of go back and forth between the B zone and the lower portions of this A connector. LG in the meantime, though, still picking up our kills. 23 playing up against 16. And Luminosity had to feel like this is going to be a pretty comfortable defensive win for them. Pending Noel to do something unbelievable. Oh, you came back from a life deficit defensively. So just do it on offense, forehead. 20 seconds remaining here, 22 playing up against 14. Not a whole lot of space. Why is that? Because, I mean, Luminosity are just cycling players out. They're not trying to push into their spawn at all. They're playing this very, very well defensively. Clean stuff. Have only dropped eight total lives in the span of what has been a very, very quick defense. Yeah, convincing, <laughs> I'd say. Yeah, that'll work. Only losing eight lives along the way. No segments of progression given up whatsoever. You barely had to dip into any one of their resources as well. And I mean, Inko, they were already playing on their back foot. Nonetheless, you're coming into this one with three operators, a pocket full of streaks, pocket full of posies maybe. I don't even know what the saying might even be. All I can tell you is that Lucasin is struggling. Seven eliminations yeah. for both them and Noel. Rafa's the one that's been stepping up and Rose is gonna open this up with a claw to try to get themselves an early numbers advantage. Immediately shut down. Luminosity have met them with two claws of their own. Dan trying to find the shutdowns wherever they possibly can. Red Missile called in and gets down two. LG, even with those eliminations, have not found a way to get towards either of these two sites. They're trying to put the herd on with the lives. Dan up top, nearly able to lock things down for Inko defensively. But now recovery will have to happen. Nasty heady for Van. Takes down Rafa for his second elimination. And now LG say it's time to go. Second ticket progress on the way. Two operators being spent. Inko, nowhere to be found. Do they have to give this up? And it looks like we may have gotten our call. Thing about it is, they can't just give up this entire space because LG can just move right over to B. Yeah, and they have resources to be able to snowball over towards B as well. Solo down low with the pure fire inside of the A zone. Might just be able to get this segment by themselves. They're still trying to find out where Rafa's located at. Finally able to find them, and now Inko all spawning out. Numbers in the middle of the map and in the count. And that in favor of Luminosity. Hunter Killer trying to clear a little bit of space. LG following up behind that solo. Double four and Pred Missile called in. This is really putting a hurt onto Inko's life count. 22 playing up against 12, and LG stopping the clock even further at 157 still left. Looking good for the offense. Inko, not a lot that they could spend here. It's just Noel, the only one who has an operator that he could possibly play with. Second tick locked in, third on the way. LG zoning forward, Van playing far. He's gonna find Dan, no worries. And now it's the 20 v4, doesn't even make a difference. It's gonna be the full capture of the B zone and Luminosity, the eighth ranked team based on control stats thus far. Absolutely making us look silly for trusting the numbers. Hey, that's one thing that we do love as commentators and analysts. I love being wrong and luminosity showing up when it matters the most here on Championship Sunday, being able to put themselves in a position there on summit control. A lot of questions is not only just around control, but just what both these teams are going to look like on summit. But it doesn't really matter when you just have good fundamentals. It doesn't really matter when you have superior gun skill. That's Luminosity's argument as they take a one map lead in the series. Yeah, and the Summit pick looks like it may be one that Inko will have to consider. If I'm not mistaken, I want to say they got rid of Hacienda of all maps as Lucas in only 10 eliminations. Crozen tried to step up, but for the majority of that map, Lucas in had a switchblade in hand. So as much as we were sitting here saying the SKS may be a championship condition for Inko, you take away takeoff, maybe that's the counter. <laughs> I, mean, I hate to make it sound so simple, but at the moment, it's looking like that may pay off. Yeah. You always got to say, yeah. you got to play against your opponent's uh, strengths. And that's why we have the veto process, right? You know, luminosity you see on your screen taking away the takeoff. 
Inko not wanting to go to Hacienda, which is utterly That's surprising weird. because they are very, very good on Hacienda Search and Destroy, but probably more fearing what Luminosity was going to be looking at on the potential for a Hacienda Hardpoint or a Search and Destroy. As we take a look at some of the player stats comparison, specifically in the hard points, it has been Blur versus Lucasin, and it's really hard not to just focus on this guy from Inko. I mean, well, 32 sure. and 29, the SKS. The biggest difference, though, again, going back to what we were talking about from that standoff hard point, was that hard point time being generated. These are your main slayers on both fields uh, of each team, respectfully. 35 and 18 with a minute and 30 worth of hard point time for Blur. That's a little bit more impact if you ask me. 100%, and that again is an SKS versus SKS battle in that map number one between those two. So, something to be said about Lucasin trying to find value, getting these eliminations and turning it into objective time, not just for him, but even for his squad. They're yeah. having a really tough time getting rotational wins. But Blur has stepped up to the plate. And you have to think at some point in time, across their run, and maybe even just over the course of the evening last night, they had to have the conversation, if not the question, what do we do to stop this SKS play? And I I'm just gonna go ahead and wager, Blur stepped up and said, boys, I got you. And boy, he's got him. I wonder if he ended up going back to his room last night and just started, just puffs off. Literally, probably <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Get reps, get reps, get reps. Oh man. Yeah, this is, Inca. This is gonna be Inko's first game on firing range during all of stage five. And firing range again, I mean, both you and I were just flabbergasted. <laughs> that, like we go back through it, it's like no firing range when you're the SKS trendsetters. Yeah, I think it makes sense. It's a map that like we kind of relate to other maps that have happened in Call of Duty in the past. Where like it, even though it's a small map, the lanes are long. Yeah, yes so they are. The idea here, and this is something we saw from Skade yesterday and even the day before on firing range. You put those SKSs, you get them set up trust that they're going to lock down the lane individually let your smgs focus on wherever they're not looking and it worked out for skate pretty darn nicely just down to can Inko do the same as their brazilian compatriots nice start rafa for dude noel gets the third in the mix and that is very convincing kill feeds leading to a lot of time for Inko right off the rip and that's what you need right there lucas in got the sks back in their hands you need to continue to pop off right there because you cannot allow to have LG pop off the way they did the same way over inside of the standoff. Yeah. It was a blistering pace set on early. You need to answer the back here in map four. LG able to find at least an answer for now. Smoke will be the biggest muse for them getting in towards the hard point. Four kills in a row for Envy. Working towards possibly early streaks. Bam, getting aggressive. Side steps a hunter killer drone. Quick reaction out of him. Has a chance for Noel and will turn that into his fifth elimination. Dan Inko, though, able to re-break. And with that, the 22 seconds of Luminosity will be met and exceeded by Inko Gaming. Good quick rotation also coming around all the way past tires. It's also being Our looked at by player ours. number four. That's going to be Lucasin that's watching that. That's the player that you probably want, being able to shut that down ahead of the rotation. Middle of the map, also at least trying to be secured. Big Our battles going over just for the scrap time there at the exits, but it is Inko set up for new. And just keep your eye very passively on the mini map for number four, number five, and gold. Those are your two SKS users. You would like to see them on opposite sides of these hard points, and so far that is indeed the case. LG trying to force a break, trying to break in towards the windows of America, but it's not working out really whatsoever. Blur able to control Jeep. That's gonna be a nice little setup for them to try to get on in. Blur Envy finding eliminations, and with that, LG will push the spawns away and also reclaim the zone. But you need to be able to break on in very, very quickly and keeping them zoning away. You still have a lot of presence going in over by 10. Band actually spawns all the way on the backside of Wood. That's a parallel spawn that happened along with Lucasin, who is just letting them have it inside a 10 at this moment of time. But it's really the only one that's able to pop up the kill feed. Yeah, Dad is able to take down Ban, but that's not an influential kill to be able to break back into this hard point. And I don't even know if you want to at this point, because with 10 seconds remaining, and if you fully clear away Luminosity from this hard point, you're actually going to be spawning uh, them a little bit yeah. further out than you probably want them to. Good map control on the rotation here for Inko. We were not able to say that very much at all in the opening hard point. This time, though, just a bit on the tidy side. Only one player inside for LG in the trailer. Can he be shut down? Noel gets a 3K with a nade. Wow. Well placed, I'd say. 
And with that, Inka will gain the early time. But LG looking to threaten quickly. Have some mid-map control. Trying to also play it through backside barrels. Purifier early. Out for Noel. Claw trying to strike it down. Washi able to at least spam things over. Lucas in doing the same from the opposite window. Gets one. The second one on the interior finds that as well. One more deep and it's Lucas in for a triple. Inka reclaim the point. Yeah, no, I mean, this is just massive stuff coming all the way through just off of that previous hard point when they ended up breaking them out. They were able to anchor out the spawns all the way to the backside of showers so that way they could maintain this south side of the map ahead of this tin hard point. 20 seconds remaining inside of this hard point. Dad feeling it. Wants to pull out the pure fire. Almost expecting for it to contest to come through, but that's the overall fundamentals of the luminosity. They're seeing what the map is offering for itself. They're setting themselves up for next. Well, already a chance to try to contest the lower floor here at Wood. And he's in, and the support deep from Rob Malukas and working out well. Blur onto this gravity vortex, number four in blue, trying to hold it down. He's by himself inside the zone. He only gets one. That is not worthwhile for the side of Luminosity. The kills are there. There's still three members to flush out, though, from Inko. Fred Missile trying to make life a little bit easier for these court defenders. But LG have the numbers. Rafa on the backside. Gets a read on the blur, but shut down. And with that, LG will substantiate not just the spawns, but also the hill. Neck and neck is this hard point right now. 45 seconds, still ample time to fight over. And Solo, what a read is that? Pulls out the pure fire, goes over towards Banana, only able to find one, but it sets up their team for success to be able to find those trades. So you still have two players that are pushed out through the middle of the map, and it is being read by Envy over inside of 10. Another big 1v1 happening off screen. But regardless of the matter, everybody from Luminosity showing up the kill feed where it matters the most, keeping Inko epic. Smokes concealing some of the window play. Rafa shot down by Solo up top. Now trying to jump down to assist the hard point, but doesn't need to. Teammates have already picked things up and over 100 points go Luminosity. Scrap time also looking good for them as Inko are hard focused on trying to control Trailer and America. They're able to neutralize a little bit of the time and even get some of their own here at the old wood hard point. But as you rotate to sandbags, LG will be here first. Pred Missile makes things a little bit more difficult, but with LG inside of 10, they should be comfortable to at least contest this hill. And P1 going in towards the second set is mostly all based around this 10 control and making sure that the flank is going to be secured. That actually gets picked up by Blur, so wonderful stuff for them. Probably not expecting there's going to be another player. Yeah, got to get traded out off screen, but even more so than that, you have players like Envy on screen trying to zone away 10, trying to keep all of Inko on their toes and just cutting down their reinforcements where they can. Rafa is able to sneak forward. Noel watching over the top of him. Washi's looking for the reclamation of the hard point. Dad, stunned up. Take it down, no worries. LG, 30 seconds to still fight for. And they look like they want to try to soak up as much as humanly possible, allowing Inko to gain some key positions as we look towards rotation soon. But you do not want to let this go if you're Inko. This game has been close until this point. You do not want to let it get out of hand, and the kills will allow them to at least once again contest. Luke is in. That's kill number 29. Three in a row. Already looking to break past the 30 point. No one else in the lobby is even close. And the only one that you would probably make an argument for is Envy on the other side, but it has slowed up considerably. 20 yes. and 20. 29 and 9 for Lucas, and this is exactly what you needed. But you're still down by 29 points. Look, you can find all the kills in the world, but if you're not generating hard point time, then you're going to be put in the blunder. Hello there, friend. One more on the corner. Someone going to get a train on Lucas in. One more nearby. Finally, Blur shuts him down, but the claw comes out for Grozen. Locking down the front doors. Everything bouncing around like... A pinball machine inside of America. Band gets the double and LG a chance to not just get death, but possibly grow their lead even further as Inko looks to set up their break. Again, it's just such a quick shutdown and even quicker break to come all the way through. Everybody from Luminosity just showcasing their own teamwork. That argument needs to be made by Inko. 150 to 109. Zoning away is Solo with yet another pure fire and a little bit too out of reach is Lucas in with the SKS who finds yet another three piece. There are three operators that Inko could use to possibly try to break down this time but they're not looking all that privy to trying to oblige that sitting back very uncharacteristically so lg are kind of picking apart at this and, and this is all inko saying we want to try to control trailer spawns but there's still so much time at all that those spawns really aren't even open yet so now to 175 go lg a chance to win the series and go to the world championship final right here and if they find a way to lock down trailer this game could be out of reach trinko one operator Gonna be pulled out, Solo doesn't even need it, able to find themselves three in a row. Purifier also in the hands of Blur, you gotta have it here if you're Noel. Lucasin, both have operators in their back pocket, you need this break yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I'll say, uh, this is just a, a critical mistake from Inko, you have to think. Noel, Purifier in. Able to take down one, that will get the zone back into their favor, but only 30 seconds to fight for. 
A long laundry list of things that have to happen. Noel responding to the play from Solo, who single-handedly breaks. Rafa on the way in. Just enough assistance, Shrominko, to shut down the potential final play from LG. Red Missile called out for the rotation. And it will find one off spot. Rafa challenged, but denies as the double goes his way. And Inko are sticking around. Envy for one last challenge, but it's only for about seven seconds. It's still a whole hard point difference. 201 to 130. You have to find yourself a full 60 just to bring yourself back into the game. And good luck with that going in towards Wood. Wall bangable to say the least. Lucas and Noel, though, able to find two to open things up, but you still have Ban, Solo, Blur, lurking members able to find these straight picks. And is Lucas ever going to use this operator? He still hasn't pulled it out yet. I get it, you got 42 eliminations, but at some point in time, you have to sacrifice the SKS in favor of locking down the hard point. LG with the numbers. Lucas pulls off the claw to get absolutely nothing. Immediately shut down. Inko, though, still in the hard point. Struggling to lock down spots as Envy's in the back towards bathroom. That will provide an opportunity for Solo to try to work on it. He gets two with the Purifier before falling, but Inko still retained the point. Oh, band up top and Wood able to get behind enemy lines. Pulls out a claw as well, slides on forward. He's able to find himself three. And now he's trying to zone away inside of Banana. 225, the 147, Envy Blur not slowing down. I, this has just been too cautious from the side of Inko. Still three operators in their hands. Both of them have not been used. Rafa gonna pull out the claw for himself. Hostile Gets at least the first. The objective. But I mean, this is at a point that is really not gonna allow for the claws to do too much. You've got to face up against Predator missiles and Luminosity have full Hard control mid map down. looking to put this map away. That has an operator. Frozen has one as well. Lucasin's gonna pull out a claw again. Able to find himself at least some damage, but still not enough quite yet. Noel needs to capitalize on this. What a snap on a blur up top. Need this plus some more. You can only give up nine seconds. Lucas in, trying to lock down time. LG, though, with the numbers, trying to break back forward. Putting it away here, just need eight more seconds. Blur, good elimination, tries to step in through the smoke, denied. Inko not gonna let them get away with it for free. Numbers now persist. Luminosity looking to break once more. They've got high ground control. Washi jumping down. Little Batman move from the high ground. Not able to turn to find the follow up elimination, but his teammates are here. Is this the winning moment for LG to get to the World Championship Finals? It sure looks good for it. Inko trying to deny, trying to contest with the kills. They go back and forth. Still back and forth. Pinstripe goes to kill me, but it's Lucas in. He gets the 49 eliminations. But is it enough? LG can still try to find a way to win here. Contest for this long enough, but you look towards rotation to new, and LG have members that get the last two seconds. Oh, Ban's pushing up. He's finding so many eliminations, gets himself some squad spawns. New heart point will pop. Two seconds are all that required, and Inko are nowhere to be found. Luminosity off the back end of their heart point prowess are able to punch their ticket to the World Championship Finals. It's just. Uh, Use your operators. <laughs> uh, that is the most uncharacteristic thing that we've seen out of Inco yet this tournament. For real. Do you claim it to the fact that they have not played Fire Range Hardpoint in a while? Do you claim it to the fact that Luke is in sitting here saying, I'm about to drop 50, I don't need an operator? It, it's hard to put a finger on any of it. It's almost a combination of it all though, but that is a massive mistake in a couple of key moments for Inko, not using operators to try to lock down spawns, or more so beyond that, try to find a way to win these rotations because they're finding enough kills as we would normally assume, but their ability to lock things down were, was essentially absent. It really was. And there were so many different moments of time where both you and I, I mean, I know everybody can't see us at home, but. I mean, we're, we're sitting here pointing just at the top of the screen continuously, just when they had the setup initially, that an operator here or there would have been fantastic to be able to hold on to the hard point. Lucasin drops 49 and 29 for the L. Just so much space being provided through the entirety of that first and second set. But Luminosity, just through teamwork and sheer grit and tenacity, are able to bounce all the way back solo. 38 and 28, 34 and 29 for Ban. Those were your lurking members continuously along with Blur, who were always a thorn in the side of Inko. Yeah. There's gonna be some very quick conversations that are gonna have to happen for Inko because that is not the same Inko team that we saw over the last couple of days in Hardpoint. 250, 131 on standoff and then a 250, 175 on firing range. Ooh, that is not common. But it's why we talked about Luminosity coming into this. Again, they are the number one hardpoint team. They have the stats to prove it. Even walking into this match, they had a positive 118 differential 
for everybody that they ended up playing. And it's one of those things that you can just lean on, right? You know, the sure, search and destroy sure, sure. we thought was going to be a little bit different, but Inko definitely, uh, you know, shut us up very, very fast <laughs> with how quickly they were able to adapt and overcome on that. And the same could be said about Luminosity's control. Everything yeah, 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 was a, a lot of different adaptations coming all the way through that both teams, us as casters, were not exactly ready for. But it's a welcome sight here as Luminosity, again, congratulations to them yep. for a quick turnaround going into the Grand Finals. And a new problem starts to surface for our other two teams that would have to try to find a way to get revenge against this LG team. But we've got d -Got on the stage for live reaction from Luminosity oh, after their win. Everyone's watching you play. Oh, like, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. All right, thank you very much. I'm on stage with Luminosity's Blur. Uh, congratulations on making it to the grand finals. The series against Inko Stalwart made it uh, the top two teams. What was it like for you in this set? Because you guys made it look easy. Well, it's not really that easy. It's a bunch of, bunch of SKS. It's hard to deal with. They're really nasty, and we just got to try our hardest, you know? So one of the questions that I think a lot of people had is stage four, you guys, while you were part of Undreamed, uh, behind Tribe. Now, what's changed here in stage five on land international experience? And you guys are now the top dogs. Well, stage four, like every game is a learning experience. We make a lot of mistakes. And what we worked on the most will be like teamwork and communication and all that. We just try our best. Well, it, I mean, your best has been pretty damn good. Right now, okay. you are at the lowest second place. That is a lot of money. Again, congratulations for making it. So now Inko Star Wars and Tribe have to play against each other. Who would you rather see in the finals? If I'm honest, I want to see Tribe. And they both are in grand finals. I want to see that happen. All right. Well, we'll find out what happens there in the lower bracket finals. Again, Blur for Luminosity Gaming. Look, there are a couple of conditions that, as we are kind of talking through things and then hearing it from Blur, that have now kind of surfaced in possible favor towards Luminosity. The first is the fact that I don't know what Blur did overnight, but he's looking <laughs> disgusting with the SKS all of a sudden. On top of that, though, Luminosity's control looked very polished, very clean. That was completely missing during the group stage and in their opening moments in this upper bracket run that they've put on. But look, if you could just take the former point of that, Blur dominating space and letting his team win in rotation, that was the biggest thing for me in these opening hard points. Oh, it absolutely was. Uh, I mean, through both hard points, when you're really thinking about it, you know, taking on the selfless role, right? Being able to seemingly to turn overnight to an SKS monster. You even heard him talking about there in the interview that, you know, the SKS, as, mul uh, as many as they saw on the opposite side, it's very hard to deal with, and yet, the way that Luminosity decided to deal with it was just one, keeping them at an SKS's reach sure. and allowing their SMGs to outshine that of Inko's. And you can even see it, like number four is Blur. He's watching these crosses, and even if he's not finding kills, he's giving communication to his teammates of where they're coming, when they're coming, and how many. Well, it's and, just like, you know, the one shot from the SKS is going to leave them... Well, that too, yeah. It's an absolute abysmal amount of health. So, I mean, so long as you're just getting that chip damage in there, the SMGs just need to slide chow around a corner and just capitalize on yeah, it. Yeah, and it worked out really well. I will say that duality between Blur and the Zubs up front was near picture perfect. Then we got into the control, and Luminosity played with a certain sense of vigor. I mean, there was a, we were a 1v1 away from them 3 0 in this control. Yep. Yeah, we sure were. It's just uh, absurd to see, like, how quickly things turn on its head. I mean, we were also mere moments away from even Inko getting an extra 60 seconds on, on their initial offense. It, it's just really does show to the talents and abilities that Luminosity are playing with through the entirety here in Stage yeah. 5 Finals is that, you know, when, even when their backs are fully against the wall and they're able to recognize, okay, we have this resource, we have this operator, this streak, we're in this position, and they just use it to such a high degree that I don't think that Inko have really dealt with all tournament long. Yeah, Ban really, again, showcasing his prowess to kind of even sidestep the 100-killer drone in that last highlight. Yeah. But LG's ability to get into the mix in this map in particular, I mean, we're 175 to 109 in this current state, and Lucasin's got 36 kills. Blur only has 16. But the thing about it is, Blur was able to pull out the Purifier and capitalize on a lot of hard point moments for his squad. Whereas on the other side, yeah, Lucas and the stat line is going to be impressive, but you have to know when you have to put the SKS down in order to use the Operator.
to fully flesh out a hill. And that was what was largely missing for this Inco team that, as we had mentioned, had not played much firing range. So a couple of things that have instantly cropped up that may put Inco at a bit of a hindrance going up against a hot tribe team immediately in the lower finals. We'll send things back to Degon to the desk to give us their reactions and of course set up that inevitable matchup. Thank you very much, guys. Great cast so far in that upper bracket finals. Luminosity Gaming moving on to the grand finals. And now we got to see between Inko Stalwart and Tribe who will be joining them. But let's break down this series first. It felt like Luminosity Gaming and Inko Stalwart were on a, a, a war path against each other. Both these teams have made it look easy throughout. And then Luminosity just came out guns a blazing on all cylinders. And very similarly to their matchup against Wolves earlier, it, it was the S&D where they kind of take an early lead and then let off the gas pedal. That was the only win here for Inko Stalwart. All the other ones just felt in control the whole time. Yeah, the only win that Inko gets an actual win in is a comeback, which didn't look super convincing until up the end where they started to gain that steam. I think a lot of it looked to be confidence. Uh, obviously, Lucasin came out guns blazing, but one guy by himself can't win a series. We saw that right there. I think the map picks played a really big role in this one. I was surprised by how many smaller maps we saw. And I assumed that most of them were picked by Luminosity in an attempt to kind of counter Inko in the SKSs. But apparently, Standoff was the map pick for Inko, and they got countered pretty hard right there. And speaking of, like, that's why we thought it was Luminosity's pick, because I was looking at the Summit control, because Luminosity had not good numbers when it comes to that control game, but for Summit, that was their best case scenario. And for Luminosity to get that, Inko's pick, I felt like that was kind of detrimental for their team. Yeah, and remember, they almost 3-0'd it. They were up 16, 16 to 8 in control on Summit uh, before uh, we got to see Inko Stalwart show some life and claw their way back into that one, but it was almost a clean sweep here. You know, I, I was asking earlier, uh, Blur, I said, hey, you guys made it look easy. He's like, it wasn't easy. I'm like, I don't, I mean, uh, I thought it looked easy. You guys made it look pretty <laughs> easy. Let's take a look at the end of our final map, though, the hard point over on firing range, where it, it just kind of felt like the SKSs were not reigning supreme here, except except for Lucasin on almost a 50 bomb here, but really not having the impact that you need in terms of getting the points. Yeah, I think toward the end, he started to get a little bit more his need to play the OBJ, but that's something that he should have made that adjustment much earlier in the matchup because he can play aggressively with the SKS. He's one of those players that regardless of the situation, he can pull it out and fry with it, but he seemed really, really committed to that long range role. Obviously, roles are important, but also flexibility and adaptability played a really big role in why Luminosity was going to be able to get the win. Luminosity just found a way to counter everything every single one. How do you beat an SKS? Three answers. Smokes, get an SKS of your own, and choose maps that actually suit the role of your team and just kind of cut out those really long sight lines. And yes, in that hard point matchup, I feel like for Lucas to get a lot of those skills, yes, but he had a lot of it it wasn't high impact enough for them to actually win this hard point matchup. And, and where was the support, you know? Uh, where was Crozen? Where was Dad? Dad in the top five of KDA didn't have the same impact. Lucasin, although a little slow on that S&D, did eventually warm up and had that uh, nearly 50 bomb on firing range to close it out. But there wasn't that secondary fragger that we've seen Inko Stall Award uh, have in their success. Let's take a look at our champs bracket. Uh, it's all filled out on the bottom side. Now it's Tribe Gaming and Inko Stalwart in our lower bracket finals and Luminosity sitting waiting in the grand finals. It is a one map advantage for Luminosity as well in the grand finals. So a little bonus there for making it all the way on through. Yeah, obviously big advantage for coming out of the winner's bracket. That's something we've seen happen before, though. These two teams, Tribe Gaming and Luminosity, met up in Stage 3 this year. Luminosity, one game away from closing it out, get reverse swept. I think they want revenge for that one up against Tribe Gaming, and I'm hoping that they get it, because with the way things are going right now, it kind of seems like we're on a path to an NA Final. 
Well, Luminosity looking really good this time. And Tribe looking like they're always getting the best of them. But I feel like it's such a different situation, especially with that 3-1 that they showed up against Inko. This looks like a completely different team. And I just want to note, their coach image has been in the grand finals for two, no, three times already. One for the Western finals last year, one for the Eastern champs for Blacklist International Ultimate, and now coming in from Luminosity. It just seems like he's a really big deal when it comes to this team. Well, uh, again, if you want to be a big deal, head on over to our friends over at HyperX. Now, HyperX is running a special holiday sale this season where you can get up to 50% off HyperX products with free shipping through the end of this December. Head on over to the description in the YouTube link down below so that you can go ahead and gear up for the holiday season. All right, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, it's that lower bracket finals. Who will take third and who will move on to the grand finals? We'll find out in just a little bit. You're watching the Call of Duty Mobile 2022 World Championship.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Raleigh, North Carolina for Championship Sunday of the Call of Duty Mobile 2022 World Championships. It has been a long, long road with many faces, and we are so lucky to be joined on the desk right now with Call of Duty Mobile content creator Mod6. Welcome to the broadcast, brother. Thanks. Thanks for having me up here. It's yeah. exciting. Uh, you know, we kind of wanted to kick things off with how's this weekend been for you? Well, we were talking before during the break, and this is without a doubt the most exciting esports weekend of my <laughs> life at this point. I've been to a few esports events, but this is my first Call of Duty event and it's absolutely blown me away. Yeah, you've said a lot of the interactions that you had with uh, some of the PC or console gamers that are coming up to you have all been positive. Yeah, the, the most surprising thing of the weekend for me is, you know, you have a hundred different conversations with strangers every day at an event like this, and every single console and PC player I've talked to is blown away by mobile movement, mobile gun skill, and they're interested. They're coming over to check out Warzone Mobile at the booth, and it's all the interest in mobile that you'd always hope for, you know? Yeah, uh, speaking of that, Bobby, you got to be a part of that Warzone Mobile activation. How's that been so far? It's been amazing. I've gotten to see kind of the full progression of Warzone Mobile because we had the opportunity at COD Next earlier this year to check it out and to see how far it's come and to see how many people are loving it has been really cool. So I know the entire mobile community is really excited about it and hopefully they've got big things planned in the future. I know they've done big things already. Well, uh, thankfully, you're not only a, a you know, uh, you, you are involved on the competitive side as well. So let's take a look at the champs bracket brought to you by Republic of Gamers. Uh, when you look at this one here, Mod6, all the way back from the quarterfinals, wh what, what has jumped out at you when we take a look at the bracket? Well, Tribe is about their loser's bracket run. They've done it before, and this time it's, uh, they're at a disadvantage with that one map drop in the grand finals if they make it there. But the crazy thing about this final and grand final right now is that you talk to anybody in the crowd and you get a hundred different predictions for how this is gonna work out. That's the Sunday you want, right? There's no obvious advantage. Teams are strong on certain types of game modes and on certain maps, but there's no leading prediction for how this ends. Right. Other than Luminosity being in the grand finals and getting that one map lead. Now, uh, our friends over at ROG have been big homies here for Call of Duty Mobile Esports. So let's take a look at the ROG Phone 6 with its upgraded Game Cool 6 cooling system. It has an optimized thermal design that cools the CPU not only from the internal structure design, but also from the external gadget. The new Aero Active Cooler 6, which incorporates an AI-powered active cooling system. Thank you all weekend long to our ROG Phone 6 friends. Thank you for supporting Call of Duty Mobile. Let's dive into our lower bracket finals matchup. And we'll start with Tribe Gaming. Now, Tribe, they got to sit back. They got to watch the series against Inco Stall or with Inco Stalwart and Luminosity. But as you said earlier, they've had to make this miracle lower bracket run. How do you feel like they are feeling coming into this one? Well, Tribe is a team that's strong on hard point consistently, and it's exciting to watch. They make aggressive breaks, but to make an aggressive break, you've got to rotate around the map, and they have to deal with the SKS of Lucasin and the absolute lockdown that they have over long range areas of the map. And, uh, and that's going to be something that's going to challenge rotations every time. I would say absolutely correct on that one. I think it'll be interesting because they don't match up quite as well as Luminosity does. Obviously, you have Blur, who's an SKS primary, and there's a couple players on Tribe that can do that, but they're not nearly as, as experienced with the SKS as Blur is. So we'll see what they end up doing. I know they've been running through a couple different players using it over the last couple months. They haven't stuck with one. A lot of it also going to come down to those map picks. The difficult part about Tribe's run here is the fact that Inco already knew their mistakes coming in from Luminosity and will probably make better decisions when it comes to those map choices. And also the fact that for Control, Tribe is really good. But in Hardpoint, we did say that they're going to be a really good team. But unfortunately, Wolves actually cracked the code when it comes to beating Tribe in their best game mode. And Inko possibly had that code for themselves. All right, on the opposite side, 
Ingo Stalwart really never felt like they got in this series against Luminosity. Yes, in the S&D, they were able to pull this one back, but it just felt like they are on the back foot this whole time. Uh, I'm hoping that they're able to go ahead and reset the mental and bounce back, but what do you think they need to do here to get this victory over Tribe? Really, I think that patience is going to be something that's uh, that's involved a lot in success, especially on hard point breaks. When you have teams that are anxious to get on the hard point, anxious to stop that counter counting up, they might run on and try and break with one or two, and that patience to be able to break with three, secure the point, or even you know the diffuse in S and D. That's uh, that's going to be a huge factor. Mod six, everyone, look at this. Just a natural on the desk <laughs> breaking down this series <laughs> matchup. But to get us into our lower bracket finals. Let's send it on over to Shift and Proper. Why was the Mod 6 with us the whole weekend, yeah, brother? That's a great good question. breakdown. <laughs> I great love question. it. Always good to see him. Also, I'm going to need to give it to you later, Mod 6, to figure out what exactly you've done to manicure that beard to such great lengths and such very I am inspired by that beard. It's very nice. Very nice. But with that said, there we, we were sitting here kind of going back and forth debating. And I'm just going to say, we haven't seen the series layout yet. But once we do, oh, there it is, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, if you're Inko Stalwart, you gotta get rid of either Summit or Fire and Grange is fine. But for Tribe Gaming, getting rid of the Hacienda, that makes a little bit more sense. I I'm glad though that Inko didn't follow up with the same vetoes that they did with LG, getting rid of Hacienda, because I think they had actually played that map pretty darn well. But that does mean that takeoff is here. Yes, the SKSs, you expect there to be a lot of them for the side of Inko. But for Tribe Gaming, they're also 3-0 on the map. For what it's Our worth, I was totally right in guessing the vetoes. Hours. Anyway, here okay. we go, starting things off, take off map number one on hardpoint. And this was the one consideration that if you're going to get rid of Hacienda, if you're tribe, you have to be ready for this map mode combination. Yeah, have to have it. And the thing is, they are ready for this. They've played it at pretty great and considerable length throughout their run thus far with convincing tallies, mind you. As it looks like we very well may have a bit of a restart here. Some players are stalled out. Obviously, Marshy kind of looking from left to right, wondering what's going on. Bolo still wants to frag. But maybe we could take a look a little bit longer at that overall series layout. Because the conversations at this point, like now that we've actually got significant results to go off of, the predictions become a little bit more simplified when it comes down to who's taking care of what. And another interesting little alpha choice here, Inko with the first ban, not just taking away firing range, but taking away Annihilator. They said, hey, Tribe, it's on to you if you want to take away the Sparrow or not. Yeah, I actually really appreciate that uh, coming through because, you know, here in COD Mobile, I don't think that we... Well, no, you and I actually casted over one series. I don't remember what it was. It was during the group Script stage, stage we actually yeah. saw the Sparrow come out. But, yeah, very annoying to deal with, uh, especially leaving that ball in uh, Tribe's court, right? But being able to take it away, expect that Purifier and Claw combination, obviously, to continuously come through. But I kind of want to take an even deeper dive to this map number one here, Alan, especially with takeoff, like we were talking about. You got to have it if you are Tribe. They have played it three times uh, through this entire stage five, and they are 3-0 and on it yep. as well, beating the likes of Wolves, 250-220, 250-133 against Stamina, and 250-112 versus Scars. Yeah, very convincing results for both teams on this map mode combo to start us off. But the standoff search and destroy, we've already said it a handful of times this weekend, but you have to feel like if you're going to come away with a map one win if you're tried, you're feeling really solid about your opportunity to turn this into a 2-0 early, largely due to the fact that we have not seen Inko play the standoff search and destroy at any rate. And then you get eventually to the raid control for our guaranteed first three maps. Yeah, Inko's played it once before, but on the side of Tribe, it would be our first look with them on the raid control. So looking at those three maps in particular, we've got a 50-50 battle here for yeah. map number one, a very crucial map, I would say, for Inko. And then you've got a standoff surge that I think everyone in the venue is saying that should be a Tribe gaming win just because Jez has dominated that map so far, even though <laughs> this weekend has gone to a lot of overtimes on that map for Tribe. And then who knows what the raid? Again, that's not really any significant results that we could go off of as you compare both the map wins and losses as well as the respawn KDs. And again, that respawn KD is boosted up because of Luke is in. Yeah, just a little inflated. I mean, even you got to see at the end of that previous LGV Inco firing range hard point, like Lucas in was still dropping 40 bombs for the L. So, I mean, it's just about capitalizing on top of it, right? You know, Inco kind of got their first taste uh, versus North America, and we kind of uh, talked about this uh, amongst ourselves. We, we didn't actually talk about it on the broadcast, is that this is actually their first real look at fighting sure. a, another Western yeah. team. So when you're thinking about it, Stark play styles, maybe, 
you're able to at least really lean on Lucasin with that SKS, but the SMGs really need to be on point. They gotta lock it in because you know that Tribe Gaming are gonna have just about all corners of the rim squeaky clean. Yeah, it, on the opposite side, just to kind of flip the conversation immediately over towards Tribe Gaming in this opening hard point. One of the things that we've noted a lot is Marshy's ability to stay alive for an extended period of time, but where's the help for him in those moments where he's trying to finesse? We had questions at day number one about would Tech be able to show up? Would Bolo be able to kind of help support? And in moments in this lower bracket run, they've done that. That has to be here once again, because Marshy can't just go breaking in hard points by himself again today. Yeah, and that question while we were watching, you know, Tri versus Wolves, Marshy was that guy, and we, again, were poising the question, well, who's going to step up to help? Bolu was that guy and stepped yeah, he up was, in he was such a massive yesterday. way. Even yeah. though, like, Tech you know, had a very shaky map number one, you want to talk about the resilience of a competitor, really bounce back through the rest of that series and reminded Wolves why uh, Tribe are number one NA. Yeah. And as you'd mentioned just kind of casually there, it is really kind of interesting how the bracket and groups have formed. Inko has yet to play another Western team until today. So maybe something about... Something there about West versus East teams. Uh, I don't know. You guys have fun with that. But looking at Tectonic, you know, again, we mentioned it. During the group stage, we were kind of looking for more. But boy, he stepped up yesterday in this lower bracket run, boosting his KD up to a 1.2 in the respawn. And again, not to keep harping on it, but we need to see that again if you're a Tribe fan and you want to see this team find that LG squad in the Grand Finals. Yeah, I'd say consistency is one thing that you definitely want to see out from this Tribe roster as a whole, but mostly tectonic, right? Is that you really do need this guy to be on point as flexible as they are. You really just want to be able to see that come through in fruition because if there's one thing we definitely saw uncharacteristically from Tribe, it was in that first go of things versus Wolves, where sure. they kind of got thrown off kilter, and then through all the lower bracket run, that's when we got to see the Tribe gaming that we saw all through stage four. 100%, and that flexibility is something that now all of a sudden we kind of move the spotlight over towards Lucas, and yeah, he's been unbelievable with this SKS. But in moments during the respawns that we just came off of, especially in the hard points, that KD, means very little when it comes down to actually getting on the OBJ. We called for the firing range. Pull out this operator. Get into the hard point. Yeah. Help your squad out. Because, yeah, you're doing great with the SKS on these rotations, but you see just kind of a lot of inefficient numbers come through, largely what these operator usages until it felt like it was a little bit too late. This was a great moment to keep them tight, but once the game got out of hand, you kind of felt like Lucasin was just relying on the SKS to get his eliminations when he was holding on to, I think, this operator right here. He's at 27 kills. That's 129 to 96. I don't think he pops this until it's like 210 or so for LG. Yeah. It was the first one time that we ended up seeing it. I mean, even right there, you got to see a glimpse of it. 30 and 9, all with the SKS, but there was no follow-up beyond that. And even though Lucasin, yeah, pulled out the claw, was able to find some damage, some elimination, sure, it's whatever. So the game's out of hand. Like it's, it's already gone. Yeah. It's already way too late when you're going up against this Luminosity squad that are so willingly and, and also able to constantly pull out their operators, utilize their resources uh -huh. in any means necessary to be able to put themselves inside the hard point and generate time. And interestingly enough, and I could go ahead and I think make this wager here. Yeah. He was a 1.96 coming into today. Both hard points were great for him when he had the SKS in hand, but that summit control, Lucasin was absent. That KD today has slipped down to a 1.5, which is still incredible. That's so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's so Why right am I number. coming across like, God, this guy's so uh, bad. I mean, it's still relax. so good, but that summit control, I have to imagine, is why that KD has slipped down. Because at one point in that firing range hard point, he was nearly 3.0 positive. It's just, in my opinion, you know, as many eliminations they're able to find. Like, I'm not going to sit here and downplay how talented this guy is. But the overall chemistry and fundamental needs to be followed up afterwards. You know, we, we've been really hitting on this point continuously. And I don't want to, you know, beat a dead horse here. But... This is where we need to see the SMGs really come alive, especially yeah. against Tribe. You know, playing up against all these Eastern teams, you were able to meet their pace. But at least versus Luminosity, it was a little shaky outside of the Search and Destroy in certain moments of time in those hard points. Tribe are going to have all of that plus some more. Yeah, you know agreed. that they prepared for this. Yeah, and just for what it's worth, I don't mean to make it sound like we're coming across harshly at Brazil. If Inko end up winning this entire thing, I don't think there's a question Lucas is MVP. But the thing about it is when you're trying to get to that grand finals and in the mismatch that we had kind of seen in hard point time between LG and Inco, 
especially with players like Blur getting onto the hard point for a significant time, you do want to see that come through in a selfless fashion. That's, yeah, I'm getting a lot of kills, but when needed, when called upon, I can also soak up that hard point time. So maybe being a bit nitpicky, but regardless, one more look back at this series layout. We've already talked about a lot of these maps and modes kind of in combination. We think that what, this takeoff hard point 50-50. If you win it, you're gonna feel great about the rest of the series layout, no matter which side you're looking at. The standoff search feels like a must win for Tribe. Question marks on the raid control. And then if we get to the fourth, we need to see immediate correction from Inko on that summit hard point. So maybe a little bit of pressure on this map set towards Inko that they have to find a way to respond. But it all starts here. Takeoff, hard point, lower final. Let's get it on. Got to be able to really rely on these SKSs to be able to open up the floodgates for the SMGs. Rafa's going to find the first blood here as well, but not a whole lot less to speak of. You're not really upsetting the spawns for Tribe, not quite yet. Jazz up top, lots of damage, lots of spam. Tribe fighting for the backside of spawns. Going to work out. Only nine seconds given away for Inko Gaming. Not a lot of eliminations for really anybody at the moment, but Tech, importantly to note, he is popping up that SKS, looking good with it so far. Kind of like Beat Mommy was saying on the desk, there are three ways to kind of go about the SKS gameplay for Eco. Either say, that looks like fun, I'll give my hand at it, try to match it one for one, smoke it out, take him out of the picture, or the third is just completely overwhelm the hard point, force them to have to make tough decisions. Bolu from behind, trying clean on the kills, up to 25 points and looking good for the scrap time. I like the 4K Nolo Stoes kind of tactic as well as we starting to look like some players are not moving across the map. Noel was one of those players all the way on the backside of the double ring. And yeah, looking like there is some conversations happening up on stage as well. So, Hard point identified. I mean, even through the opening Capture break, the as little information as we were able to get, I definitely got to tip it to the SMGs for at least wanting to get in lost. on the hard point. At the very least, is Triber just kind of running around and soaking up some hard point time. Jez still doing Jez things. And missile inbound. Yeah, I think that Inko just generally need to rely on yeah. just their opening break offs to continuously find space. Hey, here's the thing, if anyone's familiar with competitive COD Mobile, you keep playing until admins say stop. We have not gotten that word yet. So at the moment, Tribe is just soaking up free time. This could get dangerous again. We've seen this before in multiple facets. So Tribe, 75 to nine. You can see Vague saying, no, I'm all right. We're just gonna keep going and why not? Competitive rules are competitive rules. I mean, all 10 players are very much so still in this lobby. And yep, Vague throwing his hands up, relaxing, having a little bit of a smile. And well, Jez is just going to go ahead and walk yeah. around. Why not just post some prize fighter gloves? And uh, yeah, the, the good old one two on three. Looking good. The this will win the rotation. Inco members starting to make a move, starting to shoot back. Hostiles Look, we've seen this before. And now you're dealing with a 100 point deficit as Inko are finally starting to come out and starting to play. And you've got streaks, you've got operators. This could get really ugly really quickly. Tribe realizing the shots are coming back their direction are going to use the operators to just completely put this game out of reach right off the rip. Yep. That's exactly what's going to end up happening, especially with all the hard point time that got generated. Tribe very much so still set up. Marshy will find two with the sub. Jez fully streaked out of their mind. 14 eliminations. Vague also calling an Hunter Killer drone on top of Jez's Predator missile. And oh, the kill feed is just not done glowing up in Tribe's favor. Yeah, this is dangerous prospects here. Not just for map number one, but if you mentally just get booned off of this. I mean, Tribe's ready to fight. They're saying, let's go. Let's make it happen. Inko finally get a kill feed worth talking about. But I mean, it's 141 to 20. And we'll see kind of what happens as we go through. But as we continue to mention, the word was play on. Decisions may be made later on. But I mean, Tribe, this is maybe a free map for him. It's starting to look that way, isn't it, Alan? I mean, the simple fact remains is that Tribe, ever since being knocked down in the lower bracket by Wolves yesterday, have been on the absolute war path you'd had to expect for them to come out of the gates absolutely swinging. They will take this. Yeah, Inko just looked like they're lost at this moment. Not really able to regain mentally. Again, we don't have any idea as far as what may have happened or what may not have happened, but all we could commentate on is the fact that this is all tribe. 160-23. Inko having a real tough time even finding eliminations as they started to kind of get back in towards the mix again. And again, hard to expect it considering the fact that everything was tooled up when it comes to operators and specialists. But finally, Inko gonna get some of their own, maybe a chance to start to put something together here. 
Going in towards the second set of rotations here at the end of it. Yeah, we gotta call a spade a spade. 166 to about 36. Scrap time gets soaked up here by Inko, but you look at the rotation going over back through the middle of the map. It is completely taken over by Tribe. So we reset. Inko on the unfavored side, approaching over towards this mid fountain. Tribe back and forth in the kill feed, but with the high ground, have an opportunity to slay out around the hill. And that'll be enough for Marshy to have a chance to allow his teammates to move on forward. Just watching the crosses, making sure nobody contests from this outside area. Inko. Couple of response kills coming through, but again, a lot to be done here, not just on this hill, but of course in the overall state of the game. And as Tribe comes right back out of their spot, finding clean eliminations. Lucas in for a double, nearly able to do it all himself, but Tribe superior with the numbers, get to 180. 180 counting on up. There's still a lot of time here left on P1. You also got to take a look at the spawns. Inko essentially had the better side of the map, but the way that Tribe are set up on the north side of the map, they are also setting up a nice little coordinated pinch, basically trying to funnel in Inko for that launch site itself. But when it's all said and done, you still cannot allow Tribe to soak up all this time off of P1. That will be conceded the back 10 seconds. 200 points on the horizon here for Tribe. Five operators though for Inko. They are trying to get themselves in towards P2 but it's 200 to 40. This would have to be the most stellar operator usage we've ever seen for them to pull this back. You need a full 60 here, need to win the rotation to new, and then beyond that, we can start talking about further win conditions that would have to come out to make this comeback possible. Tried, operators again of their own, using that to try to break from the front. High ground control goes their way. Noel, surprised by Bolu, and it's a full tribe kill feed. The break is in, and tribe can win here. Looking pretty poised to do so, Alan. You got close spawns coming in. Five and three in blue is Crozen. And soon Noel will fall. Operators being popped on Inko's side, but it's being answered back in kind. Tectonic there with the claw up to 12 eliminations, just holding down this entire flank side, not allowing anybody to come from behind. Wind condition is still in play here for Tribe on this second P2 hard point. Inko looking to try to find a way to break on into contest for as long as they can. Kill still showing up in favor of Tribe. Vague letting them know about it. No contest at the moment. Inko tagged up by Nates, able to get through. Can they still find a way to extend this one more hard point? Because you can still win here if you're trying. Bolu letting them have it. And that will be 250 to 45 at the moment. And again, just because I know all of you out there are probably wondering what's happened. Uh, we don't know. All we know is the word was play on and Tribe sure did that. That's right. No admin set to stop playing, so we kept on playing on through the rotations. And when you get told to keep playing, you gotta keep going on as strong as possible. And hey, Tribe, I'm sitting there, you saw Vega just sitting there, just having a little bit of a chuckle. He was just continuing to play on. Yeah, yeah, what are you supposed to do? Well, you just sit inside the hard point, you generate time, you just walk around, you find free eliminations, you get the resource advantage, you win by 205. Now, we've seen this before. We've 100% seen this before. Uh, you know, back during the Modern Warfare 2019 year, it happened on like a Hackney Dom, where a team was in the middle of an, a, an event, and one team kept playing, the other team put their controllers down. Results stood. Yeah, it is, you know, it's one of those things that comes with it, and it's not a new rule by any stretch of the imagination, so... We'll wait to give a confirmation one way or the other for you, friends, as, of course, the referees doing what they do best to try to communicate exactly how things have unfolded. And not a lot for us to really take away from that, unfortunately. But no, I mean, we'll, we'll kind of see what goes from here. But I will say, if this result does stand, the result for Inko becomes very difficult because it's a standoff search and destroy, which is one of Tribe's most preferred search maps. Yep. And then who knows what happens when they eventually would have to get through uh, at least a summit hard point again. Yep. 3 0 standoff search and destroy for Tribe. This is 100% for them as we. Take a look at the stats. 35 and 10 for Jazz. He was also just running around a lot. Yeah, he was, so like of those, yes. those were boxing gloves. Yeah. Yeah, he was vibing. Yeah. It's, again, the, you, you brought up a great point that when this and if this stands, the mental for Inko needs to be yeah. an immediate You have to back. regain. Yeah, exclamation point regain, please. It, look, it, you were able to do it especially against Luminosity. Sure. You know, they were certainly down, but never out after losing that standoff hardpoint map one. But then going into the raid search and destroy, they immediately clap back after being down 4-2 on the half. Indeed, indeed. So as we kind of were alluding to verbally, there's the visual representation of the pathway that would have to come through. And 
going into this opening map, we said it was kind of a 50-50 with the results that we've seen, both teams preferring to play takeoff hardpoint. I'm sure both were happy to see it pop up for map number one, but whoever were to come out on top of this first map would hold a certain significant advantage towards trying to get to the grand finals. It would be a revenge chance for Inko against LG. Otherwise, it would be a rematch of stage four finals between Tribe and LG. So that's kind of what's underway and at the hands of what could possibly be to come. You saw even the trophy on the stage. So much to play for, so much on the line. We have been building up three years straight for this exact moment of time. Gotta put it all out there. And on the other side, you know, we talked a lot about Tectonic, rightfully so, because he's been kind of the big central personality and star for this tribe team, kind of alongside Bolo over the last couple of years. But how impressed have you been with Jez so far in this tournament? I mean, coming into the team as an 18-year-old, first year competing, they trust him to snipe on Search and Destroy. They trust him to be one of the flex slayers and respawn. He's been lights out. And his KD may not be in the top five, but his role that he fulfills for this squad has been crucial towards not just the success of Tribe on the year, but more importantly, he's been kind of the guy that has locked in some of the key search and destroy plays. As we look back over towards Jez yesterday, oh, it was man. weird to see the Annihilator pop, but yeah. I mean, you sh this show is why you just don't want someone like Jez to have this. Also just making sure that they hold on to the shot when it's utmost necessary to pull the trigger. And yeah, I think the caption for that, the LOL what, is just <laughs> perfect because like even when I was casting over that call, I was rightfully losing my mind because yeah. it's just it, how quickly it all happened. Five kills within 12 seconds. Yeah, with the Annihilator on takeoff, on respawn, that's crazy. But even beyond that too, on the upcoming map mode combination, <laughs> yeah, this is legitimately Jez's playground with the sniper, wall bang spots, jump shots, rotations. All with the sniper, quick scopes included. I, I also our talent at such a young age. Yep, he's been one of those guys that is definitely, I think, we could easily label as a superstar in the making, if not a superstar that's already arrived <laughs> for us here. And I'm sure Tri very excited to have him on board for what will hopefully be an extended period of time in their hopes of continuing their North American regional dominance, so to speak. A little bit less cemented though with LG in the Grands. Tribe trying to work their way back after their loss to Wolves, but. You have to feel like if we do get that rematch, fireworks could be coming through. Still awaiting word though, what's exactly coming through. So we'll step away for now. Don't go too far though. We could be back very rapidly for either a map one replay or a map two continuation of this lower finals.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Call of Duty Mobile World Championships. The trophy on display. Our final three teams looking to duke things out. And the update after the bracket and after everything was going on, it will stand. Tribe 250-45 will be cemented as we will continue on to the standoff search and destroy. This puts the whole series layout into a very different perspective, not only because it starts to slightly favor the Tribe squad, but more importantly, for those five young men, can they find a way to recuperate, regain, and try to get back into this series? Oh, fist bumps are out. You can see the smiles across the face from what little they can actually show. They need to have it here. Inko need to bounce back as best they possibly can. I'll be in search and destroy. We kind of counted them out versus Luminosity. They were able to do it then. Now this whole thing about composure Hits, yeah. brings into a whole different conversation here at the standoff. Tribe's best search this weekend. Here we go. Inko tasked with the offense first and foremost. Quick hit over towards Zay. Saying, let's go. Let's get into this series. Tribe, as usual, still set up to try to contest this. Bolu for first blood inside of Cubby. Vague working alongside with him. They'll both combine for the first two eliminations. Inko stuck behind the tank. Vague says, my time to go. Good help from Abad. And now the pistol out, but Inko respond with eliminations. Just not quite enough. And the aggressive offense countered by just an aggressive setup for the defense. Yeah. No, I mean, that setup right there, specifically for Tribe, is just what we have come to know and expect. You know, you get tractor control, you make sure that somebody's always inside a cube. The cross from Delhi is always kept in mind. For this next offensive attempt, going to be a little bit more of a gas station alleyway control. First block, Vague, switching things up by playing Frontside Hotel. Marshy just behind. That was a play through gas station. It turns into a two-for-one exchange favoring the Tribe defense. The bomb also down just outside the hotel stairs. So advantage once again, kind of early, leaning towards Tribe. They got a lot of forward defensive positions that Inko need to clear. Timing is going to be everything here for Bolu, playing on the statue tank. Player number five is going to be Crozen, would be the first point of contact, but try to run back inside a bakery. They will be dealt with. It is just so timely. Yeah. Just the pouncing off the information leaves Rafa in a 1v3. Has an SKS as well as a Switchblade. Whichever tool is best for the job. Nate at the top, desperate in nature, not going to land for Vay, but will regain and rejoin his squad mates. 3v1 situation. Bomb still down inside a hotel. Bolu sees a shoulder. Was that information mutual? Oh, it was, but Rafa not quite able to land. Now in towards Bakery. Help is here for Tribe. In fact, all three members are going to have a pretty good look as they try to trap Rafa inside of White. Oh, slide out. And blunder ensues. And yeah, you know, the biggest difference maker is uh, just how proactive Vague is being just in, in those first two rounds that we've honestly seen. We've, and even dissected it through the other three times you and I got to cast uh, yeah. Tribe on this map mode combination, just wherever Vague can be with an SMG in hand, he's always first fishing for that first blood. 100%, and this Tribe defense has been, I would say, stalwart beyond recognition, I think, of just about any other squad. It's when they get to the offensive side that their vulnerabilities start to creep up. So if you're Inko, I think your goal here is to try to find a target of two on this offensive side. They're going to try to flush things out, heading Marshy's direction towards Fridge. Trophy system taken care of. The push is still on defensively. Tribe trying to rotate back just in case help is required. And this does mean the middle of the map stays relatively open, although Inka will not possess that information. Big moment can come around here for Marshy. We know how much he loves that back alleyway outside of Delhi. Throws some shots into that. Causes considerable doubt. Are you going to push this? Marshy thinking about it, just some pre-aim, but everybody recollects himself as yeah. they try to rotate over towards A. And you need to use nades here if you're Inko to try to get some of these tribe members out of these key positions. Bolu inside of Cubby, Watch out. not flash. tagged up by the flashes. That one will land. Help is over the top of this. Jez is here to help support, as Rafa may have caught a bit of a route. Snuck it in from behind, has Jez in front of him. Triggered his blend, executed for not quite long enough. The trade is good, and tribe still holding numbers, but Luke is in, takes Vague right off the top of the bomb site, giving his team a chance. Bomb patty cake on that picket fence. A little reposition again will be happening after Vague goes down, but Bolu doesn't have to move out from Q. Proactive play coming through from Marshy, all the way in the back side of the warehouse. This is just two scopes that are left here for Inko. Good first shot on the tech. Flank again, like you mentioned, is on the way. Bolu still holding inside a cubby. This is a tough clear for Inko, even though it's a 2v2. Crozen would have to essentially pop off for a little slide peek. And quick scope on the bolo. There it is. Misses the shot. The pistol not going to get away. Finish the mission. Following up, Luke is in. Able to at least secure the train. But the question is, where is Marshy? And the answer is, he's right behind you. 
Lucas in, stays alive, pistol. Resets, creates a buffer, but the clock has expired. And with that, good discipline from Tribe to secure. Had to go for that ego challenge. This is the only hope to be able to get that win condition. You can see Marcy right there just smiling, kind of laughing a little bit, able to uh, finally capitalize on their ever so loved alleyway flank. The objective, the enemy. And again, has it's the all really coming down to just a little bit of a mishap. You try to make that flank play happen through the middle of the map, you don't have the coverage to look at Grandma's. Yeah, it's true. Early numbers advantages lead to these kind of rogue routes, finding success. Inko, a different look, aggressive, in towards Marcy's direction at Delhi, and they will isolate for the pick. Tribe trying to recover, but Lucas then makes sure nobody pushes through the A site. Best look so far on the offense, Rinko. Plant is down. Forward positions that Tribe have to clear. The bowl has found a bit of an ankle deep. And how about that shot from Jazz? Tech also in the mix. The kills are all coming the way of Tribe. Dad, though, an opportunity to try to isolate some of these members. Has a chance to look over the top. Also has nades that he can play with. Bomb's being defused though, and Tech will just hold for it. Dan never getting a luck. No, they were really, really difficult there in that 1v2, right? When you get that first pick, more often than not, in historically search and destroy for Call of Duty, you're always expecting for the challenge to come through for the trade. Sure, yeah. It never came through. So in Dad's defense, yeah, I mean, you might want to go check the bomb, maybe in that 1v3, but it never comes through. Four rounds in, all in favor of Tribe. And pretty darn convincingly as well, that retake. Woo wee! Mm-hmm. Inko given some space this round over towards A. Tribe trying to recollect by playing a bit of a delayed retake, and it's not going to work out. First two kills once again good for Inko. Jez wanted to give it a look, but inevitably not able to find too much. Dad mid-map, Marshy trades. Some control here for Tribe again as the bomb is still planted with a 4v3 in favor of Inko. And the flexibility coming through from some of these players. Kilos in hand as well. Just the wall bangs absolutely sublime. But the push over towards A successful. Time ticking down to 30 seconds. And Jez, Marshy actually splitting themselves off from one yeah. another. Jez looking for an angle on the backside of this bomb site, trying to make life a little bit easier for Marshy on the reclamation through barrel. Noel in the corner. Shots ringing out. Noel has yet to move. 15 seconds, have to go. Marshy predicting the corner, but the shot's not quite near the land. Noel secures the kill, and on the flip side, Jez cannot get through the cut. And that'll be a first round for Inko. I, I've still maintained two would be successful for them on this offensive yes, side. Would. Hey, two is all they needed uh, against Luminosity to yeah. fully come back in the search and destroy, but you're messing with a different belly of a beast here of yeah, Tribe he Gaming on standoff. Wonder what the adaptation's gonna be. Thinking that it's gonna be all through the middle of the map. Look at Tribe completely giving up all the space in the world, inviting Inko in. The difference is Vague is actually gonna be playing through mid-map, so he can actually pinch behind this rather quickly. The counter nades from Tribe are landing, and they're landing hard. Stuns, flashes, nades, even the gunfire coming in favor of Tribe. Numbers as the bomb is planted. Can you survive through this 40 seconds? Nade over towards Elbow. Does it land? Noel sees Jazz through the cracks of the barrel. That'll work out to try to make this a little bit easier on the life count. Vague on that quick pinch. Crozen trying to walk through boxes. He did not see the tribe members coming through, but still finds the first. The pistol in hand. Inko repositioning, but they can't go too far. The bomb's not planted for this. They have to still hold around Tractor and Cubby as they make their way back through. Rafa gets the first. Rafa, as he gets the second. Knife is out. He's not able to get there. The timing, though. He still collapses. He's slicing. He's dicing. And Inko gets the second. Rafa going absolutely massive on the main stage. Pop off, young man. Well done indeed. And look, if you're Tribe and you completely give up the A bomb site like that, your retakes need to be on point. It's the same post plant that we saw uh, from that previous round. As you see there again, Rafa just through the knife and then immediately going to the pistol to be able to clean things up. Oh, and how about Rafa? Little heat check on that Marshy. Tectonic in the back will secure the trade, making safe the flank. But early map control, try to be forced for Inko and Noel will get caught. So numbers early with Tribe, but a lot of time on the clock here for Inko to try to figure out how they want to set themselves up. Basically giving up so much space. But you can see here with Dad thinking with the idea, maybe I push all the way through the alleyway, but Frozen, he's got the A-bomb on lock, especially with the sniper shots like that. Take it down, Bolu. You know Jez is saying, you want to dance, brother. Yeah, that's his side of the map <laughs> with a picket fence. So Jez will move over towards that corner at boxes, seeing if he could catch any information off Crozen. Fake bomb in hand, working alongside of Jez, connects on to Lucas and Dean. Dad on the long route, coming forward, Crozen, stunned up, flashed, vague, taking space. On top of that, you do have a little bit of assistance through the middle of the map. Tectonic gets a couple of shots into Crozen, who does stay alive. The trade good as Dan comes back through to capitalize on the isolation in mid-map. 2v2. Post plan has one on statue, Crozen 
Gonna be able to take down Vague, throwing shoulders, seeing where the play's gonna be coming from. And Jez, he's not gonna have information that no. all the players are coming from this This one. is just quick scope city from Jez. No nades, just the scope. Might be all he needs. First shot, look at oh! He collapses! Oh! What? Oh my god! We talked about it. Jez lives for these moments. Take a look at it one more time. You can't write a better story than that. Post plan situation, 1v2. You set quick scope, he'll take two to go. Oh my. Tribe now up 5 2. Playing with a little heat check of their own. Down towards gas station. It gets denied. Inko still trying to keep the tempo up. The three man hit does work out for first blood to the back alley, and that's enough for Inko to hold the numbers and back away. Are you shooketh? Inko? <laughs> Probably not. They still have fun first blood, but they're giving up a lot of space here. Bolu pushing up here with the CBR fort. Just gonna be waiting to see if anybody pushes through the gas station. It's pretty typical, especially after fighting first blood, but statue control very much so still in play here for Vague. Tex trying to rotate over to assist. Jez, <laughs> just give him that side of the map, Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> still trying to contest with some wall banks. This is a very passive defense, though, for Inko, and it can get punished if the bomb gets down, largely because you have the long flank being washed into safe position. You've got Vague, who could safely get back to cover by tank, and Jez could this decide what does he want to watch do you want to watch mid do you want to watch a he may just do both at once considering what we've seen from him today gonna start pushing up gonna help let this bomb go down but you have coverage across the tractor so now jez can back across all the way up towards it. statue play for the post plant but the, the retake is coming through very quickly tech well done to get two on the backside of tractor oh boy. oh boy jez no not this time luke is in <laughs> we'll <laughs> shut down any potential heroics you can hop now, Bolu, timing. Lucas and sees him over the top of the bomb site. And Inko get the three. Look at the smoke even came out across the pick. That's just like, no, we're gonna cut off All the right, line. It's like one way or another. Look at me. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know if he would even care to have the smoke in front of his face. He probably still knows the wall bang spots. Yeah, facts. Yeah, counting the Defending one pick offense at a time. The Getting themselves on the board for defense are Inko so far. This time they're not gonna give up that much space. Got a full flood wow, coming wow. over to They're gonna push present. through this. Yeah, they're pushing through. All these nades go over towards boxes. Noel gets forward. Tribe have given away a lot of space. They may not 100% know that this position has been kept. So for Tribe, looking largely at a play through Hotel. But look at Inko. They free up Noel to get forward and then say, he's got all of A. Let's go help out in the back side of B. And I love this. Just very swift rotation, didn't see any nades, didn't see a lot of pushback over by A. Quick rotate all the way back in the overside of Delhi. Rafa, Dad, coupling along together, thinking with the idea that they want to push through over by Alley, but you'd have to assume that's yeah. going to be over here. Oh, Noel. Oh, that's information. Tribe could isolate here. Lucasin tried to help on the cross. He needs to try to keep Noel from getting overwhelmed, because here comes the rest of the Tribe, knowing they possibly have a free kill in front of them. Lucasin just looking for information off the jump. And Tribe is taking a long time to try to break this down. They're going to use nades to try to flush out Noel, who does reposition. They may not know he's still here. Oh, now they'll know. Flash will connect. That's actually a stun through Bolo on the slide. Shut down by Noel. Still a good one for one commitment. Lucas in over the top. Sniper battle with Jez. Dan on the flank. Caught out by Tribe as Marshy gets both on the long play. Vague, free to plant as he tries to get it down over towards B. Lucas in, Crows in 2v4. And they both have snipers on. This is going to be very difficult. And they're isolating themselves as well. They get some shots. It's just information on Acrosion. You legitimately don't need to do anything when Jess is watching the cross. Creating space, creating time. Vague needs just to find one more. It's Crozen. Back towards his spawn. Barely a hope. Maybe not even a prayer. 20 seconds. Tech over the top smoke, but Vague responds with the pistol. It's map point for Tribe. Vague adding a little bit of extra there after taking down the first. He's just cool, calm, collected. Just knows that it's just strictly business coming all the way through for Tribe. Destroy and again, you know, Marshy shutting down that flank play was really the only thing that Inko had up their sleeve to potentially stop that play from happening. Yeah, agreed. Inko defensively double stack over through Hotel. Marshy's so lucky to be alive right now. Also got the read that if there's going to be two players in Hotel, we may be able to get forward on towards A quickly. Good kills. Would have been nice to have if you're Inko in this position because you've completely left the A site wide open for Tribe to take. 
spot going down here for Vague. Look at what it's planted for. It's planted for that very long line inside the Jets is playing, but yeah. unaware. Yeah. Rafa's pushed all the way up through L. This could be a first blood that would favor Inko's retake attempts. And they do catch out, not just Jez, but also Bolu. Trying to hold inside a cubby. Clean kills coming out for Rinko. Someone can hop right here. It's going to have to be a long play 1v5 for Marshy. Not going to have it happen. Flawless round for Rinko to get to four. Can't ask for a better outcome right there. Just a swift adaptation coming through for Inko. Instead of sending players like Dad all the way on the flank past the gas station, they just recognize, hey, nobody's pushing us over by the BS and D. So why don't we just go ahead and take the courtyard, take Brown, and put one player of Rafa's caliber of what we've been able to see through the day in L to be able to upset that line inside. Because we all know that Chess loves the play. That's factual. Another passive look here for Tribe. Trying to see if Inkle will once again flirt with the temptation of trying to get an aggressive flank out. This time, no such antics. It's just names. That battle for back continues to be a very high pressured point of contact as Vague will fall. Crozen for good first play. Take down the bomb. It's on the statue. You'd have to assume, especially for Inko, that you took down Vague. That is more often than not the OBJ player. This play for pick, offensive defense, has worked out that in favor of Inko. They don't have to do anything. They're still playing for the retake. You got three players all in the backside of the ASD. Still a little bit of. Getting locked in for this defense. Shoulders being thrown over towards back alley. Oh, Jez. Does he see either of these two players that are quick on the contest, either in Delhi or on the jump up? Con collected. Jez also gets an SMG to work with. Once again, Inko not providing any information whatsoever. Stun queued up. Watch out. That will bounce over the top, not connect with anything. Trying to force motion out of the defense. Very little can be provided. But Rafa has just given Marshy a chance to even up the numbers. Isolation likely to come through here towards Hotel. Marshy hoping that he's not been hurt as of yet. Sees the prediction. The free fire comes out. Marshy gets the kill. Here comes Inko, though, quickly over towards gas station. And as Lucas it takes down Tech, the defense needs to make a decision here. Do you play for this flank or are you trying to stop the plant? You really can't do both at once. And as Jez gets the first pick, he's got freedom to try to plant. Bomb going down. Look at the space that Bolu's playing right in that Thomas corner. The retake typically comes through for Inko. They're going to come flying from that side of the map. That said, though, Jez is not able to back out of the bomb site, so he's going to stack with Bolu. Playing long as number five in Marshy, but he just has an SMG. Inko laboriously trying to make their way in. Point of contact through elbow. Tribe takes it just off the screen. Dead. Tagged up. Doesn't want a challenge. Good free fire, though, from Lucas in with the pistol. Need to get their way in. Still double stacked his tribe. On the way out of Cubby. Not going to work out. It's Marshy to watch the retreat. And the standoff search goes the way of Tribe. Almost what we would expect to have happen. That is now 4-0 and oh through the entirety of this competition. That Tribe have come into standoff search and destroy and have walked away with a W. And honestly speaking, there's just consistencies to speak of, right? I mean, you got Marshy, whether it's offense or defensively, just loves that alleyway on the backside of uh, yeah. Delhi as well as the gas station. You saw plenty of opportunities for Inko to maybe try to shut it down, uh, such as like Dad trying to put themselves in a position to do it. But I mean, Jez. Just doing jazz things. It's absurd when you really think about it. When you, the space is being capitalized on by Vague, it just allows Jez to be the free spirit that he is, just <laughs> all the way across that statue side, past AS and D. I'm gonna have nightmares about that collateral. And in the face of defeat, Rafa gets 11, but Lucasin drops 14. Biggest problem is offensively, even though they got three plants off in the six rounds they played, very rarely were they able to fully lock down the post plants. Not what you want to see. And then the opposite side, Vade gets four total plants off. Jez gets one of his own, and only two retakes were successful for Inko. So defensively, not quite up to par for what we saw from Tribe, because we kind of left that first half saying, hey, two rounds for Inko on the offense was going to be fine, you would think. At least they stay competitive. Yeah. It's again, you know, you ask and you shall receive. You got those two offensive rounds and at least be able to bounce back a little bit on defense. But the one thing that was consistent was the legwork from Tribe. And you'll see that coming through from these highlights itself is that everybody gets activated from yeah. Tribe at one way or another. They're always making sure that in their positional advantages, they are at least capitalizing off of it, whether it's communication or just team shots. 
This is the tribe gaming that we've come to know and love through so many different stages, and especially here on this weekend. And the, the thing that really impresses me about how tribe plays standoff is their ability to read a defense after only seeing maybe one or two players and saying, all right, if they're here, that means we can go there. And they're really quick to make that call and then execute off of that. It was what was really successful for them on their way to a Western Finals victory last year. Same thing could be said about their way to a stage four North American victory. And it's going to be a problem for, and it has been a problem for just about everybody here this weekend. Even though these standoffs have been close at times, I still am really impressed with the way that Tribe communicates across the map to make sure they know exactly where their advantages are. I mean, this play from Rafa was just so, yeah, sick. so sick. Absolutely absurd. But then this happens and you go, maybe it wasn't that sick. Yeah, I mean, we had two <laughs> highlight moments, but I mean, obviously the collateral. Yo, Demon Jez is like, wait, I got both? <laughs> and, insane. Tribe really do act like the Sherlock Holmes of Search and Destroy when it comes down to yeah, Todd Mole. Yeah. Which is the way that they're able to depict information off of seeing one or two players, counting nades, stuns, seeing it all come through, it's just crazy. And again, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm, everybody's thinking the same exact thing that I'm going to say. This is why they were the number one seed and the number one team from North America coming into this tournament. It is just everything. When they are on the game, they are just the well-oiled machine. Yeah. Not even a well-oiled machine. They are the, the, the only one. He makes fast people look not, not fast. fast. They're so fast. <laughs> so let's switch the perspective. Inko having to reverse sweep to get into the grand finals. It has to go by the way of a raid control. A very difficult and I would say hard to predict summit hard point based on what we've previously seen on their summit control. Different modes, but respawn is respawn in so many words. And then a slum search and destroy. Man, it, it's not great news. It really isn't. And that was the biggest thing about how we framed up this series. Whatever happened in map number one, what we thought was going to be a 50-50 map. Circumstances happen. Tribe prevail through them. And now a chance to very cleanly continue this lower bracket run on their way to not just a top two finish, but possibly a rematch. And maybe, again, dictating superiority over COD Mobile globally. One saving grace coming into this is that Inko, throughout the weekend, they played it once, was raid control, and when they were able to beat Smart Omega 3-0, Tribe, on the other hand, like we were talking about when we were taking a look at the best of five maps, said yeah. they haven't played raid control at all. They've mostly been playing slums, which is 3-1. They also have that one win on firing range control as well. So it'll be interesting to see, again, raid as a map desperately needs to be called for SMG presence galore. Well, with all that said, hey, this has been an extremely tight series, and more than that, an extremely tight overall tournament across pretty much all of our regions. We've been yeah. excited to see how Latin America has showed up in a major way, not just from the Zingo team, but also from Skade. East, not nearly as expected. Uh, but that all said, these final three teams have more than deserved their chance to be here and a shot at, again, the lion's share of that 1.7 total million. But just as kind of a recap over this entire series and more clarification on map number one, Statement from the Activision team is, per the rules, teams are supposed to keep playing in case of lag. Inco experienced lag at the outset of a game and stopped playing without the admin's discretion. Admin had directed players to keep playing so that the lag could be diagnosed. The admin needed to verify whether the lag was intermittent or consistent. When both teams continued to play, the admins observed that both teams were on a consistent network environment without consistent lag. So therefore, the match results have stood for that 250 to 45. We've seen this happen before. And that's the thing is knowing that that was going to be possibly a case. I mean, it's not something that these players are completely unfamiliar with. Try to make the gut check call saying, hey, we're going to keep playing on. And unfortunately for Inko, the result does not go their way. And now a massive advantage for Tribe as we continue to kind of reevaluate over the overall series. Well, I mean, we even talked about it while Map 1 was happening. Look, this is COD Mobile rule set in a, in a nutshell. You keep going until somebody says stop. Yeah. And until somebody says stop, I mean, Tribe were already about like 114 up, and yeah. again, you know, that's just that's just what we what we do here in COD Mobile Esports. You just have to continue to play on until the admins are able to uh, come to that diagnosis. So, find ourselves here, 2-0 lead for Tribe off of that takeoff hard point and in a blistering standoff search and destroy. It's almost what we came to expect to a certain degree, sure. uh, but to reverse sweep Tribe Gaming especially coming into a raid.
Again, I got to echo the point. Your SMGs need to be yeah. on fire. And I, the other part about this is you, again, we, we consider the biggest strength towards Inko, and it's Lucas in with an SKS. Yeah. How do you get him into the best positions possible on both sides of the control points, whether it's defensively or offensively, to make sure his subs have an easier quality of life getting into those tight spaces where they're the most effective? So you expect to see things like long range play from cash window, long range play from laundry window or the opposite side in towards art or yep. towards top bedroom, maybe right. even try to win mid map. Those are all very key positions that you hope that Lucas can keep doing what he does best and his subs can follow up, take away that space and hopefully find advantages further deep. It's just how consistently they need to be in those specific positions because we have seen Lucas in, albeit again, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna knock on the guy. He's nasty. Heck nasty, yeah. So I, you, you gotta be looking at him to be able to continuously play that selfless role, that, the tectonic role, right? Sure, to where sure. you're always putting themselves in those longer lines of sight to make sure that the SMGs at least have the lay of the land rather than what Lucasin can get away with and has continuously through a lot of different matches this weekend was getting in your face of the SKS. As comfortable as that may be, you need to be able to showcase what your role actually entails yeah. for a map like Great. 100%, it can't be one dimensional. No. Even though you're great at it, this is a game that we've seen and we've talked about this a lot. Yeah. Where it, this is no longer a we're just better so we win type game. Yep. Everyone's dynamic, everyone's flexible. And the overall level of competitive COD Mobile has escalated significantly from last year to this year. But a raid control, again, it's a must win from here on out for Rinko. Need the reverse sweep to get back into the grand finals for a chance at $700,000. Otherwise, Tribe will make it an all North American affair in which Bobby, I'm sure, was already farming impressions for. He's probably got the drafts <laughs> already built out. Here we go. Raid control. Oh, yeah. Probably got at least five tweets ready for that. But here we go, offense first. He's coming through for Inko. Definitely love to see it come through convincingly, but two for one goes the trade, evening things out. Tech, Jazz, Bolu all show it up with the kill feed. Noel still here at ring though. Reinforcements defensively, very rapidly though on the way. Noel avoiding a large majority of the utility on the way. Can you find the kills though? Counter utility for Rinko looking solid. First ticket progress is good. Defensive numbers still persisting though. A tribe gets three straight. Luke is it up top in towards our Yes, gets the double. But with that said, the second ticket progress was not locked and it's further being depleted. Look at the positioning as well throughout the entirety of the map. Like, Tech is just chilling, bottom bed, waiting for any flank to be coming all the way through. A lot of focus inside a kitchen. It's just one of them. who kill. turns. He's going to be able to find one. Almost had Marshy locked down, but was dead to rights either way. But looking a look at the B zone, it's completely chalked by Tribe. Whether you love it or hate it, it's the right call. You give up the three seconds, you hold on the lives. No, I think that's the right call Friendly on both sides. Rafa, deployed. just a nuisance in the back. Pulling Tribe defenders back at the same rate for Tribe, you just don't want him to Our exist in Kitchen when you have to destroyed. rotate over towards A. So it's kind of a give and take situation for both squads. 21 playing 20, tons of time on the clock. Just comes down to how do you want to try to get across and find an exit from this B zone if you're in co. They're opting to go towards mid. Fake. Here to meet them. Long range shots, decent. Did not expect the play through pillars though, and Inko will gain that mid location in the gardens. Tech still hasn't moved, by the way. <laughs> yeah, true. He's just hanging out. Well, yeah. I'm bottom bed. Yeah. Mid match Better push actually control. starting to ensue. Crozen's all the way in the backslide looking at jungle as well. There's a lot of work to do for Noel inside a kitchen. He's able to find one. You gotta think, I mean, look, Tech is fine. If anyone gets onto the A zone, he's gonna have a really solid look back yeah. there to just pick him apart. That Inko looking to put some pressure on towards the lives though. Six life advantage, thirdly occurring for Inko. More to possibly come, but as Dad drops, the rest of Inko will full commit. Once again, just saying, all right, we still got plenty of time to put you down to within single digit life counts. Tribe's response is solid though. And with that, we go 13 v 10. Tech now getting activated as he backs up, helping out the play through pool. And it's only 43 seconds of the clock and all of a sudden Inko, they have their own little bit of an obstacle to try to hurdle, but Tech could only come away with one. Big trade from Rafa to finally get Tech out from that positioning. He's able to go on five in a row though. That was their first life. <laughs> Mind you, but <laughs> yeah. regardless, everything stabilizes, but it's favoring Inko. You had two lives as far as his advantage is concerned. You can play for the trades here, but you got to get onto the A zone and solve the clock. Yeah, this defensive setup for Tribe is forcing Inko to have to all hit through Tiki. They are on though. The clock will stop. Two life advantage for Inko. Vague from the window, waiting for the smoke to dissipate. Now has clear sight over what's on the zone itself. Tech, Bolu, combining Marchi, trying to recontest. 
8v5. Second tick of progress on the way. Flight play from Vink, shut down. Lucas in, turns his attention up towards Money Window. Good for the double. Now towards basketball. Last hope for Tribe would have to come through. Trades, could be win condition. Could just jump on the zone as well. Whichever's more convenient for you. Marshy trying to clean out the flank. Boxing gloves out. Left, right, punch combo. But Marshy's down to limited okay. amounts of time and cannot get back to contest Inko on the board first. Yeah, diamond boxing gloves. I mean, that, first of all, seems very heavy. Unpractical. And also just would hurt, too. But regardless, yeah, I, I mean, backs against the wall. Really did feel like that the spacing through the middle of the map was going to favor that of Tribe. But finding the right picks, being able to get inside of Tiki, like you were saying, it was one-dimensional, it was required, and they come through the offensive round. Inko predicting their defense needs to be moved over towards B. They have guessed incorrectly. Tribe are on towards A, but this is why. Luke is in, calls out the Pred Missile. Makes life a little bit easier on the defense for the retake, finding the first kill. Trojan, backside, SKS. First tick locked in, second on the way very rapidly, as the stack is largely here. Marshy one tapped in the corner. Bolu, oh man, thought for sure he was dead to rights. I think the same was thought by Crozen, and Bolu keeps his life. Secures the second tick. Dead off the backside. Double for him, but the knife comes through. More boxing match happening over the course of the poolside stairs. Trying to find a way to regain. Inko, can you get on to contest? Do you even want to? The answer seems to be no to both questions asked, and Tribe will add 60 seconds with a life lead. Whoa! Well, hold on a second. Lucasin's heating up even further. 13 eliminations to their name. The only real players that are even closer, people that are on eight. Yeah. That gets traded out though. This is a lot of space being provided through the middle of the map. Yes, you lost the A zone, but the lives are starting to mitigate itself. Friendly hunter killer drone to Crap ahead, pulled out a purifier, trying to gain control of art. Only got one. Noel could make the same play if he so chose to. Still plenty of time in the clock, just a one life advantage for the defense. Tribe getting their setup over through driveway, handed Grenade towards Red. Out. Now the Dates on the back side. Dad flushed out from top side ring. Friendly Still surviving under though. Under Killer Drone will likely be what is used to try to Smoke. get on first, but it was destroyed almost instantaneously. So now the hit has to come through just the hard way. Names over the top. Inko, a little bit stuck as Tribe is going to pull two operators to try to secure this B zone. One last pure fire here. It's going to be in the hands of Vague. Trying to push up over to the driveway. Great help there from Tech. First segment already done. Second. Oh marginally on its way, but trades are going to be good enough to at least keep Tribe at bay. Inko need to make a decision here. They've got three operators they may have to spend to try to lock down this defense. And a 2-0 count would be massive for their efforts, but here comes the stack from Tribe. Second tick rapidly on the way. Likely to be secured. Inko, what do you do? How do you get in? Oh, how about that? An easy elimination from Lucas in. Third tick though, already halfway done. You gotta find the kills. You gotta get on the contest. Tribe still finding kills, but Lucas in pops out the claw. Finding great value will clear off every Tribe offensive member while also depleting the third tick fully. But you have a minute left on the clock here, Alan. 10v7. Lucasin still finding trades with the claw will finally be exhausted. Hunter Killer Drone also being invested by Lucasin. Also has a Pred Missile should they want to use it. Two more operators to speak of, but it might not matter because Noel's pushing all the way up past the hot tub and is able to keep them further at bay. Sub one minute now. 8v6. Noel could just be a pass back here. Rafa's also revealed his position, trying to tag through elbow. Only a little bit of chip damage. Noel, still an absolute pest. Gets this life count down to within one, and look at all the SKS's controlling statue. Inko are going to be shredding with just a couple of team shots to happen. Long route, though, from Jazz to the backside. This 1v1 could open up space. Could maybe They're determine the round line. overall. Try finding a little bit of success from the front. Jez could still play this for spawn kills, but Crozen eliminates the threat. 4v4, 12 seconds. Tribe have to flood. Smoke comes through. They're going to use that to make their way on past the SKSs. Lucas in a little bit deeper than Dad. First kill comes out. Tech with the trade. 3v3. Clock stops at 5. Lucas in in the corner. Misses. Tribe still a chance. 1v2. Marshy gets the first. Avoids Crozen. Can he get the regen? Crozen goes to the Kali sticks. Regen's in. Marshy, 1v1! Nice Still probably thought he was either weak, thought he could cut down the space. Marshy kind of having a little smile over it as well, just knowing exactly what they did. You gave up the space. It's okay to remain contested. There it is from his POV. Marshy just locking things down again. Didn't even need the reload here with the CBR. Gets the information as well, just snaps as well. Put the Kali six away, young man. Marshy shows up when it matters most. Huge 1v3. 
And Tech comes into round number three with the first blood. Inko rapidly making progress on towards B. Second tick lock. Bolu wants a challenge. Takes down the first, predicts the second. No, turned away. And Inko will get a very early capture on this B zone. There it goes. Two minutes and 20 seconds. Casual stuff. It's a 5v3 trade where the opening break is concerned, but playing for these exits are massive. Look at it also how you have defensive members for Tribe all the way up towards driveway. And if you're Inko, that kind of gives you a little consideration that you got to be careful with where you go. Trades back and forth. Down to even lives. Bolu trying to contest bottom side bedroom. Denied. Inko still a couple of streaks. Hunter Killadrome can be spent for dad. Operators even across the board at the moment. But some mid-map focus starting to come through for Inko. Tribe would have to respond to this. Shots on the way in. Just pre-fires for now. Now nades to follow. Dad pulling out the operator, trying to clear out. Kitchen, good nades to support this. Wow, now on the way in. Noel able to assist. Possible flank from Bolo on the back side of this, but he reveals his position. Now he's got to essentially just help from the cut. Not going to work out. Inko looking good to immediately storm on towards A. Six life lead. And the clock will stall as they start to get on towards the A zone. Raffle with the Purifier are only able to find one. Dad is also about to respawn in with two streaks of their own. Noel and Crozen have operators. On the opposite side, you have Tectonic as well as Marcy with operators. Should they feel the pressure to try to retake it with them? Drive regain. First stick of progress does get secured. Win condition could be met just by trying to play this like a TDM. Rafa delaying, trying to find a way to finesse on Bolu, but ultimately unsuccessful. Vague, stun, doesn't make a difference. Still finds one. That's going to create some extra time for the defense to drain from this clock. 10 versus 14. Under one minute. Winning conditions quite literally all over the place. And the way that Tribe has to continue to play out through the rest of this defense is on their side of the map. You can't really try to overextend because there's going to be so many players from Eco mid-map. Now flooding forward, Tech focused up towards Money Window, but the kills come out of Olu. That will clear out the majority of Kitchen, and now you can start to zone forward. Six feet ten, 40 seconds on the clock. Life advantage to Inko, clock advantage to try. Jets, saw sidesteps around, finds Crozen for free. Life lead now lives. down to three. Pred Missile uses a chance to possibly get over through the Money Window. Train's looking good for Inko. Marshy, could he do it again? Marshy! For the double, predicts the third, but the SKS ultimately wins the battle. 2v7, clock will stop. Well, Inko stay in the zone, but now Lulu's turn to start up. Tectonic clears the zone, long range shots, lots of tags. Can't finish the kill. Second follow up, takes care of Noel. Now a 1v3, second tick is locked. Tech has to go. Has an operator if he wants to use it but is instead gonna clear up basketball. Has to touch, has to get there. Inko still on, still contesting. Tech gets the eliminations, but cannot stop the clock or the contest. And Inko take the round. Such a tough call, isn't it? I, I mean, you don't, just don't want to fly out from the wheelbarrow cutout, but you know, even, even more so is, is what makes it a little bit more of a head scratcher is even just trying to slide it. Like, worst comes to worst, you're still going to lose it, but you had information on that second player of your tech. There's no real reason why you shouldn't have just tried to slide after getting that first elimination and trying to find a second. Regardless, all offense so far. Tribe now looking to do the same to extend it to a round five. Once again, Inko try to control over towards B. It's Tribe focus early over towards the A zone, but the kitchen controlled by Inko. They will have a chance to try to pick apart at this. First tick in. taking A. Second tick rapidly on the way. Marshy going to call out the Purifier, trying to control Money Window. This may have to be a concession out of Inko. I don't know how you get through this and not cost yourself a ton of lives. They are going to give it kind of one half go here. As Lucas and Rafa able to find a couple eliminations, but ultimately the third tick looks pretty inevitable. And now Tech has got a clock. He's trying to put some pain in towards the spots. Yeah, the zone gets captured. And now all of a sudden Inko is kind of stuck just outside the kitchen. Tribe can get on and start making significant progress on B. That's exactly what Jets is going to do. Tech will find three with that claw. I really don't like what I just saw from Ingo trying to at least get that third segment back in their possession because as you were saying, middle of the map, off the respawns, and you already have that first segment. Second, surely on the way. Two minutes on the board. Play through pillars though. Ingo trying to force a regain. Working out well. Kills come through. Bolo trying to get something done with the claw, but it's shut down. Tech right behind him. Also turned away. Crozen with the regain. Second ticket progress depleted. Stabilizing. At least for now. You still have a Predator Missile in the back pocket for Lucas and Noel. Dad, they got some operators. It's really just like one big standout player so far. It's just been tech on that flex so far, but still lives evened up. 
so much time still left yeah. to be able to find either 15 eliminations or these segments. Map control starting to trend in favor of Tribe as well. Especially if they can find Crozen, but no, not the case. Crozen on the backside, almost finding a double. Trade in from Noel, plus four. You take a look to see what's still left. You kind of pointed at it. Lucasin is absolutely frying this map. And Noel says, let's try to put this one away here, but only gets the first with the Purifier. That's an expensive use. Mission. Noel, Purifier in hand. Frog out. That also going towards the streaks as well. Trying to keep them at bay. We have already shaved off about a minute worth of this clock. And Rafa was trying to get themselves inside of art, but this is where Inko are the most annoying. On ring, yeah. with three SKSs. Yeah, and there's no more streaks to possibly peel them off of these godlike headies. Bolo clearing space and Tribe. They're looking to kind of maybe put a little bit of pain towards the spawns. Make the life count a little bit more dwindled. Now the hit comes through mid. Dead up top, able to find one. Lucas in sliding oh. forward tonight as Jez has the operator out for three. 7v3 situation, looking good for Tribe at the moment. Crozen trying to force this one forward, trying to put it away here. Noel working with him, the double comes out, but Bolo responds. A 1v5 would be necessary from Dad. First of the quarter by the tree, not gonna come through. And Tribe take us to round five. God, mobile control is wild. <laughs> God, mobile is wild. It's just all <laughs> offenses. I, I, it's raid, so it is, I wouldn't say easier out of the majority of the maps, but you can absolutely capitalize a whole lot faster through the middle of the map. Look at the way that it all kind of panned out for us, though. On defense, it will end up being Tribe Gaming, but the way that Inko are rolling out first, they want ring, they want B-Zone. Oh, they've gained it. Three members stack. First tick of progress Hostile should be good. Drone inbound. Inko throwing support nades to the backside as Triumph looks like they're largely going to concede. Maybe the, in the entirety of the point, they're playing for Pillar's control, but as they lose Laundry, there may not be any kind of approach towards this. And yeah, I think with that elimination, Tribe will kind of lick their wounds and set up an aggressive line of scrimmage to defend A. A casual 4-1 to one start here in favor of Inko. One player on the flank, though. That's actually going to be Marshy, because of course it is. The guy exists on the flank, I swear, but... Only able to find at least one big spawn battle coming all the way through versus Marshy. Lucasin will take them down. Battle on the backside of the jungle, though, has stabilized itself. Yep. And now we're knotted up 25 apiece. Lucasin is able to work a little bit further forward. Did not expect that Vague was actually just behind him. So zone of control again. Trends with the defense. Dad denied through laundry. Tribe taking even further amounts of ground. But as Bolu drops, Bedroom's now repossessed. Inko using this as their setup point. Minute 30 on the clock. Tribe have three operators if they choose to use them. Long range battle. Lucas in wins those more often than not. You see why? Bolu with the claw. Thinking that there's still going to be a hit over through Kitchen. He would be wrong in this prediction. Still plenty of time to get this thing to use. He may just try to hit this from the flank. He's got great timing. Lucas in caught by Tiki. Easy first. Predicts the right. Doesn't see it. Puts down the claw in favor of the SMG. Trades come through, but once again, the defense prevails. Jez also previously to this current respawn had an SKS and lost a crucial 1v1. Over here by Laundry Rafa, trying to pick up off that space that was being provided after Dad took down Jez, but won't be able to come up with much of anything. Middle of the map control, very much so still here. Bolu will pick up Laundry, making sure that nobody's full flanking. But the way that it's set up on the pinch, yeah. you got one player in Tiki, one on, underneath the bed. Wow, out, Pure Fire trying to deny, but Marshy is shut down. Trades back and forth. Vague forced out of his position as he's trying to value his life through bedroom. Back and forth we go, back and forth we go, but it's Tribe on top of the trade. 17 now playing up against 12, and things start to get pressed for Inko. Last chance saloon. Trying to avoid the 3-0. Trying to find a way to earn a revenge shot against LG, but Vague says not on my watch. Now back up top. Oh, the boxing gloves are out, but he goes with the drop shot. 17 v 6. Is it going to be an all North American affair? Championship that's looking likely. 16 v 3. 18 seconds on the clock. And Tribe will have a chance to match up against LG for the first time in an all North American Grand Finals. As Inca will not be able to get there, not be able to neutralize the kills in time. Send them on in. Boxing gloves out once more. Tribe punch their ticket to the Grand Finals. All North America Finals. Here we come. A reprise of Stage 4 Finals is on the horizon here on land. Wonderful stuff coming through from Tribe Gaming. What a monumental feat it was. 
from being able to bounce back in the Sandoz Search and Destroy, showing adaptation after adaptation, the raid control. Who would have thought it would have taken five rounds to be able to see a defensive rap final to come through, but Tribe <laughs> deliver on just that, even losing the zone. They had two minutes and 20 seconds on the clock that they had to shave away, and they played that game clock so, so wonderfully. Yeah. Ever since getting bounced down to the lower bracket, this team has been on a reckoning to find themselves here. Tons of love being shared for Lucasin. I imagine most of the words are, brother, you're disgusting. Because he is. Yeah. Heartbreak, though, for Inko. But you saw it kind of, at least from our perspective, turning around and watching and still standing all of the Brazilian and Latin American fans that are here. Tons of respect towards Inko Stallworth. They put everyone on notice and have may have just single-handedly established the fact that Latin America is one of the world's best regions in COD Mobile, period. You know, everything that you see in Game Aside, you know, the body shots, that's just Cod Esports. <laughs> one, the, one, <laughs> yeah. the one thing you really have to tip to Tribe, albeit, you know, again, number one seed coming into this, really disposing of everybody pretty darn quickly in the lower bracket, barring, you know, that Wolves matchup that we saw last night. Sure, sure. Their esportsmanship is honestly just remarkable. It, it is commendable, and it's what, it, what makes it forces you just to respect this team. They're so yeah, nasty mechanically, 100%. but even out of game two, they are just wholesome individuals. At the end of the day, it is one giant celebration to COD Mobile, although tensions, of course, will naturally swelter to what was going to feel like a boiling point here in a moment as we look over the stats once again. Luke is in for 35 and 16. Unreal stuff on the bottom side. Tech, we wanted to see how he was going to form up today. 34 and 18 a major part of why Tribe have been really comfortable in this lower bracket run. They still have yet to drop a map since their loss from Wolves sent them down to this lower bracket. We also mentioned the name Bolu, 32, 22, 12 assists. The dude was everywhere. Yeah, really was. I mean, it's, it's that flexibility from Tech that even the desk was talking about that allowed some of these SMG players to be able to get inside these very annoying positions. You know, you think of Marshy going back to the search and destroy. You even thought uh, for Bolu, what we ended up seeing as well. Inko, commiserations, you gotta feel proud because even us as commentators and analysts, we sat there asking yeah. the question again, much like how we were on Western Finals that, hey, is Latam really that good? And Inko put that entire uh, region on the map. I mean, yeah. they, you gotta be feeling really, really proud to be able to represent that region. Couldn't be happier to see Brazil represented at such a steep level, not just for this Inko team. Of course, Skade yesterday, unbelievable stuff, but it's a third place finish for Inko, and I'm sure Bobby's smiling. It's LG, it's Tribe, it's an NA Grand Finals. Desk, your thoughts? Thank you very much, Shift and Proper, for putting in another great shift of a cast. And man, Inko Stalwart, they finish in third place. Tribe Gaming showed up and meant business 3 0 here, Beef Mommy. Chat must be going wild right now. I can already feel the fumes, the, the battles from the fans, but hey, that's going to be a valiant effort from Tribe. That lower bracket run was a hero's journey for this team. No one expected them to be here, but they showed up when they needed to. The timing for this team is just absolutely perfect. Shift, did you not hear when I predicted that Inko was going to win the whole thing? Why would I be yeah, that, smiling right now? I would be smiling. I, that was my prediction. And, and you, can, you can see the, the heartbreak on those guys' faces. Obviously, it meant a ton to them, and they really performed as well as they possibly could have. And once again, you got to give props to Lucas. And to be honest, it didn't feel like Tribe even had a counter for him as much as it was. They were just going to play their game and assume that their teamwork was going to be stronger and that their rest of the four players could keep up above the other Inco players. Well, third place, 150,000 US dollars there for Inco Stalwart. It makes the wound feel a little less bad, a little less bad, $150,000 uh, for third place. But man, it really felt like Inko Stalwart really never got their footing today after running into Luminosity first and then Tribe today. Uh, obviously this start, not what you want, pretty frustrating here for Inko, but uh, you know, you gotta play through it.
and Tribe more than happy to start off with an 100 point lead. I feel like this is the kind of start that will definitely be talked about for a long, long time. And I'm already waiting for the YouTube videos to be like, what actually happened in this matchup between <laughs> Inko and Tribe? And honestly, you just see it on the map. If you get to see a disconnection, then that's going to be happening. You got to play through all of the things, the negative things that are happening in your team and just push through. And so with that being said, Takeoff was supposed to be a map that Inko is actually really strong at. Yeah, it just felt like after that happened, Inko was just deflated. They had some really bright spots. And to be honest, it looked like they were going to be able to win the control. There were points in the search and destroy where things looked even, but the Tribe just had that slight edge despite some of the crazy plays that we were seeing out of Crozen going absolutely crazy with the Locust, doing everything he could. This, this is Tribe's go-to search and destroy map, and I, to be honest, I'm curious, maybe we see a standoff ban whenever it comes to the Grand Finals. Well, standoff, that's definitely going to be a really good shot. But oh speaking of, Jazz dad, with a nasty dad. collab. I wish I saw that. I wish that we all got to see it in person, especially you guys watching at home. You could hear the roars of the crowd when that actually happened. But it's not just him. It was like Marshy always going in the flank. And he's such a undermined person that has always performed. He's always on point. And someone that you could actually um, rely on when it comes to these games especially here in this raid when he was able to clutch up a 2v1 situation, stop the clock here in Bravo, and also win that offensive round for Tribe. He's got ice in his veins. No question about it. We call it marshy things for a reason. And man, this, I, I think it's this round yeah. specifically. Would have put Inko up 2-0. They win the third round. If they get this one, that, that's onto a game four and maybe onto a reverse sweep, but... It, I think that was another turning point in this game alone. They knew they could have won that round. They're still able to take another offensive, but man, wishing they could have that back. Yeah, how about this? Like, again, we've talked about on control, it's all about the defensive side. This one, it was all about the attacking side. Well, it just seems like both of these teams are good at both. And especially in this particular map, you just kind of have a hard time when it comes to attacking that A site. But then obviously um, the defense was just so strong on the end of Inko, especially with three players going up there. But hey, taking a look at our tournament bracket right now, it's all NA, baby. Luminosity having that first map advantage going up against Tribe, a grueling elimination lower round bra bracket matchup. That's going to be definitely really good. Almost flawless by the way, only Wolves getting one map off of them. Yeah, Luminosity coming into the Grand Finals with that one map advantage. Going to be huge, obviously, decision-making, a big factor for them. We talked about their coach image, the fact that this is basically his third World Final because he was there with both Blacklist in the East and also Tribe in the West last year and looking to prove that he's able to make a really big difference for any team that he coaches. Well, if you're trying to make a big difference in your game, get your hands on the ROG Phone 6. It's equipped with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 CPU that boosts performance and speed to take your mobile gaming experience to a whole new level. Its unrivaled performance puts it in a class of its own. Thank you to the ROG Phone 6 for supporting Call of Duty Mobile Esports. All right, y'all, it has been a long journey, but now we've got ourselves two. Tribe Gaming, Luminosity, only one can be crowned king, and we will do that after we take a short break. You're watching the Call of Duty Mobile 2022 World Championship.
For the final time, welcome back to Raleigh, North Carolina for the 2022 Call of Duty Mobile World Championships. It has been a heck of a weekend, but the top two teams reside in North America. And yet again, it'll be another chapter in the story that is Luminosity versus Tribe Gaming. Proper shift, Degon here. Guys, what a story that these two teams have had before, and they do it yet again. Man, just don't even ask me for a prediction, please, because <laughs> I'll tell you, both of these teams look like they're absolutely hitting final form. I, I mean, they open up the day, Luminosity, Inco, some resilience at Inco, but Luminosity's respawn looks so, so good. And on the bottom side, it's pretty much a flawless run from Tribe from losers round one. Uh, they're really looking super tight at the moment, and that's a terrifying prospect, I think, for anyone who's going up against them. Yeah, you know, again, it's one of those things that it seems that the Wolves just seem to bring out some of the best of everybody that we have seen them compete up against, uh, specifically with Tribe. You know, it, after they ended up losing out that winter side matchup versus Wolves, they popped down on the lower bracket. Barely even, they come out almost unscathed, losing that one map versus the Wolves, and now they find themselves here. 
Yeah, uh, the miracle elimination run, we could say it, but again, should they have been there? Should they have not? You know, is there a mental advantage for Luminosity with the fact that they get the map, but also that Tribe had to go down on the bottom side. Remember, it was supposed to be, supposed to be the Tribe uh, Luminosity semifinals yeah. <laughs> in the upper side of the bracket ended up being Wolves in that spot. Yeah, it's... Hard to say if it's like a mental advantage at all. Obviously, it's, it's actually a physical advantage. They literally get a map here coming out of the winner's bracket. So you do have that going for you. But you still, I think, more mentally, if you're Luminosity, you're thinking back to stage four where you were so close to knocking off Tribe not once but twice, but came up short both times, not able to do it. Yeah, well, again, a little bit of a, a mental block that either one of those guys are going to have to get through. And if you want to get through any block, get your hands on the ROG Phone 6 to achieve low latency gaming and ultra responsive input with less chance of accidental touches. We hate those accidental touches. I hate them. The ROG Phone 6 now boasts a 165 hertz refresh rate and a 720 hertz touch sampling rate for a super smooth, seamless gaming experience. Thanks to our friends over at the ROG Phone 6. And we have ourselves the world World Championship bundle available now in game for purchase for a limited time only. Look at all that stuff there, bro. Dude, I'm I just want that charm, honestly. <laughs> it, it's it's so colorful, and um, I know you know this, but I'm colorblind, and that, and that to me is just an anomaly that I have no idea what's going on, but it's popping out of a spray can, and it looks amazing. Dude, I love the graffiti look just across the entire event. Yeah, the fact really that cool we're setting. getting it like as cosmetics for the weapons, you're getting it on top of the characters. It just all feels like it's coming together. Even the calling card looks super awesome. Yeah, this, this is a really cool in-game package. I mean, the COD Mobile team always knocks it out of the park with their art division, but this one in particular is going to be something special to get your hands on. Bursting with inspiration. I like it. Uh, th that's, that's the name. I love that one. All right. One more time, let's take a look at the prize pool so that we can put it into words again, the difference between first and second. The $1.7 million prize pool is now down to just our first and second place. It is 700,000 for first and 280,000 for second. This is of course our tournament prizing brought to you uh, by HyperX. That's a lot of money. Yeah. That's a, that's a lot of money. And it's even like a, a pretty steep drop off when you go from first place down to second place. So, I mean, that pressure, that extra bit of money on the line, you're almost going to feel it really just kind of hiss through the air here in the arena. I mean, I thought for a second you were about to pull like a Dr. Evil impersonation. $1.7 million. I'm like, we just all did that in sync? Come on. This desk is lit. Come on. That's going in the rollout at the end. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it seems like we are almost ready to go now. Tribe, Luminosity, Proper, you don't like doing predictions. So That's right. what I will ask you to do okay. is tell me how do Luminosity win this? Oh, yeah. I, oh I like oh, Wow. It's like asking me a prediction without asking me a prediction. I think that <laughs> the best way that Luminosity are going to be able to do this is continue to be very unpredictable and to continue to adapt and overcome. Their pace differential and understanding what they have to be doing from each map individually has been at an all-time high through the entirety of the weekend. Shift, how to Tribe win this? Look, their search and destroy has been really clean. And when they had played last time, Standoff was in the rotation not once but twice. Tribe took pull. So I think if you're looking at this from the guise of how does LG stop Tribe, I think it's a shut down Jez, which is kind of like the counter of what you asked in a certain sense. But he's been unstoppable in search, and I think search is the way to get into the series quickly and possibly find an advantage. Well, for more thoughts on this matchup, let's send it on over to our casters for the finals. It's Beef Mommy and Bobby Blaze. I am so excited to be here and casting the Call of Duty Mobile first ever World Championship Grand Finals, joined as always by the wonderful Beef Mommy. What was happening right there? $1.7 oh, million. Okay. Dollars. <laughs> hey, I got you, Shiv. Okay. I see you. I see you smiling over there in the desk. I got you, man. 
But yeah, I mean, everything down the line, a lot of money. It's a huge jump from $700,000 down to that second spot. It's a really hard point to be at because you know that Luminosity already has that one score up in this best out of seven tribe. As resilient as they are, it's just going to be really difficult to you know, overcome that one hurdle. Yeah, it's still kind of difficult to tell how these two matched up against Inko to try to gauge what expectations should be because it was two very different looking matchups. Obviously, Inko able to take one map off of Luminosity while they weren't able to do the same for Tribe. But there were just some different situations, different mechanics, and altogether Inko looked a little deflated after that map. And you got to think that played a pretty big role. But in the rest of it, they played things relatively closely. So looking back at how Tribe and Luminosity have faced up against each other in the past, obviously stage three, stage four, it's those two at the top both times. And Luminosity, they got reverse swept in stage three so they're trying at all costs to avoid that yeah i mean it's always a question of who's going to be that na number one and try to defeat tribe and especially with this competition where they kind of had a very rough start in the beginning but right now looking like they're very solid bringing down a three and oh to inca which has been pegged as one of the favorites to actually win and it, it's funny because tribe was the favorite but after day one day two last time just showed up but it just seems like they bring down giants Yep, Luminosity, I would definitely say, is now out of the shadow of the tribe. These two both in the spotlight. And as you can see, Luminosity has been frying all tournament long, even up against Wolves, who number one knocked down tribe and number two still gave tribe a lot of trouble in the lower bracket. Luminosity didn't really seem to struggle at all. I think adaptability is the biggest advantage for this team. And obviously, you got to look at one guy, Band, who has been frying all tournament long. We talk about him being a major warrior, stepping up when, he, when his team needs him most. And you can tell he's just so chill, so calm, so collected. He's just excited to be here. Their comms are just so good. Their game up against Inko, the pace was fast, so beautiful. As you can hear, the words that they actually said was really beautiful. But before we actually go and talk about this team, we got Degon taking a look at it, introducing Luminosity. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had ourselves one hell of a tournament. And again, this year started with dreams of being the best, but now we're down to our final two squads. Up first, a team trying to make their dreams become reality. It's Luminosity! Washi, Blur, Envy, Band, and Solo, your Luminosity! This is a team that was not together at all last year, but have taken competitors from different portions of COD Mobile, put together five super gritty players, and are ready to take on the kings of North America in Tribe Gaming. And their opponents are no stranger to finals, no strangers to success. One of the winningest organizations in all of mobile esports, it's Tribe Gaming! Marshy, Vague, Tectonic, Bolu, and Jazz, Tribe! victory three years in a row 2020 2021 will 2022 be the same they brought down three teams omega wolves and inko in the lower bracket and now they face their toughest opponent yet a rivalry that knows no boundaries these two squads have played against each other time and time again but this time it's for the world championship only one can be crowned king. Who will win? Let's find out. Beef Mommy, Bobby, take it away. Oh, this is three years in the making. This is a lot of money. $1.7 million, like you mentioned, 700 k to the winner. Uh, what, if my math's correct, a $420,000 drop off if you don't take that first place prize. Gotta think all the hours 
all the blood, sweat, and tears going into this matchup. I'm excited to see the map pool because and Still it's just not entirely sure what to expect. Yeah, I mean, it all comes down to our map picks and bans where they're going to have to play. There's no reason why that you should be weak in a certain map because at this point in the competition, you need to be strong on every single one of it in every single game mode. But kind of like what we saw in that first game that we had today, Inko versus Luminosity, where it was such a huge factor when it comes to Luminosity's win. Tribe Gaming, what do you think is going to happen here when it comes to the map selection? I mean, I think if you're a tribe, you're, one of your biggest objectives is trying to get to that map number six, the standoff search and destroy where they are undefeated on the weekend. You gotta feel like that's a really good chance for them to lock in a win, but on the downside for tribe, we do see a Hacienda hard point. That was the exact map that we saw Wolves defeat them on their first hard point loss in the entire tournament. And it is the same map where we saw Luminosity take down Wolves. So that puts them in a really tough spot. They're already at a one map disadvantage. They've got to come out guns blazing on this takeoff map where they just defeated Inco Gaming pretty easily. Yeah, and it really is important, especially in the momentum of your matchup, especially in that first game in Hardpoint Takeoff, where we saw that Inko kind of faltered, especially they were kind of really shaken up. So that first game really matters to set the tone between these two giants that we saw and performed really well up against a really hard team. And now coming into this, uh, when it comes to the statistics and the numbers, we kind of just throw them out the window by the end of it. But both of these teams look so, so good at this takeoff map that it's really hard to tell what's going to happen. But for me, Luminosity actually did a little bit better when it comes to the util usage up against Inco. Obviously, you want to pick up as much time as you can, but number one priority is going to be chaining together P3 and P4. That's where these teams look to pick up their biggest chunks, controlling spawns there, typically going to afford you the most time, and obviously operator usage going to be absolutely crucial. Cannot afford any wasted time. That split-second decision-making plays a huge role in the outcome of these games, and it's really going to come down to those little micro decisions. And we saw those micro decisions coming in from Tribe during those clutch situations in the form of Marshy and that control round and raid. It's really important. And now, speaking of a member that's actually really good, Ban's gonna be right there. And you know that he's going to be really good up against Envy as well. They've been doing a really good job at trading them one and one. But coming in from Tribe, you know that they're gonna be duos holding hands, and let's see how well they can do when it comes to those individual gunfights, because Luminosity seems like they're such a good pair. Obviously, the KDs for Tribe not going to be quite as high in the respawns heading into this one, especially just having more, having lost more matches in general. But across the board, they've been able to win some of those hardpoint matches even when they are getting outslayed. Obviously, big players to watch on this map are the ones that typically dominate in the long range, those being Tectonic and Jez think Jez has really shown out through the entirety of this tournament, but every single player on this roster plays a huge role. We talked a lot yesterday about filling those specific roles, letting the Slayers slay, and the, the OBJ's OBJ. So right now, just getting ready to load into the game, but the anticipation definitely building, and you can feel it here. It makes you kind of question, is the SKS still going to be brought out? Knowing very well that Inko played it, or the Latam region rather, has been playing it so, so well. But I feel like for Luminosity, they did an amazing job at stopping the push. And I feel like they have different versions when it comes to stopping that kind of meta. And now for Luminosity, they are absolutely bright. They're looking like they're in the best form in their career. I don't think either of these teams really particularly likes the SKS. I think the biggest reason we saw Blur pull it out was mainly just to counter Lucas in. So if I had to guess, most of the people that we saw using SKSs in those first couple of maps will likely be switching over to the Kilo. That's been the go-to long range assault rifle for most of the players in the North American region. People were kind of wondering, oh, is that Kilo meta gonna be able to hold up in the world championships? And it most definitely has. I mean, this, is, this, is, this proves the point. Both NA teams are going to be here and the strongest that they've ever been in. And speaking of Tribe, 
looking very solid this year as well. And looking like the situation's actually going to be flipped as Luminosity is usually the one that has a very hard time in the beginning, but now it looks like Tribe is going to be the same and beautiful worm there and definitely going to be an absolutely <laughs> legendary meme all across Twitter. But again, this team is just, again, the word for them is going to be resilience because of how many matches they actually pushed through. And a lot of the time, it wasn't even close matches. They absolutely dominated it. I don't know if I'd call it a beautiful worm. It looked more like a dying worm, dying if you worm. ask me, but you know. <laughs> Like a, a worm's like, a worm. Like a worm in water with some salt. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. exactly. exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, we're loading into the lobby right now. I think Vague's another player that has honestly been pretty underrated on the weekend. Obviously, not dropping those insanely high KD numbers like Jez and Tectonic, but especially as a flex player, he's had a pretty solid KD while at the same time bringing that OBJ contribution. So he's another player to keep an eye on. Marshy, we always expect him to do Marshy things, but it's Envy opening things up. First blood, big in the high, high tower right there. Gonna be able to find one. Shots on to band as well. A little bit shaky to start. We have yet to see anybody hop on the objective. And it's finally gonna be Marshy who hops in for a whopping one second. <laughs> That's a lot of seconds for you, and Marshy definitely knows how to pick up the points. Now, going in there very aggressively, that's going to be player number four coming in from Luminosity. Blur gets those kills, still forming that SKS. Looking like it's going to be really good in this map, but take a look at the other side. There's actually no response whatsoever when it comes to those long-range engagements. Looking like they really just want to go for the CBRs, the Krig 6, and also probably like one... Oh, I see actually a Switchblade. So, again, if it really works for you, then go ahead, but you need to find some sort of counter up against Blur. Yep, does look like he's still going to be rocking with the SKS, obviously Tribe. It's talked before about how they don't really like the weapon. Tectonic pulled it out for a little bit up against Inko, but we didn't see it have a huge impact for them. So with the Kilo being his weapon of choice, no surprise, he's sticking with it right here. A pretty even P1 as the battle for P2 ensues, and looks like Spawn's going to go the way of Tribe. Marshy playing nice and sneaky right there. Tries to hit the flip, but not going to be able to get the turn for the kill. Jen's going to get shut down as well in a big feed for Luminosity to lock in a chunk of time right here. Bolu pushing up now. No reinforcements here for Luminosity. And they're in a tough spot. Solo's got to go big. He's able to find one. Blur does get dropped right there. And now Jez looking to go big. Solo one with the shorty before he gets traded out. I mean, Luminosity was winning those gunfights, but it wasn't really high. Uh, it wasn't really a high kill count. To enough to them for them to actually go in for that spawn control where they kind of just struggled in for that defense. And now most of the time being soaked up by Tribe. And as what you thought that Luminosity could actually win that particular hill, especially with getting a lot of those skills, not enough for them to actually anchor up the more favorable spawn, but they do have that rotation off into that next hard point. Lunazi has definitely looked more solid on the early rotations. Capture the objective. Seems like for the most part, Tribe's game plan has been bully your way into the hard point. We'll see if they can do that here. And Marshy doing his best to make things happen. Vague in the backside as well. In the early rotations, not doing a whole lot for Luminosity Gaming. They are struggling to win these gunfights. Couple of purifiers come out as well. And that's going to lock in that much more time for Tribe. Now bringing out the Purifier helps them go in there for the break in this particular hard point. That's going to be really big for them. Not just that, sustaining it. Marshy he's still getting shot at, but with the Purifier in hand, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Freddy finally going down. He does get that double kill. Not only that, is on a three spree. Bowler brings out his claw, and it looks like it's a little bit spawning out of control. That's going to be very hard because look at the next hard point too. The fact that two players from Tribe are also already there. You can see the Luminosity players saving their operators right now, which is interesting given the gap that we've seen for them. Obviously, really prioritizing this rotation of P4, but they don't have a whole lot of people here. A few break through. They're able to take out the remaining tribe players that are there, but they give up all the scrap time there on P3. And right now, in need of a solid setup and good spawns to be able to lock in big time right here. Blur. Waiting for somebody to rotate to that window side. He's got the gravity vortex ready to go. Gotta be careful, might run out of time, and he's able to get big value right there, but still not able to clear out the tribe players. And now Envy looking to break on in. His claw gonna go to waste as well. 
and slowly but surely this seems to be slipping out of the grasp of luminosity as tribe gaming is snowballing left and right i mean they do have a hundred percent win right here in takeoff throughout the competition in hardpoint they played it three times and it looks like they're just so comfortable and such a good map pick for them and they're just doing so well when it comes to these engagements obviously for tectonic he's going to be that anchor that slayer trying to get those points knowing very well that the players from you luminosity is actually going to be spawning right Right over there. Well, we talked about Tribe maybe not necessarily going to the lower bracket on purpose, but not really being worried about it because we know they're a team that plays better when their backs are up against the wall. Well, it's the grand finals, and there's not a much bigger wall than that. Right now, they find themselves up by 110 points through this first set of hard point rotations. Major reset needed for Luminosity. Blur on the high ground, not gonna be able to connect with the SKS. Marshy doing Marshy things on the bottom side. And once again, Tribe in full control. Luminosity just scrambling left and right, but no map control, no kills going through. Jez slaying out right now. He's on a four spree and Luminosity just seems lost. It's just Tribe always has the upper hand because they have high advantage, high ground advantage, where you don't have much of sights here because you always have to think about the verticality of the map of takeoff, and so far Tribe is actually using that to perfection. Tectonic doing such an amazing job, but always stopping the push. 21 already to his name. Vague, Marshy also have operators to play with, and just as I said that, Tectonic gets that one as well, and looking like Tribe is outclassing LG here in their favorite map. This is getting ugly really, really quick. Luminosity only able to muster 40 points, just not looking like the same team. And you gotta wonder if there's a certain degree of mental block against this Tribe team that has beaten them so many times over the past year. I don't know what it's gonna take to overcome it. We see a couple big kills go through in the feed right here. Nobody in the hard point. Solo finally gonna be able to occupy, but he can't win a gunfight either. And once again, it's Tribe in the hard point with the purifier coming through. Vague goes big right there. Solo finally gonna be able to survive, but seeming only like a matter of time. Luminosity, you need to go and catch up. And for you, you need to have really good comps, kind of like your previous games. Let's have a Luminosity listen in. What's up, blue? I think. What's up, blue? There's one on here, one on here. 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 One on you can just hear the frustration already when it comes to those comps from LG. So different from their first game a while ago, but obviously it's because they have so much to catch up on. Yes, they go and capture this hard point, but obviously for Tribe, so easy to break every single time. I mean, they've gotten a bigger chunk in, in the last little bit than we've seen them get really all game long, but hasn't really meant much given that there's a 160 gap or 160 point gap between these two teams. But this is not the first time that we've seen this. Very similar to what happened in stage four, only on firing range hardpoint. A very big tribe win followed up by a dominant LG performance. It's not over yet, but man, oh man, they've got to, I mean, at this point, they've got to get like three straight full 60s and just with the way that tribe's playing right now, I don't know if realistically that's even humanly possible. And for Tribe, they absolutely know that. Okay, get the scraps. We're going to plan for our setup here. And they're doing an amazing job at just playing the lead that they have. So very commendable stuff here coming in from Tribe, showing everyone how to actually play takeoff. But let's see if Luminosity can finally play Tribe's game and finally dictate the pace. Because so far, Tribe is the one that's playing the guitar. And they're going to be the lead. We were kind of curious if the, the stationary play style, the more uh, static play style of Tribe was going to be able to match up against a more flexible play style of Luminosity. It definitely is. Obviously, the, the slaying that we're seeing Vague, Jez, Tech do up in those high ground positions is freeing the OBJ players to take more one-on-one -on -one gunfights rather than getting, what, tri double, triple challenge in the hard point. And, it has paid off big time tribe now only in need of five more points to close this one out.
Luminosity starting to move upwards a little bit, but all Tribe really needs is one solid early rotation and should be able to lock in the win. Luminosity, let's see if they can pull off a miracle. Uh, that's going to be difficult because as Luminosity was soaking up the points in P4, the setup going in for P1, it was just not there. Tribe is already there with just five seconds left to go in to unlock this hard point with five points left for them to go and win this first matchup. It's still going to be good. It's going to be big for you, Bag. Gets up, your fire kill. Goes in this hill all alone, and yes, he secures it for his team. Tribe Gaming gets map number one. Well, just like that, winner's bracket advantage is completely gone. Tribe Gaming steamrolls their way through that first map. And a lot of that just felt like a confidence issue for Luminosity. I think one gunfight that we didn't quite see in the main POV, but looking out of the corner of my eye, I believe it is Tectonic set up on that head glitch above P1. Ban sneaks up behind him and still gets turned on by Tech. That, I mean, just like, Ban's been phenomenal all tournament long, and it just felt like things kind of fell apart at the seams. He's still doing a really good job with 30 kills, being the top fragger for his team, but obviously the numbers of uh, the time, especially from the hard point, not really there, 26 seconds left, not too bad. But obviously taking a look at Marshy, 38 kills plus a minute and 50 inside the hard point. It looks like he's getting better and better each match that they play. He did so well in that SND, so well in that control, and now looks like, yep, he's gonna be that MVP for Tribe. Uh, we know that Washi's the OBJ player for Luminosity, and he was in a blender all game long. Obviously, when your team doesn't have map control, it's easy from an outside POV to say, oh, he went 17 and 35, he cost his team. But when your team's not getting map control and your one job is to get in that objective, there's not a whole lot you can do. You're having to, to solo chow two or three tri players every single time you're going into a gunfight. And you got to get more help for him. He did everything that he could to get in the hard point, but your Slayers have got to do more. You got to push out that map control. Even the early rotations didn't really pay off anything for Luminosity. You know, this is one thing that I noted up against their game against Inko is Tribe's version of them winning it to battle them out is to number one, do close range. Number two, buddy buddy system, especially in a map as big as Takeoff where your life really counts because it's such a huge map. And not just that, the fact that they're always getting those power positions up in the 2F, up in that vertical point where obviously looking down, you have more of an advantage. And the rotation coming in from Tribe is just so big as well. Yep, it was pretty close off the, and the, looking back, the fact that it was, I think it was like 30 to 30 at one point, and then just after P2, Luminosity could not get a foothold to save their lives. Steamrolled out of control. They, uh, I think at one point it was like 40 to 160 or something. So, so that's basically a span where you're getting 10 and you're letting Tribe get 110, maybe even more. You gotta find a way to stop that momentum. And I just didn't feel like their operator usage was good enough to do that. We saw a lot of wasted operators, a lot of hasty pullouts for those operators. And I think that cost them in a big way. I feel like for them, it just really went downhill after P2 because yes, they were winning a lot of the gunfights, stopping the tribe plays, but they weren't able to dictate the pace and anchor down the more favorable spawn, which is going to be li by launch base. And you, you get to see it really good after this. But I mean, it was a little bit too late where after our second reset, tribe already had so much of a lead already. And for Luminosity, always just playing that catch up. And obviously for them, they have to soak up all of the hard point. So they're going to be split as a team. So two's going to be staying there and also two might going for the rotation but they always just get gunned down every single time and look at the what they what we said they were like 30 30 at one point <laughs> it was 60 to 220 that's if i'm doing my math correctly a 190 to 30 run by tribe and like i mentioned before we saw something very similar to that in stage four we saw a firing range hard point where tribe absolutely obliterated them it was 250 to 27 if my memory serves correctly and immediately luminosity bounces back and takes the search and destroy they 100 percent got to make that happen here
And not good news again for Luminosity here in slums because they did lose this 6-8 to eight up against Wolves. So with that being said though, I'm still not going to be uh, particularly going in for the stats for this one because obviously we are going to see different gameplays and just teams waking up. We've seen that control matchup up against Inko where Luminosity woke up even though that is their worst game mode. So maybe they learned a thing or two because they were leading by a huge margin up against Wolves but they let it go at the very end. Yeah, it's uh, it's a thing that this Luminosity team has struggled with for a while, is closing out whether it's games or matches. I, I don't know if it's, once again, a, a mental thing, because you know they've got the gun skill. You got Washi, who is one of the best snipers in the world. I think if Luminosity wins this whole thing, you could maybe make the argument that the, he's the best sniper in the world. You've got Slayers that can fly across the map, like Band in Envy. Like, you know you got the gun skill, you know you have the chemistry. I've heard from so many teams about how good their communication is, and I think even when they were frustrated in the listening that we heard, they still sounded good. They're capable of winning this. It's all going to come down to confidence. You got to close those SD games down. They've already kind of faltered today with that first game that they had with Inko and SD and Standoff, where they had a lead yet again, but dropped it. There needs to be a change of pace because Tribe is actually kind of the team where if you are going up against them and they're down, they can find a way to adapt. And I believe Luminosity can do so. We've seen it already before. They've had that raid search and destroy up against Stamina and did an absolutely phenomenal job. And especially in that control where all the odds were actually up against them, they can definitely make this work. Yep. Still a lot of COD Mobile left to be played. It's a best of seven series, and we're only getting started right here. Obviously, uh, finishing in control if we go to a game seven. Not the most normal thing for Call of Duty in the past, but these guys are definitely prepared for it, and it looks like they are here and loading in to the lobby here on Slums Control. It is going to be Luminosity on the defensive side to start, which should be a big advantage for them if they can capitalize. Ooh. You gotta play with your snipers. Blur has a monumental job to try and get the search and destroy. Lineups are gonna be there. No information whatsoever. And then there you go. Marshy gets down. Ban gets that first opening pick. No, he does get two though. But then Bolu trades him out. Definitely the better side of the trades for Luminosity. They're gonna be able to make their way up. And right now, actually trying to catch Tribe off guard. Jez is gonna take a little bit of damage. Bomb goes down there on B. And now Jez all alone, the 1v3. And obviously Luminosity gonna look to play things passive. He's got a lot of map left to clear out. And it looks like he's gonna go for every corner that he can, at least on this side of the map. And it seems like Luminosity has read it perfectly right there. They get the information from Envy. And just like that, should be enough to close out the round. Solo connects onto the shots. And Luminosity takes the lead off round one. Beautiful pick, and it was really that two-piece that Band did that kind of stopped the push coming in from Tribe, obviously just raining Destroy down utility down acquired. in bricks. That's going to be a really good start. And now for Tribe, though, knowing very well that they can, Luminosity can aggress, let's see if they can finally get that as Band gets one more, second first blood for him. The utility usage has been so good. They get the man advantage off the start right here once again. Nades do connect, and that's going to force Tribe back on the defensive side. Bomb is in hand. Don't know if there's any trophies available, but there we go. Washi, lethal with the sniper. Arguably the best in the world right now. Now two Tribe players remain right here with the bomb going down. He takes another down off the head glitch. That's not an easy shot to hit. Solo reads this next one like a book, but he doesn't even need it. Envy takes another down and a strong start here on the slums s &D. Jez needs to step it up when it comes to those snipes because if you allow Blur to do that and Washi as well, it, you're just going to have a very hard time. And what I already mentioned early on into this matchup, Luminosity is just so good when it comes to that util and they showed it in game number one and now they're going to be showing it here in this SND. No question about it, a lot of utility go through, but the ADS shots can't match up with the hip fire out of Tribe. And the SKS not going to be able to connect right there. Should be a double kill, and it is for Envy. Equalizes Tectonic trying to chill. Envy's weak, but he's the one that's got a head glitch to work with. Jez sitting back with the sniper. He's still got Washi to deal with right now, and with the bomb going down, the pressure once again onto Tribe. 
Jen is slowly making his way through blue right here. Tech trying to get some information. They've got some time to work with, but timing might go the way of Washi. It doesn't matter. Jez proves to be the better sniper on that one. And now Envy all alone, but he's got an SKS. And that's best case scenario for trying to take somebody off one of these long angles. Hits the wrap right here. Jez, will he stick it? He should have the time. Oh, Envy, the route's too long and he gives away the round. Envy took too long and now if you give Jez that, pros don't fake. That was such a good situational awareness for him to kind of just predict that Envy would probably just wrap around. Destroy now, I feel like I'm not quite sure the feeling that you get when you know who you're up against. Okay, knowing this person, okay, he's not going to do close range. He's probably the type of person that will go and have a long wrap around. But you know what? That is a good opener for them as Bolu and Big finally gets to, and Bolu gets to as well. You can feel the momentum shift. Washi can be able to find a couple, but he's all alone against three remaining Tribe players. Shorty in hand, and that time Tribe able to find the first bloods. It pays off big time, and they're able to counter that utility. I mean, a lot of times just, I'm not going to say it comes down to luck, but the placement definitely crucial. Shorty not able to connect, and he doesn't stand much of a chance. Three players holding hands. I You think back to the Ninja Diffuse that Envy gives away right there, and maybe a questionable decision. You got two weapons that are definitely not fast on movement Destroy speed. You don't objective. have any type of tactical or lethal that you can pull out and definitely wishing he could have a redo on that one. Yeah, and it just seems like a little bit shaken up with that, but they need to make that comeback if needed. Jez spots one. Doesn't really go in for the follow the vague with a really big opener, but Bolu as well gets rid of Solo. But a response coming in from Washi has been an absolute beam in this Bravo Hill. I mean, Alpha Hill, rather. He's doing everything that he can, but he's the last man standing once again as the momentum quickly dissipating for Luminosity. He's going to make his way through blue right here. Tech on the outside. He's not moving an inch. Audio Q might set something off right here. And that once again puts Washi in a really rough spot. If he reads it right, can't hit the shot though. Tectonic plays things fundamentally. Washi can't connect. And now three rounds in a row going the way of Tribe Gaming. Tribe is just reading this so, so well. And now I feel like it's always that opener from Vague, followed up by Big Bolu. And bomb. for Band, he Did hasn't had out? those openers in a while. It's been a long time. And now slow push coming in here. Very passive, the approach coming in from Luminosity. But then finally an engagement goes through. Ban goes in there a little bit aggressively, but then paid the price. Tectonic and Vague get to a piece. Tectonic gets a second. Will he get a third? Luminosity is just not capitalizing on these early sprays. Even when they get first shot, they just seem to lose the gunfights. They're going to be able to take down one of those tribe players, but still three remain. And right now, in a tough spot once again, Envy's got the bomb in hand. But Tribe able to spread across the map. You got one player hitting the flank. That's going to be Marshy. And this is going to be tough to read. The bomb goes down. But with that information, they're going to go ahead and set up on the inside of Garage right here and see if they can cut off that flank while the sniper watches over the bomb. This is a good setup coming in from Tribe. Playing your numbers to your advantage, gaining a lot of these sight lines. But for you, you just have to figure out they're probably going to be planting here for long. That's going to be good. Two peaks though. Washi gets one. Even things out. Jez knows very well there's one player there. Tries to go in for the wall. Bang doesn't really quite get the shot. And now just applying that pressure and the bomb is going to be diffused. What a beautiful defensive setup coming in from Tribe. Knowing very well that they can't go past the defenses of Jez. And just maybe unfortunate positioning Destroy on that bomb plant. I don't know if Washi took the shot and missed or if he just didn't have an angle. But it looked like it was going to be a tough play to make either way. And now Luminosity moves to the defensive side. Washi's going to find one to open. Vague finding Ban on the flip side. And only a one for one trade with the way the majority of these early game trades have gone. Gotta think that's gonna, gonna go advantage to Tribe again, but Washi, he's the do-it-all man right now. Nine kills on the board, a double kill. The quick scope's connecting, and now all down to Tectonic. Luminosity playing this one to a T, and they are not out of this one by a long shot. Luminosity going in there a little bit more aggressively. That's gonna be really good stuff from him.
from the, all of the boys here. They're trying to go in there one more round to even Destroy things out. Jez with bomb. two, struggling to get all of these kills. On the other side, the Washi, very hot on his hands. That's gonna be really big kills for his team. And so far, again, very, very aggressive push coming in from Luminosity. Looking like they're really good at the defense. There are very few players that have been able to counter Jez on s &D in this tournament. Bawashi has certainly done his best so far. I don't know that either player caught eyes on each other, but trying to find an angle right here to peek through. Jez gonna slide across Bawashi. Reaction time not quite fast enough. No first blood quite yet, and the longer that goes on, the more that helps Tribe, but Jez gonna be able to connect on Bawashi, and that's gonna open things wide up for a Tribe push. That's gonna be really big for Jez, open things up for his team. You don't have to worry about Alpha anymore. The problem solved. The strongest player coming in from Luminosity down. Now they have to pick and decide before player number three, that's gonna be Envy, can actually go in there for the defense and Broken, but he goes on really long rope around here in the Alpha site. Right now, Ban trying to stay alive. Couple Tribe players around him, but they're not gonna be able to sniff him out. Now down to a 4v4. Bomb is in Vig's hands, and he's actually making his way back over towards A. This is not a play that we've really seen so far in this game. Not a whole lot in this tournament. One for Envy, not able to make it two. And now it's down to a 1v1 between Vague and Blur. Vague only 23 seconds, trying to make a decision right here. If he's actually going to hit the wrap back toward B, Blur may have read this like a book. Oh, perfect positioning, could not have played it any better. Just like that, Luminosity's tied back up. He had to guess where he was gonna go, and Arches, Vague went. Arches, he went down. Even up in the scoreboard right now, Destroy what a good recovery coming in for quiet. Luminosity. Big kills from all of the players here so far. Patience definitely pays off. But that's information from Vague that a lot of these bombs are actually going raining down from Bravo. That makes him halt just a tiny bit. That's big info for them, though. Luminosity so confident on these Ooh. defensive pushes, but the nade gonna connect on the blur. Trophy system's not in place. Marshy's able to find another, and now this round is split wide open. LG on their heels. They gotta play the head glitches to try to find a couple picks right here. Tectonic's gonna be spotted. Solo gets aggressive, but he's forced back as well. SKS and a sniper still in play. Picks. Still very feasible, but they, they get spotted out by the SMG cross map right there. And all of a sudden, it is a wide open B bomb as another Luminosity player drops. And Washi, once again, left all alone looking for an angle to work with. He's going to spot Bolu right there, but the quick scope not going to be able to connect. A 5 0 round for Tribe Gaming. There's only so much you can do with that sniper, man, especially in a small map like this. Vague was a player for that round. He opened it up for them, especially when that grenade, getting that info, there were gonna be a lot of players, but unfortunately for Blur, he didn't really go out. Not really bad timing for him. Same thing though, going in from Luminosity, where they're gonna be sending players down to Briggs. Oh no, they learned their lesson. They're not gonna touch it, just a tiny bit. Doing it a little bit slowly this time, but Bolu's, he does have a nade to play with. Another one! Oh, gets that. Wow, the placement on that could not have been any better. And once again, gonna open up that bomb site. Luminosity does not have much of a defense. Another player gonna drop. Couple trades go through. They're only down a man, but mm, Washi, maybe too aggressive right there. Solo gonna drop one, but he needs to pull off a 1v3. The bomb has been dropped. Now getting picked up by Vague. And Shorty's gotta be perfect right here for Solo. And he can't connect on either shot right there. Now Tribe, only one round away from taking the lead. Oh my goodness. At this point, you're thinking for Luminosity, are you putting down your trophy systems in the same spot? Because twice in a row, in two oh. rounds ago, it's the same thing happening here. It's all just nades all across the board. Kind of curious if they've got uh, different setups for offense or defense, because you think, especially on the defensive side on slums, you know how much utility is getting chucked over to the B side. You have got to be in position to keep yourself alive. They're going to be able to force back the try push. Veg has been tearing it up in this one. He's got 14 kills to his name, leads the entire lobby. Washi doing everything he can, but he's had a dry last couple of rounds as well. And Luminosity needs him to find some of those early picks. And just like that, timing couldn't have been any better. Jez dropped from the map.
That's going to be a, a really essential kill coming in from Washi. Ten to his name already. But then they're going to be slowing things down. Tribe. Vague. DLQ in hand. Is in a very good spot to take out Washi. So good when it comes to it. Uses the truck to his advantage. Possibility to get another one as he goes in for the chase. Goes in there for the chase, but doesn't really quite get the kill as Ben and Sol are going to be there for the backup. And maybe a little bit too eager right there as he gets baited outside those walls. Without the defenses of his teammates, nothing to protect him there. And Luminosity going to be able to take the man advantage once again. Vague, still 15 kills to his name, but they don't have him to work with. So now the remaining players are going to be forced to maybe make a wrap over toward this A-bomb. We've not seen it done successfully so far. It seems like Luminosity is pretty content to give this up, but they're slowly creeping toward this side of the map. Tectonic's not going to win that crucial gunfight. And now Solo finding another kill. Envy, there's one remaining. It's all down to Bolu. He's got to pull off a 1v4 and it's not meant to be. A little body shooting right there is Blur. Feeling confident about the prospects for the rest of this game. Tribe is having a hard time closing this one out. Luminosity is creeping in the distance. Just one more round in between them. And it was vague. That was the first blunder in this particular round Strike where he overaggressed, paid the price. Frag, watch out, flash! Yeah, I think that was a that was a play. Him picking up that snipe could have turned the tides of that one. Tectonic with opening nade definitely going to have a big impact right there. But Envy equalizes on one. Envy drops himself, and now it's Luminosity man disadvantage again. You don't want to peek over this bomb head glitch from that low ground. And right now, it's constant trades for Tribe. They can keep doing just that with the man advantage. They can do that all day long. It's going to be Washi. Nate goes over, almost perfect position, but it's not perfect timing. Hasn't been able to connect on the snipe, and wow, Chez could not have thrown that one any better, and it's all down to Washi to try to clutch the 1v3. Are we playing basketball right now, man? With the way the tribe is actually doing all of these nade hits, it's just so, so good. But Washi being alone, he is the man for Luminosity to try and clutch up this 1v2. Although it's going to be hard because he's going to be stuck in a pinch. But then he needs to get that one kill. Ring around the Rosie right here and breaks. Bolu gets the kill. And there you go. Seals the deal here in Search and Destroy. 7-5. Where we thought Luminosity can possibly do one big clutch. They failed to do so. Now Tribe getting closer and closer to that championship. To be called the championships here for 2022. Blur maybe got a little bit of overzealous with the body shooting right there. This is this is just not a team that you want to make angry. He decided, oh, I'll poke the bear when we're on game point and we'll see what happens. Tribe tears it up in that final round. A huge performance out of Vague right there. Top frag for the lobby by a mile. A whole lot of first bloods out of him. And just like that, a uh, matchup that started with Luminosity in the lead without a game being played. All of a sudden, that lead has not only disappeared, but Tribe Gaming's in the lead. That's just hard to watch because for Luminosity in that SND matchup, they were doing a lot of things wrong time and time again, doing the same mistakes of being in the breaks, not putting down that trophy system. Maybe they did, but there's a, there was a way for them to keep throwing and chucking that grenades there. You know very well that for Tribe, they're always going to be throwing down Util there, and it's just that was really big openers for them to just go in very aggressively through mid. But taking a look at what we have for our scoreboard, Vague having that 15. Those are going to be really big kills for his team, and on the the other side, obviously, Envy really tried to get it, especially with the body shooting and all. 11 kills to his name. Yep, Bolu with a big performance for Tribe as well. The SMGs always going to thrive on slums, especially when it comes to the search and destroy. And uh, the battle over on that far side bomb site, pretty chaotic. Whoo! A lot of work for Luminosity to do right here. My goodness, this is just a really, really quick matchup. And then as history repeats itself, Luminosity goes down yet again here in slums. And again, for SND, Tribe seems like they're going to be reigning supreme. As we see all of these things put together, pretty good start coming in from Tribe. But obviously, it's just not over yet as we have one more map of control. But obviously, we want to see every single action pull through. Degon, bring it away.
Thank you very much, Beef Mommy and Bobby. Great start so far, just like Tribe Gaming. Two to one. Remember, Luminosity had the map advantage, and that got absolutely wiped out and uh, in an emphatic way, too, on that takeoff. Look, here's the thing. All of these map mode combos in some form were played in stage four, whether it was the winner's finals or the grand finals. Both of these two maps initially favored Luminosity off of those game plays that we had seen from a couple of months ago. But here this weekend, Tribe is fixing all of the things that they were even slightly stepping away from during stage four. And now all of a sudden, you're in a position to really control the series layout. Yeah, uh, I mean, hey, you're a fair shout for what happened back in stage four, but it's a different meta. We're here on land, man. And I'm not gonna lie, this Tribe squad is coming a little different, especially through the majority of this takeoff hardpoint map number one. I mean, between Tech and Marshy, I don't know which POV <laughs> was more fun to watch. Marshy was just everywhere. Tech was locking down those longer lines of sight. The flexibility to set up Marshy's success on these flanks was at an all-time high. And the thing that's really curious, and Bobby brought this up, and he was right, by the way, it was a 250 to 27 on that winner's final opening hardpoint before Luminosity would bounce back. The thing is, you don't expect to see that kind of a performance at a World Championship Grand Final. So the fact that Tribe is able to really put the pain on towards LG early in the series, I think says a lot about, again, them being in final form. Uh, you know, LG just felt super, super cut out of it here on takeoff. It, you you kind of wonder, hey, like, you know, where where are you getting the spark from? You, you know, where's Band stepping up from? Where's right. Blur stepping up? Where's Washi? We got to see a little bit of Washi in the S&D on slums, but they were getting completely outgunned here, and we're we're finally seeing the tech that we've been wanting to see throughout the whole tournament. Getting outslayed, getting outmaneuvered, it's just everything that we've known uh, that Tribe have been able to do. And what we have been seeing them do from a fundamental level and also at a mechanical level, ever since Wolf's knocked them down to the lower bracket, it was almost a scary reawakening that I feel like Tribe <laughs> needed here for the weekend. And the thing about it is Luminosity, they they haven't really done anything that has ever looked like this on the weekend. They yeah. were the number one ranked team out of our 16 total squads through group play, through the first day of upper bracket gameplay in hard point. They were carrying like an average win differential of like 115 points. For them to even barely get to 100 points, I call it me surprised. Yeah, and it was a last push there that made it respectable because they didn't get to the triple digits until the yeah. very end there. <laughs> That's right. And it was kind of confusing too, because when that map started out, I think they opened up with the first five or six kills. They got themselves like 14 points. You're like, okay, cool. Nice little start here. And then they get completely shut out. And then we move over to slums and okay, first two rounds, Luminosity, they're here to play. We got them. And then Tribe continue to turn it on. And this battle of the snipers, Jez versus Washi, was just a joy to watch. Those that are like the deep North American COD Mobile fans and historians will know that Luminosity, after getting blown out in that winner's finals, came to this map mode combo and beat the brakes off of Tribe. And it looked like we were going to get that again until we started to see Tribe, mostly off of vague slipperiness, continue to work through some key positions and take away the map from LG. You heard Beef Mommy and Bobby talking about the utility usage. It wasn't quite finding the same kind of impact as we got deeper into the map. Yeah, I mean, you even go back to what Vague looked like back on the standoff search and destroy versus Inko in the lower final matchup. And it, and it was all of that plus a little bit extra as well. And it just kind of echo about like how fun it was to watch Washi versus Jez as far as who's going to have the better sniper. It was more about who was going to set up your rotating members a whole lot better. You know, Vague for 15, Bolu for 10. On the other side, Envy uh, for 11, it just felt like that the way that Vague was kind of manipulating the map was that much better off of the pressure that Jez was laying This out. round was a complete breakdown from LG. There's zero reason that you don't have two players peeking at the same time to confirm shots to land. The fact that the sniper missed twice, the AR that was around the corner isn't able to get any shots off, that's a complete misstep from LG, and it's a difference between seeing this map go to overtime and having an 0-2 loss on them overall. And right now, Feels like Luminosity is reeling just a little bit. Tribes seem to be rolling, business as usual. And I'll say both these teams seem relatively calm. We've seen pop-offs from both of them, right? Whether it was waving goodbye to the other team or <laughs> ripping off the headset after a map win, both of them just seem really, uh, I guess, controlled, although it's two to one for Tribe. Yeah, it's strictly business, right? I, I mean, they uh, have faced it off against each other before, but here at the end of the day, you know, you have $700,000 for first place as well. You have to come in and play your game. Strictly business coming in for Tribe. 
they know what they have to do. Yeah, it's it really is just again we framed it up at the beginning of this entire event. This was the expectation that Tribe was going to make it to a grand final. Took a different path than we would have expected, but they expected to be here. And, and I think that's the whole business side of it right here is that you know their whole goal at the very end was doesn't matter who we play, we want to win this thing. You know we've talked about all of these players individually, whether it was Tech. Whether a tech and him fragging out, whether it's Jez because he's a new guy, whether it's vague and whatever the hell he calls that like uh, ground humping surfing thing. But we had the opportunity to go and chat with Bolu. Let's take a listen. My teammates are tech, marshy, vague, and Jez. Each of them have personality traits. Uh, Vague's the funny one, you can have a laugh once in a while. Jez and Marshy are both quiet but also very smart and Tech is the most passionate player I've seen. You know, all great guys and uh, we all have trust in each other on what ideas we need to bring to win. Playing in front of the crowd, it's neutral. I don't feel really any nerves. Same goes for, I'm sure, my, my teammates. We all seem very comfortable and you know, we look forward to play tomorrow. The team we look forward to play the most is Luminosity because uh, they're the second best team in our region and beating them on the world stage would just solidify that our team is a better team. Winning this event would mean relief and happiness. The best moments is a few seconds after winning and that's something that I think everyone on our team can cherish forever. Being a top eight team in the world means a lot, but for our team, we obviously want to be the best in the world and win this tournament, so that's our goal. Uh, and we'll do what it takes to accomplish that. All right, well, Tribe Gaming, again, very, very close to making their dreams come to true. Only two maps away now for Tribe from being uh, Western champs to world champs. You know, we basically, you know, best in the world as we've now solidified the West is the best in COD Mobile. But Luminosity still have something to say about that, right? And it's gonna require some individual efforts and you've seen it all the time throughout any sort of competition, team competition, mm. a spark comes from someone. Who is it going to be? Man, I, I look, the, the, you guys have talked about it before. Bobby and Beef Mommy were talking about it kind of at the end of our series, asking the question, were we going to see Luminosity still rely on the SKS, which got them through Inco Gaming so quickly? And we have not seen it really pulled out at all. So the guy that I'm actually looking at is actually Blur. Because, yeah, Bandits have a hard time getting in towards the point, but Bobby broke that down really nicely. He's not getting a lot of his help from his teammates to get there. And what was so successful for Luminosity back when their series in the Winners' Finals was the fact that Blur was dominating at the long range, allowing Ban to walk in for free. So you look at the KD, winners we respawn 1.5 now to a 0.75, and he hasn't pulled out the SKS maybe more than for a couple of seconds. I think that's a miss, and I think LG need to think about going back to it. I couldn't agree more. Uh, I mean, when you're thinking about it at the end of the day, that is also what well, made them look quite convincing when they did take down Inko as well, is that they were doing Inko's thing, but better. It, it's just about being in the right position at the right time with the SKS. Ban needs that help. He needs that overwatch because Tech is just getting away with highway robbery. Well, takeoff was the map for that, right? Yep, that was the one that uh, Inko Stalwart really uh, made their name with the SKS. Now, that map's already done and dusted, and they got pretty much put in a box in that one. What do you do now? Do you still have time to pull out the SKS? Do you still have time, the correct maps to still do that? You do. It's a raid control, Hacienda Hardpoint immediately up next. So you have the ability of going to that and being able to realistically still play your game plan without having to worry necessarily about what are we losing by picking up an SKS kind of out of nowhere. The other thing about this as we look through the layout again is now all of a sudden Luminosity, if they want to see a map seven, they have to steal away a map that Tribe had previously beat them on back during stage four and even on top of that you look through the entirety of this series layout there really aren't any convincing results for lg across from anything besides the hacienda hard point from here until the end of this best of seven yeah because the last time that they played the raid control even in stage four it was a 3-0 that in favor of a tribe, tribe. Yeah. you would almost feel like that that might be looming uh, or through the air there on the main stage that it might just honestly continue on with the same exact idea that if the smgs continue to pop off that in favor of Tribe on a map like Raid Control, we might end up seeing the sim a similar outcome. Well, I'd imagine that we continue to see the Battle of the Snipers with Jess and Washi going back and forth from basketball in the pool and going uh, shooting that way. 
Where's the SKS end up landing? Is it in the middle? Is it on the opposite side? Where, where is it going? The great thing about the two maps you have coming up is that you could pick and choose that, actually. It's really up to whatever you think is most favorable, because largely what we're going to expect to see if LG were to go to this SKS is trust that Blur can single-handedly lock down one of the three lanes that's yet to come, whether that is on Raid or if it's on Hacienda. In particular, when we've seen Hacienda Hardpoint from Tribe, they're really focused on getting up into those upper hallways. The SKS can ruin that instantly. Same thing on Raid long window lines of sight to where you can completely dominate a lane. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that if you even go back and you really dissect that raid control versus try from Inko, what did Inko do so well? I mean, I'm not saying you got to pull out three SKSs if you're LG by any stretch of the imagination, but getting one over by ring just to make sure that that entire zone itself remains in your control, the SKS on that head glitch alone is just gross. All right, well, you can see our players are back on stage after their two map break. Tribe, only two maps away from becoming the world champions. Luminosity, they had that map advantage, so they're three away. We will be crowning ourselves the best team in Call of Duty Mobile in just a little bit. To get into the action, let's send it back on over to Beef Mommy and Bobby. All right, well. Hopefully, the break was very restful. Feels like it was much needed for Luminosity. They're looking to bounce back right here in a raid control where, like we mentioned, the SKSs have an opportunity to dominate. Blur has looked solid with it so far, maybe not on the same level as he was that first time they went up against Inko. Do you anticipate he's going to have a big impact against Tribe? Well, one thing that Shift actually brought out he took out the stats from stage four, and that got me thinking. I looked at all of the map selections that both of these teams actually played. It's like a mirrored situation here in 2022. And this is absolutely crazy because, yes, this was actually in stage four just a few months ago, but they wanted to bring the same thing here. But before we actually check into what happened in the past, let's take a look at what actually happens here for our comparisons for our stats. Yeah, you can see the respawn KD equalizing pretty quickly. It was leaning heavily toward Luminosity the first time around, but that one hardpoint map switched things pretty quickly. Obviously, the control going to play significantly differently, and we do see Luminosity on the defensive side to start right here, but interesting thing is when we were watching that tri versus inko matchup there were a lot of offensive rounds going through this could potentially be to the advantage of tribe yeah because they did beat out luminosity here back in stage four three no pretty convincing but let's see how luminosity can actually go and perform respond to that down. especially knowing very well that the meta has already changed and now going in there very aggressively jez doesn't really win that gunfight and now for the defense, LG's going to be starting that, so that's going to be good for them. But with Tribe, they showed a while ago that they can win this on the Break offense. Out. Washi's going to be able to sneak away the Smoke top out. side. Ban finds another. Tribe just trying to find some map control, trying to find a couple ticks. They haven't been able to find a whole lot of kills as it continues to be all luminosity in the feed right now. And Tribe has not had a response here on the offensive side. Banned. Don't think he heard the shots from Top Modern right here, but he's going to be able to sneak through. He finds some early shots on the Marshy, but get absolutely turned on. Big momentum changer for Marshy. Blur gets shut down as well. And now the feet starting to look very, very yellow. Four-man push coming in from top lounge, but it's not going to be good as Washi gets rid, almost going down as members from the blue side going down one by one. It's going to be absolutely amazing as the points almost going down for the lives. 18 to 17 is going to be on the clock. And also, Bravo, three ticks of progress. Oh my goodness, the rotation in A. You already know how well Tribe actually plays here. And Tribe already has players over on A. Jez soaking up the time right here. Smoke's cutting off those sight lines. He's going to be able to win a big gunfight right here. Tectonic with a big 1v1. He comes out on top as well. Only one tick needed for Tribe to close out here on the offensive side. Marshy, it's all Tribe in the feed. Luminosity started out strong, but lose all momentum mid-round, and they can't seem to find a kill. The take goes through, and Tribe takes round one. In true fashion, here in Raid, they get the offensive side really locked down. At least, honestly, with the defense of Luminosity, I feel like they did such a good job at getting a lot of the points down, a lot of the kills, but unfortunately for them, couldn't really sustain up in that Bravo point. 
get the aerial view right here. You can see Tribe setting up in the top side of Laundry. Marshy gonna get pushed up, pushed up as far as he can. Tectonic's gonna find first blood. It's a one for one trade. And right now it's gonna be Luminosity making the push on over to A. They've already got two players on the inside and Solo has gotten creeped up all the way into the spawn of Tribe. He's gonna get a free kill right there. If he can reposition, might be able to find more. That's not the spawn of Tribe. He was just trying to hit a flank. <laughs> And now speaking of the flank, player number five, keep your eyes on him, Marshy yet again, being so annoying here on their spawn, getting a lot of these kills. Now again, it's all yellow all across the board, Tectonic getting that triple kill, that's gonna be really good for him. And now, for Marshy, he's gonna be a really big deal, as some players are actually gonna be on the hunt from him. I'll try almost all operators ready to go right here, but they very well may not even need it. More than likely going to force some operator usage out of Luminosity as well. We got a couple that are ready to go. Luminosity doesn't seem like they want to use it, but feels like they're kind of in a dire situation right now with the way things are spiraling out of their control. They find themselves down 12 lives, and to be honest, maybe it's best to save because I'm not sure the operators will even save you right here with how big this life gap is. Now minus 14. Tribe has been nearly untouched in this round of control. And Vay gonna do his best to clean up that kill. He does exactly that. And probably maximum 11 seconds. You get somebody hopping on the objective, but seeming to be only a matter of time before Tribe closes out this round too. Luminosity always being backed up in a corner, and that presence in their spawn is always going to be huge. Volo gets one more, brings it down to four taken. lives, 11 seconds left. Gets one more, getting ticks of progress in Bravo as well. But then with one life, that's definitely going to be impossible. Bolu seals the deal, and now two and zero here, Bobby. It's, it's <laughs> tough to spot the glimmer of hope for Luminosity right now. They, they've been getting steamrolled for the majority of this matchup, spots of the SND looks bright, but here in the control, they, they just haven't been able to win gunfights. And you gotta wonder once again, does Tribe just have this mental edge over Luminosity where they always believe that they're gonna be able to take him down. And because of that, they just have the advantage. Tribe winning the majority of the gunfights off the start once again. They get four players stacked onto A, and that progression is taking through quickly. Finally, Envy gonna get the better of him on a gunfight. Bay looking to spawn trap with the purifier, but there's nobody spawning over here. Washi gonna be able to push through. They take the operator out of the equation. And now an opportunity for Luminosity to regain as they start to fill up the feed. Okay, that's good. Slow things down. And a really big gunfight being one up against Vague that had a purifier in hand. That is big. Denying that. Denying that spawn trap. But Tectonic goes in there. A little bit of a running catch here as Cat and Mouse. Solo obviously going to be that cat getting big kills. So there you go. Signs of life coming in from this team. Right now, Luminosity obviously on the defense will have an easier time, but takes some progress already in B. Only one more remaining. Right now, lives are even. Tribe have not yet fully captured an objective. Tectonic doing everything he can to ward off the flooding Luminosity players. And looking to maybe throw a look over toward A, but they don't realize Solo is tucked away in that corner once again. Playing the cheekiest of spots. He's gonna try to hide inside We're that smoke. And able to stay alive for now. Down. Solo's gonna be able to find another onto Bolu. That's gonna be a crucial kill to keep Tribe pushed back. And the clock continues to tick as they have yet to pick up any of those objectives. Solo doing the one-man show down below Modern right there. He literally stopped three players from pushing into Alpha and they just hunted down for him. That was just one player. Good because he got one kill and also excellent because he was able to stop the push, delaying Alpha even more. With 14 seconds left on the clock, he played them pretty well. Not just that, 13 lives to seven. And now all the tribe needs to do is go full rush into that Bravo, but obviously they're just so, so far away. Well, we were looking for the glimmer of hope for Luminosity, and it is definitely here. Could potentially be the turning point for them as they finally take a round. We know that it's incredibly feasible to take a, a defense, or rather an offensive round as well. We saw Tribe and Inko go back and forth with it earlier on. But right now, you gotta look at the operator usage. Three ready for Tribe, two good to go for Luminosity. A couple streaks ready as well. 
And if they can get this early outer ring set up, they win a couple of gunfights right Hunter there. Killer Hunter Killer going to go out. Right. Bolu being as annoying as he can in top modern right there, or rather top laundry. Nade going to connect for the hit marker, and they don't really have any challenge over here on Statue. They've yet to find a kill. Band is doing a great job at holding down the spawns. And now backup also comes through. That's going to be Envy. Tribe going to be backed up in the corner. Band gets another one. Earns from that Hunter Killer. Vague is going to be in big trouble, but it's a good thing he's actually going in there, getting that trade. Solo though with a bird fire is going to be really good in this spawn. Still looking for those players. It's a good thing he goes in there for the reposition. Solo doing his best to get max value on the purifier, but not meant to be. Bolo drops him right there. Tribe starting to equalize the lives. That's three, four, maybe five in a row. Luminosity still with the life lead as Bolu tries to make his way toward top laundry. All right now, Vague beaming cross map right there, able to connect for one, but does get shut down by the Gravity Vortex. Luminosity continues to fill up the feed. It seemed like the momentum might be swinging but they've got it back in their control. Already a full objective capture over on B. And now only three takes needed here on A. With a life advantage, should be pretty Enemy doable. Tech Alpha. has to find Ban in the top side. He's not gonna be able to do that. Bullet's not connecting with the claw. Almost no value for him so far, and Washi doing everything he can to stay alive. One tick of progress, 22 lives, and I'll make that 20, and 138 on the clock. Almost at the halfway point is Envy with the God Claw. Dai Wu doing an amazing job at getting rid of all the plays here, flushing him out, but Solo with big kills as well. Seals them another round here. It's not over yet. We're going into a round number five. LG on the defense. Well, right now, Tribe looked like they were hoping to be able to close this one out early. It hasn't happened yet. This is their final chance of this game. Let's hop into a listen in with Tribe Gaming. Got sun. Never caught sun. They smoke, they smoke, they smoke, they smoke. Left side ring, left side ring, left side ring. Nice. Watch out. Hey, one more right side ring, right side ring, right side ring. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. One in zig, one in zig, in zig, in zig. Go, 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 go,
You must commend them for that. Stopping the push coming in from top side into their spawn. But the timing of the operators from Tribe when they were capturing Alpha, that claw, Bobby, that was so good. And a lot of that came down to 1v1 gunfights that Tribe was just more confident on. So many of those head-to-head -head gunfights were Bolu absolutely beaming, Marshy hip-firing through the smoke right there, no question. Bolu probably with the round and game-saving play there at the end to pull out the claw and zone off that basketball court area. Vague goes big, Marshy goes big, the whole squad pulling out everything that they can. Once again, we call them marshy things for a reason and definitely, I mean, if you're Luminosity, a, a, you, you needed that game. Yeah, you definitely did. And it looks like history definitely repeated itself here where Tribe took it yet again. And obviously for this squad, they're so good at raid. They have a 100% win rate here in stage four, and now it looks like they're also getting 100% win rate here in stage five. My goodness, that is just absolutely crazy. Oh, here we go. Speaking of the man himself, that is going to be Vague, our top dog for today. <laughs> it's the Beef Mommy OMG moment. Oh you gosh. gotta take it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the spawn, tra spawn trap set up for Tribe. Definitely gave them a little bit of momentum right here. To be honest, I'm a little bit surprised Luminosity was able, even able to break it, but a beautiful purifier usage. But Tribe with this setup, able to take the top laundry control, allows them to flood in from the high ground and really allows them to distract while their objective players make that push on over to A. You can see that one player slowly but surely creeping through on the top side and Whew, a whole lot of engagements there up above Top Laundry Tribe Gaming. What, what a turnaround. In that round alone, it looked like Luminosity was going to be able to pull off the control reverse sweep. Tribe Gaming says not today. Yeah. Uh, what a feat, though, for Luminosity to do something like that. Honestly, it's just Luminosity that can actually pull numbers like that. Another team that was able to do that, though, was Wolves, but obviously they're going to be out of the competition. And now we're moving on into Hardport. Hardpoint Hacienda, where Wolves took Tribe down 243 and 250. Pretty close. It looks like Luminosity. They need to keep it even closer. And if you're Luminosity, if there is one map in this entire map pool that you feel confident about, it's got to be the Hacienda Hardpoint. You know that Tribe couldn't take down Wolves. You know that you took down Wolves on this same map mode combo. Like. This is best case scenario, and obviously it's do or die right now as well. So the, the difference of $420,000 on the line, but more importantly, the glory of being crowned the kings of Call of Duty Mobile right here, you can see once again, such a solid start for Tribe. I thought this was gonna be a quick 3-0. The fact that Luminosity bounced back at all was impressive <laughs> in and of itself. Uh, the bounce back just wasn't able to last quite long enough. Luminosity, they had quite the comeback. They were actually going head to head with Tribe. It was pretty impressive. I mean, at, at a certain point, uh, probably we're not looking at that first round. Probably that was probably the most askew round that we actually had. It really was that the last two rounds that they had, they kept the numbers close. They kept the lives really close. And now at the end, they just couldn't close it out because the last minute claw and for that defense in alpha was definitely the biggest thing that could happen in this game. I think coming into this competition, obviously Tribe was widely considered to be the favorite. They took their loss to Wolves and were like, well, is Tribe overrated? Is there an issue? What is it? But proving here in the grand finals, they are far from overrated. Right now, an opportunity to close this out. Uh, were it not for that winner's bracket advantage, would be a sweep if they can get the win here in the Hacienda. It's a very tall task. We know North America in general hasn't felt super comfortable on this, but Luminosity have definitely looked a lot more solid. Right now, they've got to bounce back in a big way and obviously got to look primarily at those ARs hold down the long, rain, long lanes. Blur, Washi, Envy, gonna have a big task here. Hey, it's a Beef Mommy OMG moment where I thought Tribe was actually gonna shred it, but Band bringing out his own claw just disseminates everyone that is actually walking his way. What a guy.
so good. Always that MVP that you can rely on. But taking a look at this one, Bolu, you can see that his claw slowly gaining up. Now that is probably one of the best moments. Really good timing also on his end. Brings out the claw, eliminates that one player up in there. Possibly gonna get it, getting another, and that's how they shut him down. Even though that LG actually had a life advantage. Tribe, it doesn't really matter when it comes to them. They just played so well. You can see the, the 19 and 18 for Bolu, but one thing that will get slept on a lot is those 14 assists. And that shows the, the importance of the teamwork for this Tribe roster. Most of the gunfights they take are not individual gunfights. Yes, here and there you'll take one. But so important to their success are those double shells where you can see the entire team floating through a doorway. And especially if you're just trying to take one player off guard, that's going to get you not even a one for one. You're just going to take the, the kill off the trade and not even give them an opportunity to bounce back. So right now we're getting ready to hop into the Hacienda hard point. It is do or die for Luminosity. One thing to keep in mind. They got reverse swept in stage three. Can they now pull off the reverse sweep here up against Trot? My goodness, I'm so excited for this man. <laughs> this is the best situation for Luminosity, having beautiful two wins up against Skate and Wolves here in a pretty convincing fashion. And for Tribe, they lost this one. That's gonna be really big for them. And that confidence needs to be picked up by Luminosity right now as we start things off. So far, seven points for Tribe as they're both clearing out all the power positions here in 2F. A lot of kills going through for Tribe. Haven't been able to lock in a ton of that hard point control though. His band floods through the bottom side. He wins a crucial gunfight there and just like that, Luminosity should be soaking up the time. Obviously, they're gonna be looking to flip these spawns as well. Rotation of P2 going to be crucial and banned right there. Gonna slide on through. Not gonna hear the Bolu footsteps behind him and just like that, try back into the hard point. Back into the hard point, getting and soaking up those points, but with 11 seconds left on the clock, Rotation needs to pull through. They're early. Two players already in there through driveway. Only greeted by one player from Luminosity and Solo needs to be quiet. Jet spots him out. That's gonna be really big kills for them to go in for the hold. And it's not just that, they're trying to go in there for that tile solo hold as well. All right, now pretty even heading on into P2. Obviously, the early rotations going the way of Tribe, but there's three players flooding through. Only one player left to deal with, and just like that, Luminosity's got the control just like they want. Players coming up from driveway solo, holding down the short angle right now. A little bit of a split spawn, but looks like it's only going to be one player on the backside. No, all of a sudden, every Tribe player spawning back toward P1. And that puts the Luminosity players in a rough spot. Ban doing everything he can. He takes down three. He's got a Hunter Killer ready to go and single-handedly holds the line. Hunter Killer's gonna go out right there. Reinforcements on the way in. Just able to avoid those shots and somehow he is still alive. Finally oh taken down. Gosh. But Envy's there for the trade and the bulk of the hard point time going to Luminosity. Props to you, Bad. My goodness, he held that so well. And he was surrounded by Tribe players from everywhere. Literally left and right from Rock, from Driveway. Jez actually went in from Rock, trying to go in there for the pinch. And two players from Tribe actually spawned right behind them. I thought, okay, this is it. They're going in there for the break, but Ban just did so well at stopping it. And right now we're going in for the next hard point where Tribe is already going to be there very early on. Vague is going to be able to get the afterburn on the Purifier kill. Right now it is Luminosity in control of the hard point. The early rotation's paying off. They've got control of the spawns as well. The Hunter Killer goes through for Tectonic. And it's actually going to be a stun kill for Tectonic on the blur as well. But Luminosity maintains control right here. They're maintaining the high ground as well. And right now, no real avenue for Tribe to break their way on in outside of Alka and everybody. And that's what Bolu's going to do. Luminosity still in control with those spawns going their way. Marshy doing everything he can to find some scrap time. But right now, priority number one is that foot race on over to P4. And who else but Luminosity already there? Tribe, though, they're running. Bolu, knowing very well that there's gonna be one player right there. Spots him, but then Solo with a head, he definitely wins those gunfights. And the rest of uh, this team, Luminosity, 
goes in there for that rotation as well. And now for Tribe, they're going to have to catch up. And it's going to be a long time. But with Jez having that claw down, can definitely help his team. But Envy, yet again, getting those big kills, not only having in their early rotation, but also winning the gunfights inside. Farshi is struggling right now. Only three kills on the board. We have not seen a game like this out of him so far this tournament. And right now, Luminosity continues to stack time. Jez doing everything he can to play those headies, but Luminosity's hold is just too strong. The closer spawns as well, gonna pay off big time. Tectonic finally able to find two, but once again, Tribe pushing for scraps. They're gonna fully invest right here. Luminosity said, you know what? We'll just take a couple of kills. Solo's got full streaks to work with right now. And Tribe, not even going to be able to pick up the scrap time on this one either. They've got no top side control over here for P1, and they are just absolutely scrambling to find some hard point time. Rock is supposed to be a point that is actually heavily contested as well. It's so open, but and for Luminosity, they just soaked up a lot of the points. Bobby, this is looking so good for a comeback. And now, not just that, that solo hold is going to be really good into P1 as well. One person's going to be there. That's going to be Band of Blurred. They are going to have a really solid hold in P1. And only one person's actually going to be here in the 2F control. That is going to be that one person, Envy, trying to stop the push coming in here in 2F. And this has got to be frustrating if you're Tectonic. You are on 28, nearly 30 kills right now. And nobody on your team has even half of what you have. He's trying to be the do-it-all man, but that AR dominance is not something that's easy to master. Luminosity is going to get the hard point cleared, and once again, they do have spawns for P2 right now. It does look like Tribe going to be rotating early on this one, and maybe for the first time, an opportunity to lock in a big chunk of time, which they haven't been able to find so far. Big gunfight win for Solo on the water side. He's gonna hop back up. There's a Tribe player trying to take him down right here. Band comes through. Another crucial gunfight win. And just like that, the early rotation is all for naught. Luminosity already on the inside of P2. Luminosity is so good when it comes to that break. And they had a very solid hold a while ago before we restarted this round. And now for Tribe, you had a really good play a while ago. You had that good intention into rotating very early in Vague, getting those very essential kills, flushing down this hard point. And they do soak up a lot of the points as well. But slowly but surely, the pinch might actually come through coming in for Luminosity. Huge break for Tribe to be able to make their way back into this one. Finally starting to lock in right here. Tectonic on 32 and 15. He and Jez, the only players positive right now. Bolu trying to soak up as much hard point time as he can with Marshy, but Luminosity have not made it easy. They say, never mind, we're gonna go ahead, opt to rotate early on this one and see if they can get a close to full 60 of their own that Nade not Catch quite able to connect. Trophy system is there. And now Tectonic on this wide angle, a big task to mow down the Luminosity players in his path. Man, Tech was a really good shot. He actually go, went in there early into the rotation, but couldn't really sustain because two players actually spawned right behind him from Luminosity. Just unfortunate timing right there. And actually both teams went in there for the early rotate. And it kind of like the same situation also happened to Luminosity where Tech spawned right behind them. But as Call of Duty has it, two players from Luminosity also spawned right behind them as well. That also gave Luminosity such a solid hold here. And the trip looking like it's actually spawning into their favor. Bolu's gonna be able to earn a Pred Missile. Big value for Tribe as they slowly creep back into this one. Only down by about 50 right now. It's Luminosity still getting the bigger chunk of the hard point time over here on P3. Once again, Tribe not all that concerned with the early rotation. We finally see some players making the push. It's Solo with the outer water push and he's gonna be able to spot Bolu, but oh my gosh. What a beam out of Bolu right there. Big early gunfight blur. Gets a little bit of information. He's gonna opt to back up right here. And now waiting for somebody to hop to that outer angle. Bolu says, hey, let me push through a pre-fire of a crane. Maybe not the best idea. He does get taken down. Driving the inside of the hard point, but a nice little flank out of Envy. That's a two piece, make it a three piece. And just like that, he's on full streets. Oh, there you go, information given as well. Doesn't really quite get anything with that, but the information is still key. 
three players rushing through from Tribe, going in from the backside, but then Solo's gonna be stopping them right now. That's gonna be really big usage when it comes to this Operator. He's going in there for the chase. Marchi's gonna be in a little bit of a trouble, but there you go, he actually gets that kill. All right now, that's pretty, that's about as good of a hill as you can ask for if you're Luminosity, and they find themselves now in an 80 point lead. It was do or die. They will opt to do for a little bit longer right here, assuming they can close this one out. Tribe starting to build momentum. Once again, Luminosity just got to play fundamentally sound, and you can't let Tribe take that mental edge. A couple big early gunfights for Luminosity to once again lock in some of this P1 time. Still winning the bigger chunk of the gunfights. They've got a 70-point lead. Ban wins another big one right there. Bolu going to do his best to contest, but there's a lot of high ground control for Luminosity right now. Players back up for a second. Hipfire going to connect for Bolu. A little bit of a miracle shot. He's able to find two. It's not over for Tribe yet. Not over Tribe. Bolu could be getting some shots. Information finally given to him. And now for Solo. Goes in there for the hold. Vague goes down. Almost gets that kill off of Solo. That would have been really big. But obviously, it just smokes all over the place. Such good util usage coming in from Luminosity. Something that we really didn't get to see a while ago. It finally pops out now. 18 seconds left on the hard point. Marshy trying to get there and soaking up all the points, the scrap points, but the rotation needs to come through. And a while ago, we actually saw Tribe doing such a good job in this hill. Early rotation once again. Tribe is there. But it is the same case last time around and weren't able to soak up much of the time. Once again, got to be frustrating for Tectonic. He's on 49 right now. He's got a claw ready to go. Actually, five operators ready to go, and Tribe is fully ready to just steamroll their way to, a, to 80 points straight to see if they can get to 250. But a big chunk of kills once again come through for Luminosity. They're doing best to break this one. Only 14 seconds needed. Try pre-firing away. Claw gonna go through for Tech. He's now up to 50. And they still got operators to spare as they continue to move upward. This is where, this is where the points go down. Tribe though, still soaking up majority of the points, the comeback a possibility, doing an amazing job when it comes to the timing, but Blur, really big grab Vortex kills. Tectonic is gonna be spotted, goes and repositions himself. That's gonna be really big points, five more seconds for Luminosity. Tectonic with a pistol, gets one more, stops the push, 10 seconds left, and only one person is gonna be right there, it's gonna be Jez. And now the rotation pulls through as they can't finish the game in this hard point. Oh, LG's rotating, but they gotta go through the straightest shooter in the land. Tectonic sitting on 57 right now. Tribe continues to pick up the kills. They've got players rotated out early. Vague doing his best to defend, but Luminosi pushing through. They can't seem to find him. They can't connect on the gunfights. They're there to contest for right now. A big gunfight kill for Washi. They finally get control. Tech's doing all that he can, but it doesn't matter. Luminosity, despite the 59 from Tectonic, come out with the win. Oh my gosh, I was so scared right there. Luminosity, an amazing hard point matchup, and it just proves how well they are. We already hyped it before this match. They're so good at that Hacienda map here in hard point. They did beat Wolves, and now they beat Tribe. A possibility for a reverse right up the alley. Oh my gosh, TikTok. <laughs> I mean, Look that man, that, Look at that, that man won line. it in 59 and 28, but it just wasn't quite enough. And you can see that's the interesting thing about the way this Luminosity team plays Hardpoint. They don't have a dedicated OBJ player. Yeah, Washi's typically there, but every single player is within what, 16 seconds of each other and how much time they got in the Hardpoint every single player doing the dirty work right there big credit to envy going plus 10 in the midst of that but across the board crazy consistency oh my gosh dude he has just one away washi's one away from that 30. he's the only one in his team that isn't 30 kills but everyone all in the one minute range up on the other side though Tectonic had 59 kills but with the 29 that he has probably really hard because he's doing so much 
to try and anchor his team. I feel like for me, the biggest gunfights that he actually won was here in P2. And that was, uh, honestly, that was good. I thought a comeback was really gonna ensue, but it really was the spawns that did not favor Tribe when we ended things in P3, where Luminosity did an amazing job at going for that rotation, but stopped by Tribe. They read it so well, basically put a gate out you're not allowed to go in here. They're the security guards. Yeah, you're not allowed here. But the spawn's not in their favor. Based on how close that ended up being, you gotta think that big solo hold out of band on P2 could have potentially been the difference in the game for Luminosity. That keeps them in this. And obviously, like, overall, the matches felt like it's been very one-sided. But coming into this, Luminosity gets an extra map. There's only one map separating these two. And we could potentially have ourselves a game set. I'm definitely impressed. I mean, that is the showdown that we like to see. This is the grand championship. We've been waiting for three years with this one, so a game seven not completely off the table as we see one more lifeline coming in from Luminosity. Really impressive stuff here. But as we see the points go down and definitely a really strong Hacienda hard point, we're going to be slowing things down just a tiny bit and we're going back into the standoff map where Tribe Gaming did such an amazing job here a while ago. Yeah, try. I mean, that's <laughs> the, the win is good news. <laughs> Standoff search and destroy is not if you are a Luminosity fan. Yes. That being said, we haven't seen how these two face up against each other. The, the slum search and destroy was far from a blowout. Incredibly winnable and plays much, much differently from Standoff search and destroy as well. So going into this one, obviously, you got to give the edge to try, but once again, backs up against the wall. That tends to change the energy for a team. And Luminosity, a chance right here to once again extend the series. For Luminosity, this is the time to redeem themselves from their game a while ago up against Inko because they had such a great lead but unfortunately dropped it at the very end. And now for Tribe, it's just gonna show how consistent you are with the maps that you've been playing so far because the maps that they chose, pretty good. Pretty solid choices here. And for Luminosity, that choice of Hacienda Hardpoint is definitely gonna be really smart on their end. Oh, apparently in stage four, Tribe won standoff on s &D versus Luminosity in the grand finals, seven to three. So you got to think at every turn, the mental edge has to go to Tribe in this one. Once again, the one thing for Luminosity, their backs are up against the wall. They've shown they're resilient. They've shown that they're not going to get down just because Tribe has played so very well today. And really, everything goes out the window at this point. There's $700,000 on the line for first place. I can't. It's like the map selection here is just kind of like a repeat of what happened. And it's just just adding some more fuel to the fire. It's just it, showing up. Is it an up. exact repeat or is it slightly different? Just the, honestly, I'm trying to look at it. It's just slightly different. Like the order of it uh -huh. is slightly different. But the map choices of Hacienda and Takeoff being chosen for Hardpoint, same. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Control, Raid will always be chosen by per Tribe. So again, it's really impressive to see the copy paste here. I mean, especially for that to be the, the map pick for Tribe, Luminosity able to keep things close. A good sign once again. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that, that, man, that man gave it his all, no question about it. 59 and 28. I think that is the second highest kill count we've seen all tournament, and second only to the one and only Lucasin of Inco Gaming. But that trophy, all the glory, that's what's on the line right now, along with a whole lot of cash. Luminosity need one more game in order to put, push this to a game seven. We'll see what they can do here on the standoff s &D. You played it a while ago. You played it well. Time to close it out. It's more of the fact that they were using their utility pretty well early on, but it's just they kind of struggled at the very end. They were being read by a book when it comes to their gameplay with Inko. So with Tribe, though, it seems like they're the opposite kind of team where they do so well at the very end, where in the beginning, maybe they're just trying to feel it out, try to see what kind of competition that they're dealing with, calculating everything that's going to be happening in their head mid-game, and then just crushing it out. So I feel like this is going to be a really close matchup. Well, we got a lot to break down. We're going to send things back to our desk to get their thoughts on the matchup. Degon, who you got? Thank you very much, guys. Uh... 
we finally have a luminosity <laughs> sighting y'all <laughs> they did it they're welcome. here welcome to the stage they finally made it to grand finals uh, i mean hey that one was only up there because they were able to make it through the winner's bracket but it's nice for them to be able to show some signs of life that hacienda was uh, quite convincing if you ask me i think the biggest thing about this lg squad is i feel like they're still missing a mark here I mean, we've gotten some improvements from some players but there is a little part of me that wished that the LADAM SKS strat made its way into the core of LG's gameplay. But I'm not getting that, so I'm going to look silly for a while and let you guys be. <laughs> well, I like the fact that that last one was a close game, right? It, it, you know, a Tribe made him work for it. Tectonic just took over the server. My God. And was just tearing into him. Yet, we saw how the team play worked together, how everyone almost hit at least 30 kills for Luminosity, and it was a team effort and a team win there. And they're going to need to keep that up, by the way, because it's a standoff search and destroy, as we've already framed up. It was a 7-3, as shown in the graphic, in the winner's final or the grand finals, but it was also a 7-4 and the winner's finals for Tribe against that Undream now LG squad. So they need to be really boot camping something out here in this little break because we know that this Tribe team is super dynamic. They love to change their looks on the fly and LG is going to have to really come to the table with something new. And not to mention, I mean, throughout the entirety of the Hacienda hard point, I mean, it's uncharacteristic as it really did feel like through the first set and maybe half of the second as well. Marshy was a non bad factor. It didn't even feel like that they spawned in towards the map. But I mean, Tribe winning the standoff uh, versus Search and Destroy twice on over versus Luminosity, definitely something that you want to see as a Tribe fan. Not to mention through the entirety of this specific tournament, they've been tearing it up on that specific map mode combination continuously. Sniper play, Marshy's flanks, every single thing about their gameplay on standoff search has been sublime. The whole thing about this series layout is Tribe did what was required. They stole away one of LG's maps that we kind of attributed to being a favorite towards them. Now it's on LG. They have to do the exact same thing, and wouldn't you figure it's like the most stapled map mode combo for Tribe? Well, if they're going to do that, we need to find Blur. Like, I think back yes. on control after three rounds of control was sitting on, was it nine kills? Yeah. Nine kills they, only. I think it's lower than that. <laughs> it was like, like seven. Yeah, yeah. It was like seven. Seven. Yeah, uh, he's not having a tournament to remember, or a finals to remember yet, but that still can be rectified with one at, at one at a time two yep. more maps to go hopefully uh for luminosity but man that guy on your screen right there he's in championship form he was fragging out and tectonic is you know the, one of the major reasons that this squad is together I was chatting with Bague early he was saying i'm really only in this because of my guy tectonic and the fact that he leads every day is something that I love and why I'm here and why this squad is together. And even though we may not look directly at Tech in this upcoming Search and Destroy, let's just play devil's advocate. Say that LG find a way to steal away the map. He could be the major X factor towards winning a championship on the Summit Control when we get there for a game seven. All right, y'all. Look at your hands. What's on them? It's a series. Let's send it on over to our <laughs> casters, Beef Mommy and Bobby. Do you see the series? I don't know, man. I think <laughs> I dropped it somewhere. Oh, okay. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll find it later. Oh, look. It's popping up our screen oh, right now. So we'll hop into it pretty soon. But yeah, you guys talked about the importance of Tectonic in this lineup. I would say, like I mentioned, I don't think I've met anybody at this event that wants it more than him. Yeah. He wasn't on the Tribe roster last year after leaving following that championship that they won for NA back in 2020. And this is his opportunity to finally win a world championship for himself. We'll see if they can do it right here as, wow, the opening snipe gonna go to Solo. Not quite what I expected here. Yeah, it seems like the snipers this year of Luminosity is just stepping it up just a, honestly times 10. Washi and Solo doing an amazing job at giving that information, getting that space, but Envy, Getting that as well. Body shots coming in from Ben. Hey, buddy. That's dangerous stuff that you're doing. All right. A little fire under their bellies, eh? Blur's going to get way pushed up. Tank peeks on over. Instantly obliterated, but same happens to him. Washi's got that sniper in hand, and I mean, we saw a, a pretty solid start to the SD last time for this Luminosity squad. Seen the same thing right here. The question is, can they maintain that? 
But well, you can't really uh, tell what's going to happen now because kind of like what you mentioned already, I'm just going to mirror, they're doing so well. But it's just a kind of falter when it comes to the defense now. And so I'm really excited to see what is actually going to happen and how they're going to offer it. 3-1-1 one, one split coming in from LG, getting that information as Blur gets that really big info that there's going to be that one presence off of this back alley. Marshy gets spotted, goes down. The nade's not cooked enough. I thought surely that was right? going to connect, but Marshy must have snuck away just in time. Maybe a little bit of cover to help out. The bomb does go down, and right now, Band content to just peek past the barrels right here and get as much info as he can. He spots one, but obliterated by Tectonic. There's still snipers left to defend, but he's not going to be able to connect either. And they're getting picked apart one by one. Washi forced back into mid-street. Marshy can't quite find the roaming LG players. Vig's going to be able to find another, but the clock continues to dwindle. They're going to go ahead and stick the defuse. Can they get to it in time? No, they cannot. And Bolu, ice in his veins right there to tie up the game. Band going down early on into that round. That is going to be the momentum that Tribe took to just flood inside. And now Washi couldn't do anything, especially with that sniper. He tried to get that one pick, but unfortunately for him, he couldn't go away in time. And they just went down very fast. And now 3-2 is going to be our split for today. Three going into Grannies. One back up into Gas. Woo! Trying to get that pick off. Whoa, dang, Washi. That is going to be really big for them. And also, information knowing very well that everyone else from Tribe is actually going to be pushed back into spawn. I mean, that was the Washi that we saw off the start of the last game and then slowed things down, wasn't able to find those angles, wasn't able to get the timing for the picks. The fact that they've got a player down already right here, a good sign for them. Band gonna pre-fire the angle. Blur, a big 1v1 gunfight on the inside of gas station that he's not able to win. And now Tribe looking to collapse, but Marshy gets shut down. Players in the top side of blue. Tech gonna drop down right there. Solid teamwork by Envy to get the frag. And it's gonna be a 1v1 right here. Envy comes out on top in that one. Crucial plays and Luminosity once again. Oh man, that was a kind of a scrappy end for Luminosity. Yes, they were being traded out pretty fairly. And that's what you expect actually from Tribe, knowing very well that they can perform. And now we're finally going into our fourth round. Luminosity up by one though. Still not a lot of points to play with and the smoke's gonna be blocking out the sidelines. That's gonna be really big for Tribe, not having to worry about the snipes of Washi. A lot of utility going out for both sides. Tribe knows that LG likes this aggressive push. They're gonna do some stun checks right there, but not enough to get a kill. Marshy checking gas station once again. The battle between him and Blur gonna be a crucial one all game long. And right now the bomb actually making its way through Grandma's. Trophy system gonna get taken down by Jez. Marshy continues to hop to try to find information. Gets a little bit right there, but there's two Luminosity players to deal with. He doesn't want any part of that gunfight cooking the nade, seeing if he can get to connect, but there's nobody there. Envy finds the opener. The bomb is down over on the B site. And now the gunfights ensue as Tectonic, a nasty angle on to Washi to equalize right here. Not an equalizer, just check the scoreboard. There's not many Tribe players left. It's all down to Tectonic. Got five kills to his name, but he's got three players left to deal with. And no real way for him to get the information that he needs to clutch this one up. This round was won because Ban saw three players in Alpha. He did not engage. Even though he had that zero kills, what he saw there was so important for them to go into Bravo instead. They waited. That is so impressive for me to know that they can slow things down, reposition themselves. 3-1 is going to be that scoreline for today. And I'm not sure we've seen a team look this solid offensively up against Tri. We've seen some good defensive teams, but man, oh man, they have had their number, but they has... Oh my gosh, as soon as I say it, Tri's like, oh, what do you say? All right, we'll just kill everybody in the lobby. Well, bomb's gonna go down. Oh, the Washi, there's only so much you can do, especially up against Tribe. And that fast break, that's going to be really good. You kind of expect it to be that way because they were so passive in that last round. And so the only natural thing to do is to be really aggressive. And now for Bolu, seals it down. Again, closing the gap even more as well. Two and three. That was a really good push coming in from Tribe. From the facial expression we saw on Washi, he definitely thought that should have been a kill shot, but hit marker, not going to be enough to get the job done. 
making his way over to top market right here. See if he can find an early first blood. And Marshy getting aggressive right here, throwing shoulders. Nobody gonna push through yet. Envy says, I'll get the kill and the body shots. Bolu wants to push through. And wall shots out of Envy. He's actually gonna be able to get information right there. And Solo is gonna be able to sneak through with the shorty. That was some solid teamwork out of Tribe and played that absolutely to a T, or out of Luminosity, I can't talk. <laughs> Tribe only with two players left. Gosh, you get to see how dominant the shorty actually is in this competition. I'm pretty surprised how these players utilize that. We saw it in the Eastern teams and looking like we're sawing, honestly, it just sawed off, even though it's short. The range is actually pretty crazy when it comes to this Luminosity team in the hands of a really good player. Jez tries to spot the information here, looking like he's actually having a very hard time and he usually is the playmaker here in this particular map, but he's still at zero. Yeah, very shocking number, especially given that traditionally this has been his map. Now that being said, it's usually a lot of offensive picks that we've seen out of him. No real time for this team to work with. So even with Jez finding the pick right there, Ban's gonna play distraction for right now. Jez doing everything he can, but there's no time. And Washi's watching from boxes. Jez, he wanted the 360 no scope. Washi will clean things up right there. And Luminosity extends the lead. Uh, Washi washing off his hands and doing a good job of playing that time. That is really essential and something that we haven't seen in this Luminosity squad in their Check previous the S SMD where they were just kind of nervous at the very end and now looking like they're primed in position, but two and four, we saw it already before, the lead already widening just a tiny bit, but obviously with Tribe, that doesn't matter for them. Even though they're down so much, they can definitely go and recover. A little bit more of a passive approach from both of these teams. Well, they're going to bait out a lot of utility, but they think they've stunned Envy on the inside of the site. He's able to get away, so they're able to make their way all the way through. And I mean, bare minimum, you'd think that should get the bomb down for them. Polu going for the player right here, and you can see the wrap coming through quickly. Three players on the flank right now for Luminosity. Question is, when do they want to make the push? And Tech might have the read for this. If he can get the timing, Ban's going to get spotted out. That first blood, absolutely crucial to slow down the push of Luminosity. And now the blood pressure starts to rise just a bit. And now you're going to be down to Luminosity, but though it's going to be evened up. Bolu spots one, but it gets turned oh! on still. Jez though with the trade, still big. Blur in a 1v2 situation, spots one, gets in, Marshy. Saves around for them, three and four. And there you go, like what I said in the beginning of this round, Tribe knows how to catch up when it comes to the rounds, man. I think that was solo. That was one of the most disgusting oh, turns Check that we have acquired. seen all tournament long. He's one HP stuck in the corner, able to get the kill, but not able to get the round. And right now, Luminosity, a little bit of a different pr approach. They send a couple players up by A. Now all going to back up and once again, looking to hit the oh. flank right here. You've got Ban pushed way up right now, and this could cause a lot of issues for Tribe if they're not able to clear him out. That's going to allow the players over on A to get pushed up as well. He is such a cheeky boy, taking a look at how surrounded he is. That's three players coming in from Tribe, not giving any information, but he does finally move. Now oh, they're finally going through some movement, but then backup finally comes along in the name of Blur. SKS in hand though. There you what? go, speaking up, still gets it off the wall bang. Oh. oh my gosh, I wish we saw that from his perspective. Oh, I hope we can get a playback for that after yeah, the round, the but Blur, it, it, it just, the IQ could not have been any better right there. They do lose band in the process, but what that does is forces Tribe back, makes them waste a lot of time, and now you got three offensive players holding hands with no real information on where anybody for Luminosity is. You get one player pushed into Grandma's, one on the B site, and now Tribe's only option is to really force an A plant right here. Envy should have seen big right there, but he doesn't and there's no trades to be found, so just like that, we're down to a 3v3. Oh, no trouble ensuing for Solo, though, as one player is going to be right behind him, but it's a good thing that the crossfire ensues. Blur going in for the backup. Possibility for another kill right there. Vague goes down. Oh, my gosh. It's just going to be Jez with the snipe. Spots one. Oh, my gosh. Gets almost gets another Solo. Good with the switchblade. 
Oh, we're going in for another replay of what actually just happened there. Oh, this is what. It, oh, that is a nasty wall bag blur. Oh, he almost, almost got two. two. He almost got tanking as well. Read that positioning like a book. And with that ending, with so few players, once again, a big play Destroy that potentially could have been a deciding factor in the round. Now Luminosity on Tribes go to search and destroy map up two rounds. They got to be feeling good right now, but the biggest issue for them has been closing out games. They weren't able to do it in the controller, the search and destroy. An opportunity right now. The has been planted. They've got to continue, and they're going to give up the A plant for free. Immediately retreat. And Luminosity has to scramble right here. A big gunfight for Vague, but he doesn't get the audio cue and a huge first blood for Solo. That is a huge gunfight. He went in there so aggressively. Gets one more. Turns around. Possibility for another, but no, gets shut down by Bolu. Really good responses from both of these teams so far, but Marshy with that double is doing a good job on Blur. Brings it down to a 1v1 situation. Bolu, it's planted for him. 10 seconds left on the hog. No, it's not. He needs to go in for now. He needs to stop this push. Blur goes in for the attack, and then he doesn't have any more time to go in there for the defuse. But well played for Blur. Man. I honestly, with the positioning he had right there, I almost want to say he should have stuck it. I think Bolu would have hit the shots, but he was like, he was zigzagging he was a little bit right the there. It, it looked feasible. I'm not Jeff sure how much time was remaining on the defuse right there. But a big, big round for Tribe to keep things close right here. And Solo going full aggro on the mid push. It pays off big time. He gets one kill immediately away with his life and the turn on to Jez. Huge kill for him there as well. He's doing it all for his squad. And Tribe in shambles off the start of the round. Band yet again in his favorite spot. Tectonic should have heard that for sure. He didn't hear the slide and now Band gets the free kill. A 1v4 situation, but it's a good thing that Bolu gets that bomb. Isolated, Washi's gonna try to go and hit that snipe. Tries to go in there to close it out. Bolu gets that one kill, good. But then the three players remaining are gonna bunch up together, sealing the deal here for one more round win for them to bring this into a game number seven. Solo has been steamrolling this tribe team. 14 kills on the board, but big yeah, contributions out of every single one of these players. Clutch plays left and right. And surprisingly enough, the only player not really picking things up is Ban, but he's had multiple plays, multiple flanks that he's hit that have had a huge impact to throw Tribe off their nor normal rhythm on the offensive pushes. And all the different looks that we've seen out of Luminosity have caught Tribe off guard. I didn't think you could wallbang that anymore, but maybe you can, Washi. Looking to connect on the push into the A bomb site. They've been fine to give away this free A plant every time. And quite a few times the retake has worked. You got one player on the flank once again. That's going to be banned per usual. Vague taking shots. He's going to be forced to regen. Ban gets the information. He's looking to get traded, but I don't know from where. 4v4 right here as Tribe looks to defend. Three players were all looking at the same direction, and that just gave Luminosity entrance, a free entrance. That's what Band did. Just distract the competition, and there you go. It's gonna be a 1v2 situation, still very doable for this one player left, Bolu. Seven seconds, but obviously, there's gonna be a defuse that's gonna be happening right there. Solo saves it for them, Luminosity. Another hat pulled out. A trick up their sleeves. They win that SND standoff with such great finesse. Ooh, luminosity. Oh my goodness. They, they looked a little bit sleepy at the start of the day, but they have awoken the beast Tribe Gaming has in Solo, flying across the map. Big performance out of him, but across the board, it, even Bam didn't have his best game, but so many crucial plays, those flanks, Able to catch Tribe off guard multiple times. Blur, Envy, Solo, all nine and above. And on the flip side, nobody really getting going in a big way. This is the map where typically we've seen Jez pop off, but all the different looks that we saw at Illuminosity, he just didn't know what spots to predict. No one disappointed in this matchup. 
And yes, Marshy with six, he got big kills. Banned with just a mere four where he usually frags out. He made really essential plays by being number one, the flank, and giving that information, but also kind of throwing himself out there, being the distraction. It worked out in that last round. And as we're going into our highlights, let's see the brilliance that is Luminosity in this SD. You know, we saw some some nice shots out of Washi, but there was a shockingly little amount of sniper appearance in this one. It was all about the SMGs, and Solo was just flying everywhere that he could. Envy making some big plays, Blur with some crucial wall bangs. In all those positions, the ones that you don't typically see in the setups on this map, I think especially the defense out of Blur in that gas station side, Super, super crucial solo with maybe the turn of the tournament as he's able to take down Bolu on that gunfight across the Here board. We go. <laughs> hey, dude, the only time that Tribe tried to make an answer off of Bans, you know, flags, Blur goes out there with a wall bang out of nowhere, just scaring off two players of Tribe and Tectonic almost going down. Oh my gosh. Honestly, this is the part where I thought Tribe was going to finally make a comeback. Yeah, it seemed like the momentum was swinging. Blur, great attempt on this one, but it was just too well played by Tri. Bolu knows that all he has to do is play time. He's got the box to work with. I'll push out, I'll give you the kill. Long as we get the round, that is the only thing that matters. But after this one, it was all luminosity is. I mean, every single time they were fine to give up a, a a five-man retake, uh, a, a, re a free plant on A for the five-man retake, and just across the board, oh. Oh, are we waving goodbye a little bit early? Okay. Luminosity feeling some mojo heading into map seven. Well played by Bolu, though. He couldn't really stick that kill to stop the plant, even though that Luminosity had the numbers advantage. That's really good presence of mind right there. But again, it's just not enough, especially very hard having the weapon of choice that he just had right there. And so we're bringing things into our last map in Summit. OK, what do you think about this particular map? We're ending things really small, tiny map really tight corners and you're going up against a solo that's absolutely guns a-blazing with that R9. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see if, if that gets pulled out. I forgot that he was a player that had been doing that. To be honest, he hasn't super popped off with it whenever we've seen it, but there were times in stage four where he went absolutely crazy and Tribe didn't have much of a counter the times that it did happen. Typically, Jez pulled it out and was a pretty solid counter. So not quite sure what to expect out of this one, but with the way the SMGs have been frying for Luminosity these last couple of games, I feel like they do have a slightly more aggressive play style that could work to their advantage. Biggest thing is being patient at that same time and not getting over aggressive on the defensive side. Last time the Tribe just had a really bad time in Summit here because Wolves gave them 250 and 233 because the Wolves just absolutely abused that KRM. With that being said, though, Luminosity has a player that can definitely shred with a shotgun, but will he pop off in this close quarter comeback? Three and three is going to be our scoreline. One map to make the biggest difference, and of course, we're heading into a game number seven in our grand finals. It's only fitting. Oh my gosh, I was terrified that we weren't going to reach this point, but shout out. shout out to Luminosity for bouncing back, making it happen right here. <laughs> In our first ever COD Mobile World Championship Final, we get a Game 7. It's going to be Control. Not the usual game mode for a Game 7, but we still love it. It looks like that man banned ice in his veins. He is ready to go for the final map. Bobby, I thought we weren't going to be casting this song. I just didn't want to give <laughs> Proper and Shift all the fun, right? We uh -huh. need to cast some games today, uh -huh. looking like it's pretty well worth it. And now as we're slowly getting into our control summit, we've seen teams kind of snowball out of control. I mean, I'm not trying to be punny here in summit because obviously there's a lot of snow. Hello, it's very cold now, December, Christmas time. And speaking of Christmas time, obviously both of these teams want to win that cash money. This is where legends are made. Game sevens, it's all on the line. It's do or die for both of these teams. All the glory 
Let's get it. Summit control, heavy top side push for Luminosity Gaming. Jez with the bottom side flank. He's going to be able to get that frag onto Envy and open things up. It's a one for one trade, but they're looking to set up a spawn trap early. He's going to be careful. Not a whole lot of range on that switchblade. Force back. And one player on the top side is going to be banned. A lot of kills going the way of Luminosity early. They're going to get a lot of early A control as well. That's going to be a really good push for that A control. LG. Almost getting that third tick of progress. Only one more ban gets those kills. You already know that this guy is absolutely cracked when it comes to those respawns, especially when you shrink down the map. And now, really good solid control. A map cleared down with four live lead. Well, right now, you love the way those lives are going. Solo's gonna get taken down by his own hunter killer. I'm not sure if that actually counts toward the lives. I never really checked on that one, but. Right here, Blur doing everything he can to defend, or rather push through on that B side. Not a usual spot for the SKS, not a usual map for the SKS. But the A zone completely captured right here. And now on to the tough side, Tectonic maneuvering that top side, put the Kilo away. He's pulling out the Krig, a little bit more flexible in the close range. And now the push on over to B for Luminosity. Top control for Jez. That's gonna be really crucial for him. Spots one. Bay doesn't really quite get the trade though. 16 to 16, even things out. Tribe is so good at doing this, at slowing things down to control. Not letting it, you know, steamroll out of control here in Illuminosity. Just as, as they had the lead. Obviously, it's gonna be very hard to do that because they have to worry about that OBJ. And now for Tribe, they're doing so well, but Solo getting that big double. Bay getting that triple with the R9. Almost getting the fourth, but Jez shuts him down. Right now, Luminosity, you got time to work with. You don't have to rush things. Obviously, you want to get that objective captured, but you also don't want to let Tribe play a TDM against you where you're going to be at a disadvantage. Solo, way long range to be using an R9 right there. They're going to be forced back and no kills go through for them. Tribe looking solid in the top side, but Van's got the counter. Oh High ground God. control going the way of Luminosity right here. They're set up in a really good position. Question is, will they have the lives? They're throwing a lot away. Why are you pushing through? They're giving up for free. And just like that, a five life lead for Tribe Gaming. Only two players left to clutch up two ticks of objective. And a big task for Band as he's not able to make it happen. Tribe takes round one. Good adjustment coming from Tribe, very much like them to do so. And even though they were down by just, I think, six lives in the mid game, able to slow things down a notch and where Luminosity seemed like they were getting a little bit impatient, not playing the time that they had. They had 55 seconds left to get those picks. Yep, we said their aggression might be the death of them. Solo's gonna push through right here. Able to find the first with the R9. Does get traded out the Purifier. The Operators starting to come out right here. Envy, crucial gunfight win right there. And Luminosity is getting the better of those exchanges. Gotta pay attention to the Operators as well. Vague pushing through with his Purifier. Does get traded out right there. Luminosity still having the edge. Likely looking to snowball as much as they can. Didn't op opt to use any of their operators at the end of that one. But as far as the TDM game goes, they're playing it pretty dang well. Jez gonna drop right there, and now the life lead starting to build a little bit for Luminosity. Not that big of a deal for Tribe, though. We've seen a comeback before, time and time again. But with four, four seconds left on the clock, that's gonna be difficult. Because you have to push now, you gotta pick a site. And you're gonna be greeted by so many operators already. Blur, trying to push out, trying to block that moment, the entrance. Momentum being cut right now from Tribe. They were trying to go and get ready for a push out, but that vortex just stopped them. Well, right now, it looks like Luminosity is looking to set up the spawn trap. One player gonna get taken down. Marshy's got some streaks to work with. And not a whole lot of objective capture time as Vague's gonna be forced off right there. He tries to free fire. Purifier around the corner once again. Usage of those operators gonna be crucial and Luminosity has opted to use the majority of theirs. They've only got two left. They're gonna be able to pick up a lot of kills and they've got a few operators to work with as well. Those could pay dividends as it does look like Blur has an EMP system if I'm looking at that, that correctly. It's actually going to be a, a care package, so not <laughs> quite as much value for that to be had. But Luminosity takes a big round right there. The big issue at hand, if you're a Luminosity and you're going to get the win, you've got to find an offensive round somewhere. Yep. 
because we're ending it. If we do get a game number five, Tribe is going to be on the defense. But Luminosity did a really good job a while ago in round number one, where they we thought it was going to be an LG win, but obviously not really the case. And Washi opening things up with the claw, gets rid of Fague. A little bit too early for my liking. Yeah, I think Tribe played that really well. They don't want to give him any value out of that claw. So you know what? We'll give up a little bit of map control. We'll give up a tick or two of progression. We know Jez is going to be able to push in the top side and equalize, and just like that, Tribe looking to start popping those operators. Purifier comes out. Marshy in the top side. He knows that he's got a teammate in front of him to clear the way, so he's going to be able to make his way down below, and just like that, Tribe takes a life lead. Marshy. Fred in hand, that's gonna be really big once a beat capture is actually gonna happen, but Bolu shredding out with the claw, but Washi stops it really early on, stopping the push. Again, a lot of the score streaks and the operators are being shut down right now by Luminosity. Big Fred, let's see, he's actually gonna be getting one. Vake gets spotted out, doesn't really quite get that kill, but does get that information that someone's going to be by Cable Car. It's World Championship final time. Tribe Gaming in the lead right now, just by a little bit in the lives. Let's hop on into a listen in with Tribe. Bottom, 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 Nice! I still, I still have my operator. Hey, hey, Mark, how's it going? I have an operator. operator. Have Don't use your operator to start, please. Don't use it. Okay. Well, that's a pretty dominant defensive round for Tribe. You can hear the comms, play the lives. That's all you got to do once you reach that point. Luminosity did not have a means of pushing into those zones. The top side set up too strong for Tribe. And right now, it's Tribe one round away from closing things out. Luminosity need to find a big round here. They're one round away from winning $700,000. And if you drop it, that is a very costly mistake. And now looking like they're trying to get that solid hold though, as LG's going in there for the take here in control room. Very, very aggressively they're pushing in through, but they're just letting Tribe actually funnel through. They're not overextending their game here. There's nobody to really defend the bottom side right now for <laughs> Luminosity, as I say that. Fans has all hopped down clear off as much as I can and take a player or two with oh. me. Oh my gosh! Drops the purifier right there. Cannot be understated how big of a kill. Can't be overstated how big of a kill that was right there. And despite that tribe still taking that progression over on A. Bolu looking to maintain top side control. The lives are even for right now. Big gunfight win for Washi. Nobody having the edge right here. Obviously tribe looking to lock in this A side, but the tougher task at hand is going to be that B control. Tectonic has not been spotted out. He spots a teammate. That's not who you want to be shooting at. And all the top side control right now going the way of Luminosity, but Vague catches one player sliding down. Big kill for Vague. Almost getting that 18th and Solo going on his 19th. Two operators ready for Luminosity. Four going in for Tribe. They can seal it down here. It's going to be the timing of your operators and also your score streaks. That is going to be the name of the game. 32 seconds left on the clock. One tick of progress each. That is going to be really difficult because the su super solid hold. Very good defense, especially by Envy stopping the push. That's a big kill right there. They've still got the life advantage. Nothing to worry about. Don't panic. Tribe has no objective captures and not a lot of time to work with as well. Ban looking for a flank right here. He's going to be able to catch out Marshy. Once again, the lives continue to go the way of Luminosity. And they have an opportunity here, barring a miracle from Tribe, to close things out. And ladies and gentlemen, it's only right that we go to game seven, round five. This is what we deserve. A nail-biting situation where in the beginning, Luminosity looks so solid when it comes to the attack. 
Can they do the same here? It's definitely a little bit easier for Tribe in the defense. All they need to do is just be patient. His opening gunfight's gonna be crucial. First blood yet to be found. It's a one-for-one -one trade. Another Luminosity member gonna drop. The Operator's starting to come out. Both players had them stacked up for a while. Vig gonna be able to find two. Not opting to set up the spawn trap. Gonna play things a little bit more passive. And the kills continue to go the way of Tribe Gaming. Oh, Tribe. They're bringing out the big guns early game already. They just want to end this right now. But then taking a look at that, only two members left from their team having their operators. One from Solo also for LG. And that's going to be really difficult. Ben takes out the claw. Doesn't really quite get any information. Finally gets one, but doesn't really quite sustain. As Tectonic pulls out one of his own. Big kills right there. We're going to hop into a quick listen in with Luminosity. Come on, guys. Keep going, keep going. Take There's one there. 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 There only seven lives remain, 13 separating the two. The remaining players doing everything they possibly can, but one by one they fall as Tribe Gaming cuts them down. The bodies are shot, and a new king is crowned. The world champions of COD Mobile, Tribe Gaming. They're not the new kings, man. They've been here since 2020 couldn't prove themselves because obviously we didn't have that storyline seven teams had to split that title had to split that money 2021 east and west still had no answer to the question but now finally the most consistent and talented team of call of duty mobile right now tribe gaming hats off to you my dudes it's not just tears when you lose, there's tears when you win as well. You can see how much it means to these players in a well-fought battle by Luminosity. It seemed like it was over long, long ago, but man, oh man, did they give us a show today. Every single one of these players deserving of this stage, and congratulations once again to Tribe Gaming, the world champions. That was such a powerful shot of image going down the stairs. We already know he was the coach someone last year, now paying his respect to the team that he helped out. Helped groom them to be the champions of the day. And as you can see, the trophy shining and the smiles of these boys giving hope. This is more than just a game. This is life changing for these five guys, for this organization. Tribe Gaming looking absolutely supreme in mobile gaming. And you can see Bolu holding up the two fingers. Now he and Marshy, the only two COD Mobile players in the world to be stage five champions twice. They will hoist the trophy right here. Oh, maybe a little bit heavier than he expected it to be. It's actually very light. I, maybe they have a different one this year. I thought it was light <laughs> as well, but wow. The crowd, the, the, the crowd, the tribe crowd has definitely showed out today. And you can feel the energy in here as a new, kind of new world champion is crowned. The new official the world new champion. The new official, yeah, yeah. That was always kind of like the, eh, who's gonna be the winner? Uh, two years of the making, it's kind of like a yes and no situation, but tribe definitely proved it today. The past three days have been grueling. A beautiful, heroic lower bracket run the most games any team has ever played. And I keep repeating it, the most resilient team that we've seen here so far. They're used to the upper bracket run. They're so used to being called the championship. They're tested today. And they bring home the trophy and they prove everyone wrong. But a lot being said, we casted such a great series. Digon, take it away, Tribe, congratulations.
Thank you very much, Beef Mommy and Bobby. One more time, congratulations to your world champion, Tribe Gaming! All right, Marshy, let's start with you, brother. Uh, obviously, this means a lot to you, but can you try to put it into words? I guess. Thank you. That's Marshy, everyone. Jez, you're the new player on the block. Obviously, you know, uh, you've stepped up in huge situations. What does this championship mean for you? I mean, it's just, just a whole new milestone, you know, just to see what's up next. Yeah. Bolu, you were asking this whole weekend, interview me, interview me. Well, now we get to do it as world champions. How's it feel? It feels amazing, man. Honestly, I don't know really what to say, but... I think we, as a team, deserve this the most. We've put in the most effort at any other team to make it this far. Uh, the best tournament of our lives. The, the first team to win from the losers bracket from the first state match. And uh, overall, the best team I've teamed with in uh, history of God Mobile, in my opinion. And I would like to thank the crowd, obviously, for watching. Uh, the YouTube chat, thank you guys for supporting. Uh, my family back home watching. Uh, my best friend, Miles, for watching. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, everyone enjoyed watching our match uh, down to the wire. And honestly, we just everyone made the right place at the right time. And it's just honestly an amazing feeling uh, that I'll forever cherish in my life. Uh, vague. <laughs> I want to ask you about that loss early on in that quarterfinals. What did the team do? How did they respond? Uh, honestly, um, if you don't know, Tribe has like a reputation of always bringing it back from the lower brackets or losers bracket. Pretty sure it even happened in like the pre uh, previous series and shit. Oh, I, I won't get fine. It's fine. Tribe will cover it. They'll reimburse you. But no, you, you have you you might have a little bit of money to cover it. I'm yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Nah, so coming from that, it was really good. And going into our next match, we had a good feeling into it because we were facing stamina. We know how they play. We knew how they were. Our main goal were only to like face LG and have our eyes going up against them in the grand finals because that's what we predicted, and that's what happened. Obviously, it was a close match, but at the end of the day, we won, and that just proves that West is the best and East is ass. <laughs> Wow. Now, Tech, you showed up huge in the biggest moments here for the squad. I wanted to, I wanted to know, why is it when the moments are biggest, you come up huge? I think it's more so just like a pressure thing, you know? Like, it's always fun having pressure and, you know, all the tension is high. A lot of people get nervous, but I'm going to be honest to me, I've lived three years for this, and I'm glad that it's finally happening. Well, the wait is over. Tribe Gaming, the best team Go for Tribe! your 2022 World Champion. Bravo. 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 All right, y'all. Uh, that was a hell of an ending. Uh, of course it was gonna go all seven maps. Of course it was gonna go all five rounds. I mean, you called it right there, Bobby. I mean, I was questioning it for a little bit. Off the start, it looked pretty straightforward, but huge shout out to Luminosity once again. Uh, obviously second place, but a well-earned second place for those guys. They gave it everything that they had and they absolutely gave us a show in this matchup. Beef Mommy, I kind of wanted to get your thoughts here as we close out the 2022 season. Well, I did hear that the East was, I don't think I can say it, man. <laughs> He's correct though. They're very sass. They're at, they're sass, okay? I'm gonna, I said it yesterday. We ended the broadcast where I said the West really showed up. They're looking like in very tip top shape. So props to them. I will give credit where credit is due. Congratulations, Tribe. Robert, it, it came down to the final moments here. Luminosity gave its shot, but really both these squads have shown North America's number one. Yeah, I mean, hey, number one, number two coming out of North America, making the grand finals. I mean, you ask any one of us, uh, I, I know for a fact me and Bobby both had Inko at least making it here, but you can't honestly look any differently because these two teams have shown so much prowess through so many different game modes, their adaptations, and overall just moxie just carried them through the entire weekend. Shift, final thoughts. 
Yeah, man. I mean, look, it's taken us three years to do this, and this is one heck of a set of groundwork to work off of for the future. The fact that we got all 16 teams here in the first place, that was already a huge success, let alone the fashion that they played through each other in this bracket. All right. Let's take a look one more time at our prize pools. $700,000 going to the way of Tribe Gaming. $280,000 for Luminosity and one fifty dollars for Inco Stalwart. Y'all, three years in the making of having a land, of being able to really claim who is number one, and it was a wait well worth it. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you to the community for inviting me in for this, and thank you to uh, all the fans that have come out and supported here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, this, that's it from us here. I think uh, we, we've had a hell of a weekend and everything that's needed to be said has been said. So to close it on out, we'd like to thank you all for watching. On behalf of myself, every single one of us casters and the entire live broadcast crew, we thank you for watching and we will see you as we do it again next year in 2023. Tribe Gaming, your 2022 Call of Duty Mobile World Champions.